All right. Ladies and gentlemen, you're here today to ask and answer one very simple question. What if? What if, instead of robotics, Dr. Light specialized in networking instead? What if this caused the creation of the internet centuries ahead of when it would otherwise? Or maybe decades, I don't know. <laughs> what if Dr. Wiley and Dr. Light got laid? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen. Impossible. Gentlemen. What if we lived in a network? A battle network! Welcome to the Mega Man Network Timeline Lore Lecture! All right. <laughs> so, just like any other lecture that has ever been done, questions are encouraged. Heckling is extra encouraged. And uh, Should we that's about it. Yeah, we might want to turn the microphones down a little bit. But, uh, Maybe yours. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm just a very loud person yeah. in general. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and move on. So... In the year 20XX, same as the classic series in the classic Mega Man games, we have this guy called Tadashi Hikari, which is kind of a pun based on how Dr. Light's name was different in like the English and the Japanese, because in the Japanese he was Dr. Wright, in the English he's Dr. Light. Tadashi Hikari literally means right light. Right as in like righteous, not like the direction right. But uh, yeah, so... Uh, this guy invents the internet, and he has a kid named Yuichiro Hikari, and this guy Yuichiro Hikari invents net navvies, and then, like, with the advent of net nav... Yes, Law? Is Yuichiro... Yuichiro, whatever his name is. Yuichiro? Yuichiro. Yuichiro's. Is he also Chirio a pun? Hikari. What? Is he also a pun? I do not know what Yuichiro means. You let me down. You're supposed to know Japanese. Yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, with the invention of net navvies, everything kind of becomes like a very powerful like Internet of Things type deal where like almost every appliance whatsoever is connected to the Internet. And you can send your net navvy, which is just like a little Mega Man character that lives inside your personal terminal or your PET because they're pets kind of. They're kind of a virtual pet type deal. And uh, you can send them in there and they can basically operate any machinery from inside of it by accessing its network on the Internet. This will have no repercussions whatsoever. <laughs> so eventually, Yuichiro himself uh, has a kid, and this kid is Lan Hikari, named after, you know, like a LAN network. In the Japanese, he was named Net Hikari, like internet. I don't know why they changed it, but they did. Yeah, LAN makes a lot more sense. It's like uh, Landon or something. Which yeah, is how I remember justifying it in my little kid brain. Yeah, LAN sounds more like a name, mm -hmm. especially a Western name. Yeah. And, uh,. Basically, soon after this, we run into a situation where net crime is on the rise because there are viruses appearing all over the internet that need to be defeated, and they cause things to malfunction. Yes. Are they all coming from Turkish domains? No, uh, it's China. <laughs> or Russian. <laughs> well, I'm about to say we're Russia. I, I, and then don't forget domestic terrorism. Ooh. Which very well might be the case with this because this is an organization known as... The World 3, which is, it's spelled <laughs> WWW, but it's pronounced World 3. Wow. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. I thought it was just pronounced Why We. I mean, <laughs> Why We. When I was a kid, I thought it was an acronym standing for Worldwide Wiley. <laughs> 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 but no, like all the... <laughs> You know, he's a global terrorist in this. Yo, uh, like, worldwide. <laughs> but yeah, basically, cyber terrorism is on the rise, and this mysterious organization known as the World 3 is behind it, leading us into Mega Man Battle Network 1. That dude's hair on the left. Who? Um, The white-haired guy. Oh, that's Mega Chod. Man. He's a chode. His name is Chod? <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Eugene Chod. Wow. His parents knew. <laughs> Chod. Uh, eventually, we do meet uh, Chod's dad, and <laughs> it's a very real possibility. It was Dennis Chod. De Dennis. <laughs> he looks like a Dennis. He looks like a Dennis. <laughs> All right. 
So let's get going. So you got here, that's kind of the picture there you can see is kind of like an example of the battle system. It takes place on a six by three grid where like three by three is yours, three by three is the enemies. And you have like a thing where a custom screen comes up and you can select chips, which is why I've provided chips, <laughs> to uh, use your attacks and then like you execute them in real time. So it's kind of a blend of turn-based RPG and action RPG, which is very unique and very few other games have done anything like that since. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to play a game like Battle Network, you kind of just have to play Battle Network. Yeah. You'd think a lot more games, like, in the indie space would be inspired by this battle system in some way. Yeah, there, there have been... Handful. Yeah, I mean, there, there have been a few playing. that I'm actually going to... At the very end of this, I'm going to talk about a lot of Mega Man likes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. And, yeah, but... What's weird is that those only really came recently. Like, we've only recently got Battle Network likes. But we'll get to that, so... The very first thing that happens in Battle Network 1 is, remember how I said everything's kind of connected to the Internet of Things? Well, uh, Lan's mom is trying to make food, and her stove is not working. So she goes in there, but then the stove catches fire and starts spitting out fire. And it turns out this is a terrorist attack by the World 3. <laughs> and uh, it's fire. Question. Hmm? Why is the World 3 targeting a, a, a mother and her child in a home? Uh, this is the wife and child of the man who invented net navvies. And wouldn't, the they be, wouldn't they like that guy since he invented net uh, navvies? We'll, we'll get to that, but no, no, they would not. Hmm. Why is Al-Qaeda a bunch of Redditors in this world? <laughs> this is not a political series. <laughs> <laughs> Unlike every Mega Man prior. We're making <laughs> yeah, yeah. Un un unlike the main line, which is a very political series. Uh, Battle Network, not very political. We, we get into politics like maybe once or twice in the entire series. Bad series, not interested. You know, everybody's super straight to the point in the Battle Network series. Like, I don't like you. And like that's their dialogue. And that's <laughs> yeah. It. Like, they're very just like, boom, here's a fact. They don't care about your politics. They just care about who you are as a person. <laughs> they care about how good you are at Neopets battling. <laughs> <laughs> Until they don't because Land never gets any recognition. For like saving the world multiple times. Yeah. yeah. He gets recognized for it once. And then well, they forget immediately. Well, he's after. in fifth grade. He oh, is in yeah. fifth. Yeah, he the is in fifth. time. He is the in fifth. Time. No, in uh, Battle Network 6, he graduates to sixth grade. Oh, that's right. That makes sense. Six. He's just a white hat hacker. <laughs> He's a what? He's a white hat hacker. I don't know what that is. It's like a good hacker. Oh. You uh, have a degree, man. How do you not know this? I, I don't know. I've never heard that phrase before. Anyway, so uh, inside the oven is Fireman, and Mega Man just kind of goes in there and defeats Fireman, and Fireman's operator is this guy called Mr. Match who will reoccur throughout constant games in the series. Like, he's a reoccurring villain. Usually, he's a good guy, like, once or twice. Mm -hmm. Is he, like, the starting guy? Is he, like, the... Yeah, he's always, like, first he's, boss guy. He's, like, the prosecutor Payne He's like Mega Man Battle Network. Yeah, yeah, he's a lot like Winston Payne. He's like Pete in Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, oh, he's... Yeah. Well, no, he's more threatening than Pete. He's not a joke. He is, like, legitimately a threat, and he always comes with, like, a new fire-themed Navi in every mm -hmm. game, hmm. which we'll see, because I have all the art. And uh, so that's all you really need to know for that scenario. The next day, Lan goes to school. He goes to ACDC Elementary because he lives in ACDC Town, which is not named after the band. I was about to say, that sounds like a rockin' town. Well, no, because uh, no, the no. band ACDC and ACDC Town are both named after the same, like, electrical thing. ACDC Town does have some baller music, though. Yeah. Oh, we never set up the music. I got you. Yeah, just... Play, like, some random Battle Network soundtrack stuff. So, uh, anyways, Land goes to school, and there's a new teacher who joins named Mr. Higsby. And Higsby is this otaku stereotype, thin, lanky dude, and he has a thin, lanky navy that kind of looks like him because Higsby has, like, big, bushy hair. And then, like, Number Man has this giant, like, dome over him. And so they kind of look alike. But uh, pretty soon after this, Higsby just uh, locks everyone in their chair and starts this re-education program on the blackboard because the blackboard is also on the internet of things, of course. Are the chairs on the internet? Probably. <laughs> their desks are because they jack into the desks to go to like, to do like the internet version of their school. So like when they need to like learn how to virus bust or whatever, which is what the tutorial of the game is, uh, they jack into their desk. Oh yeah, jack into. 
Oh, yeah, jacking in is like uh, the PET has like a wire, and that's what you plug into a device to send your net navi in there. In later games, they become wireless. There's another kind of jacking in that, into their desk that they're doing. Uh, yeah, the other kind of jacking in is uh, when I was a kid. And I saw pictures of rolls. Yeah, I saw pictures of rolls <laughs> on the internet. And so, no, but uh, legit, when I was a kid, uh, when, you know how like when you have dial-up and you have to like oh, unplug good. like the phone to plug in the, the dial-up internet? Every time I did that, I would be like, jack in, Mega Man, execute. Because I was a dork when I was a kid. <laughs> and if anything doesn't make you a dork, it's lecturing on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, We're no, this dorks. is my redemption arc. This is how I show that that was all worth it. <laughs> so anyways, uh, you go into, like, the school network computer, and you have to do, like, some, like, code hacking thing where, like, you have to guess a number, and it'll just tell you, like, higher or lower and tell you if you got one of the two digits right because it's a two-digit number. And so you go through a bunch of those puzzles, and uh, at the end, you fight Number Man, who is kind of cool. He'll, like, throw, uh, he'll throw like, dice at you, which whatever the dice lands on, it'll do that number times 10 damage, which is pretty cool. And he'll throw, like, balls at you that have, like, health, and you got to stop them. It's all number-themed. It's pretty cool. Real quick. Yeah? Is that coming through the speaker system through here? It's coming through down here. That's it? Okay. Just making sure. I didn't want, I didn't want it to be. No, 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 no. We're good. Yeah, okay. I got you. That's a good song. Anyways, so you beat Number Man, and that's kind of the end of that is uh, Higsby was just like, oh, yeah, afterwards Higsby is like, man, I, the World 3, they just promised me rare chips. I'm a rare chip otaku. I collect this stuff. I'm a huge dork. I just love collecting rare chips. And so Lan is like, you're not a bad guy. Let's be friends. We'll trade chips sometimes. And Higsby's like, okay. Also, Higsby has a... a Crush on Land's homeroom teacher, Miss Mary. Miss Mary. I'm Mar sorry. But this maybe? guy is most definitely a bad guy. He kidnapped <laughs> children in place and tried to uh, re educate them Big Brother style. Uh, it's a yeah. lot it's a lot yeah. more common than you'd think in the world. Yeah, of I mean that's network. just the educate <laughs> it's it's political it's the American <laughs> Never mind, education. this is this is a political series. It's <laughs> yeah. commentary on the on the education system. <laughs> And then uh, Land just gets homeschooled the rest of the series. <laughs> no, um, he doesn't. He doesn't. Distance learning. Distance learning. They they do it over Zoom. <laughs> or whatever the Battle Network Zoom is. Zoom. All right. Zoom. Anyway, so we go on to the next. Well, what happens after that is Land's dad, who is still a scientist working at Psy Lab, uh, he calls Land. He's like, hey, man, I'm going to give you a power-up for Mega Man. Literally an item called power-up that lets you increase one of your stats. You can buy them at stores, too. And so he invites Lan and his mom over to hang out with him at Scilab. And then uh, when they get there, they find that, uh, oh, well, he wants to go there, but the train is stopped because there is a rampaging World 3 Navi blocking the tram system. So he has to go on the internet, find where on the internet corresponds to the train, and just, he beats this guy called Stone Man, who is a Navi without an operator. Which, there are a few of those. They're very uncommon, but there are a few autonomous navvies throughout the series. So he beats Stone Man. He's a real easy boss because he stays still the whole time. And then, uh, after that, you can take the tram. You go to, uh, you go visit his dad, and uh, he gets his power up, and that's real cool. And then, uh, the next day, though, uh, it turns out that the waterworks, which is right next to Scilab, had a malfunction. And now there is no water anywhere. So nobody can drink any water. People are falling over. They're being forced to dry fast, and it's terrible. <laughs> so, what kind uh, of infrastructure do these people have where they can be hacked this easily and a fifth grader can come save them? Okay, well, there's no real explanation for why the fifth grader is, like, that good. Well, no, there is. There is, and we'll get to it at the end of this game, actually. Ooh. But uh, the, the infrastructure thing, you can kind of think, I don't want to spoil too much about dr wiley but like there is probably a good reason why he has such an easy time like dealing with all this and but we won't get to that till like battle network five so uh yeah so land goes to the waterworks jackson Mega Man, and finds the virus that is just behind the whole system like the thing that's stopping the water from flowing and he deletes those viruses they're like sort of a mini boss or like these weird mouse things that shoot ice cubes at you and then uh, when Mega Man is there, he runs into another Navi called Proto Man, 
who uh, Proto Man is like, no, don't do not fix the waterworks yet. There's like other issues. Well, he doesn't he doesn't explain why because he's like, you are an idiot. Get out. Like you are not involved with this. You are 12 years old, even though Chad is also 12, but he is, you know, he's an adult. Yes. <laughs> He's cool You'll find out that he graduates high school at the age of 12 eventually. <laughs> 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 like, uh, anyways, but he tells Mega Man oh, not yeah, to. Land. He says, I'm an official. Do what I say. And Lan does not listen to him because he's like, we got to get the water back. And uh, he does. And then the water comes back. And uh, the water purification also had an issue. And it turns out the water comes back, but it's all like poisoned and dirty. But because everyone's so thirsty from the water being out, they start drinking it anyway. And you see this one dude, like, collapse on the spot after drinking some of the water. It's Flint. <laughs> Mega Michigan. It's, it's a political game. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, so... So, what ends up being the real case behind everything was that uh, this guy who works at Waterworks, Dr. Freud... Uh, his son had been kidnapped and he was being blackmailed by the World 3 to ruin the water purification system. So uh, Lan frees his kid, which I forget his kid's name. It might be on there, but I don't, I don't know. But uh, they go, and then he goes into Waterworks to like stop Iceman, who is Freud's navvy, from corrupting the water any further. But Iceman's not listening to reason because they don't know the kid is safe yet. So you you have to battle Iceman, but then after you beat him, like you don't delete him, you just beat him and you're just like okay we're good and he explain everything and then uh chad however like this entire time chad is very mad you're not listening to him and taking matters into your own hands chad is chad does not like lan they are enemies and we'll see chad more of chad later he's he's a reoccurring character uh, so the next day, uh, Mail invites Lan on a date, reoccurring plot thread. They go on a lot of dates, and Lan never realizes anything further than that. He just thinks she's a dumb girl who wants to, someone to go shopping with, but the other dumb girl is, like, not there, who's Yai, who every, I, I understand why you would not want to spend time with Yai. <laughs> e- nobody likes Yai. I don't like Yai. Is that you the rich should... bitch? Yeah, that's the rich one. Yeah. 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 Fuck Yai. <laughs> I don't even know Yai, man. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to character bios after this. But uh, they go to this place called Den City, which is a big technological hub. And uh, the bus that Mail is on, because Mail got there earlier than Lan, she's, like, taking a bus or whatever, it gets hijacked. And then, like, the entire, like, the bus gets hijacked, but also, like, the entire, like, navigation system. Like, all the cars are, like, smart cars. They drive on their own, and, like, they automatically obey traffic signals. So they're, like, trapping cars. And so, like, if the car doesn't get stopped or whatever you end up with a situation where like the bus will like crash and explode and mail will die and it's terrible but uh lan goes into the bus thing and he defeats the world three navi that had hijacked it color man who uh is this big clown dude we'll see him in a bit when i show all the clown man. thank goodness he's a clown clown man yeah Oh, oh! I, I know what you're getting at, and you'll you'll be delighted to know that in the Japanese, his name is Colored Man. <laughs> very, very obvious why they changed that. <laughs> so, uh, Mega Man defeats Color Man, and then uh, that's that's it. Like everything's happy. Mail like is like weirdly like happy about all this, which very obviously is because she likes Land. She's like, oh, I got rescued by my crush. Uh. So she's weirdly happy. And the next day... Back off, you mega slut. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Mail, by the way, is the operator of Roll. Or Roll.exe. Basically, uh... (laughs) They're all all .exes. Yeah, they're all .exes. Because you're going to execute them all. Yeah. In the Japanese, it's actually pronounced Ekuze. They just pronounce the exe out. Huh. Like, the name of this series in Japan is Batoru Network... Rockman Ekuze, which I'm sure my that accent was probably horribly offensive. But uh, Battle Network Rockman. <laughs> Sorry, I tried to pronounce the characters correctly, but then like it just ends up sounding racist. I heard, I heard the more offensive your accent, the more correct it is. Uh, prob- well, eventually it loops around, like the value overflows and <laughs> becomes negative. 
like Piston Honda from the original Punch Out, where he's literally just shouting like Suzuki, Sushi, and stuff like that. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> was he really? I think so. I don't remember 100 percent sure, but I, I'm pretty sure it was like that. That's pretty funny. Anyways, uh, the next day, uh, Lan and his mom get invited to Scilab again because they're having a big party, a banquet, where they're going to unveil the most recent thing that all the Navi researchers have been working on, which is a PET made exclusively from recycled material. Green energy, am I right? <laughs> so they get there, they go to the party, and uh, the problem is that this party gets hijacked by the World 3, because of course it does. You'll notice that in Battle Network 1 and Battle Network 2, like, the plot doesn't really tie together a whole lot. It really is like just episodes. like, scenario, scenario, yeah. scenario. The plot becomes more, there's still scenarios in all the other games, but like, it becomes more like consistent. Like, oh, there's an overarching narrative that leads this to this. Oh boy, what's Team Rocket doing today? Yeah, it's kind of, it's split by each day. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it, kind, it kind of is like that. You gotta wonder at some point, everybody's like, I mean, we've got to fix this. Net navy thing. This is getting out of hand. Net, they they do eventually. Do. Okay. There, there is a solution to the virus problem by the end of the series. Fair and uh, final solution, <laughs> something like that. Anyways, uh, so it turns out this whole hijacking is this guy called Count Zap with his navy, <laughs> Alec Man. And is he an actual count, or is that his first name? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just Count Zap. Counts. <laughs> yeah. No question, counts that. Yeah, like it's definitely like the position of count. Like it's not like his name is count. Like it's definitely like he is a count mm -hmm. because like in the Japanese he's like zap like hakushaku, which is the Japanese word for count. So he definitely is a count. I don't know to what extent, but like there are like there are like royalty of other countries who get involved with this stuff. Sometimes mm -hmm. we'll get into that in two, some in five. But uh, yeah, it's a new world order. It's a conspiracy. No, it's yeah. World Three. Anyway, yeah, it's the, the World <laughs> World Three. Yes. Uh, but yeah, Mega Man beats Elect Man. This dungeon, I want to admit, is really, really obnoxious because you have like a bunch of invisible pathways. And you have to do these really obtuse battery puzzles. It is terrible. <laughs> and if you ever play Battle Network One, play the DS remake Operate Shooting Star. It just it adds a lot of quality of life to this. And then also it adds like a lot of like general gameplay quality of life. Battle Network One's gameplay is a little rough around the edges and lacks some of the stuff that made like two onwards really good to play. And then Operate Shooting Star adds those back in. So if you ever play it, like it was Japan only, but you can find like an English translation that just inserts the original like English script into that. Quit shilling for Mega Man. Now a lot of the what a lot of the why battle, would I do that? A lot the of the point of this lecture. <laughs> A lot of those Battle Network games uh, are kind of, whenever you're in the overworld, they are kind of maze-like whenever you get into the online Battle space. Network 1 especially. Battle, yeah. Network, yeah. Battle Network 1's internet is a maze. It's legitimately like, I remember, because I've played some of Battle Network 1, and I just remember, like, I kind of gave up on it because I didn't just have the capacity to be like, I don't know where I'm going, man. Yeah, that's a real problem, and they actually have a plot reason why that problem is fixed in 2. <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. Like, they definitely were, like, directly addressing that. But anyways, uh, one of the cool things about the Elect Man stage, though, is this screenshot that you're seeing right here, where, like, some of the programs there are, like, going berserk, and one of them, you talk to him, he's like, all your base are belong to us, which, at the time this came out, this is uh, March 21st, 2001, and uh, this was a relevant meme at the time. Sorry, I was born during that time, so I don't understand this meme. Can you please explain it and all of its <laughs> hilarity to me? <laughs> You see, there's this game called Zero Wing. <laughs> <laughs> it okay. had amazing voice acting. It is pretty cool that this game, oh, like, themed around the cool. internet, had a reference to an internet meme in it. Yeah. I think yeah, that, yeah, I no, think that, no, that was it's good. Cool. It's cool. They were 2001, they were yeah, that's definitely a head. Yeah, I mean, there's, so. there's always been, like, a case people make for, like, this game, like, kind of, um, what do you call it, like, predicting how certain things would be in yeah. the future. Yeah, oh, yeah no, sure. no, it absolutely predict, predicted like, a lot Chan. about... No, I think 4chan was around by the time. I know what you're referring to in Battle Network 3. Yeah. But uh, I think 4chan was around before that. At the very. Okay, 4chan probably wasn't, but the website it was based on, 2chan, which is probably what it was oh, actually I, based on. I, I forget. Yeah, yeah, 2chan was definitely around. And, yeah. like, just general, like, image boards were a thing in Japan well Geo before cities. 4chan ever existed. <laughs> so it's not really a reference to that, but the similarities are really funny, though. Yeah, they're very yeah. close to predicting yeah. Tesla. Boy, I didn't know the GBA yeah. sound chip could handle this. <laughs> I think this is probably a remix. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah. 
Anyways, uh, Mega Man beats Elect Man, as you might imagine. But uh, this is when we find out that uh, the World 3, every time they've done one of these terrorist attacks, they've been trying to find specific pieces of data, which, like, involve, like, beta stuff of the internet, probably. Hmm. And so, kind of the thing that they're kind of after is to get all these pieces of data. That's why they attacked Land's house, because Yuichiro had some of that. And, like, a lot of the stuff they do is, like, built into, like, infrastructures of major government stuff. So that's why they kind of are like that. So we find that out, but we don't know exactly what they're going for yet. Oh, yeah, and then after the Elect Man scenario, uh, Proto Man comes in, and Proto Man is very angry. I think part of this is, like, not on the screen for some reason. Proto Man is very angry because, like, Proto Man before the Elect Man scenario also was, like, oh, this is a terrorist attack on Scilab. Please let the officials handle it, and Lan handled it anyway. Mm -hmm. And it turns out the data that Elect Man got was actually, like, fake data that was planted by the officials to try and track the World 3. And Mega Man almost stopped them from getting their fake data. Mm. So at this point, Chod is just like, all right, you, you strike two, you're out, buddy. Uh, he says, Proto Man, delete that Navi. Kill Mega Man. And so you battle Proto Man, and uh, <laughs> Mega Man wins. Proto Man is really easy in yeah. Battle Network 1. Proto Man eventually will go on to be like a very entertaining boss to fight, but like in Battle Network 1, he's kind of really easy. So uh, after that, we have like a scenario that may or may not actually exist because I do not know if this is real. But if you're playing the DS remake Operate Shooting Star, uh, you will have a very short scenario where you... Uh, Roll gets like kidnapped by this dude who looks a lot like Mega Man... And then, like, brought into this weird other area on the internet. And then Mega Man, like, our Mega Man chases after him. And, like, Mail is like, this guy who kidnapped Roll looked just like Mega Man. And you go and meet him. And it turns out it's uh, Geo, Mega Man Star Force, that Mega Man. But then it turns out they were both being duped by this Navi, this time-traveling Navi named Clockman, who... Uh, is kind of the villain of this scenario, and you have to, like... This scenario sucks because it becomes a pixel hunt at this point. Like, Clockman's internet area, his little dungeon or whatever, is literally a circle. But every time you get a quarter around the clock to each, like, major, like, quarter, uh, you have to just go back to the real world and do a pixel hunt. It is terrible. Mm, it's not really it. not fun. The only no, fun part of this scenario imagine. is before you start that dungeon, you have a boss fight against Star Force Mega Man, which is actually a pretty fun fight. He uses a lot of... It's interesting to see a lot of his moves from the Star Force series translated into the different gameplay style of Battle yeah. Network. I liked it a lot. But uh, it does not excuse any of the stuff. Clockman's an okay boss fight. Uh, fun fact about Clockman, uh, he was originally a... Uh, a fan submitted design of an FMian whose name I forget. It was like Clock Emperor or something like that. Mm. Some con maybe some constellation because they're they're all constellations. But uh, it got retooled when they decided they'd rather him be a Navi, and so he became Clock Man. And then uh, they never mention this again. I don't know if it's canon. It might not have actually happened. But uh, moving time, on. Time travel is weird, man. Time travel is weird. So uh, back to the main plot. Uh, Land decides it's time to take the fight to the World 3, and so he has to go find four ex-World 3 members to get them on. One is, uh, one's like his teacher's younger, or twin sister, Miss Yuri, and, uh, she was there. There's, like, three other ones. I don't really remember the rest of their names. Excuse me. Does your slide say Mega Man goes to the back of the internet? Yeah. Yeah. Is there a That's back it. to the internet? Yeah, there, there's the other side. Yeah, you can go to like the end of the internet in this game. There are two ends of the internet in Battle Network 1. It's not really like a society that kind of loops on itself. Like you can just actually get to the end of the internet. So uh, when they do this, they get the four X-World 3 passes, which lets them go deeper and deeper into the internet. And once they're at the back, they find the passageway to the World 3 area of the internet which is where they find Dr. Wily's personal customized Navi, Bomb Man. And you beat Bomb Man, but when Bomb Man dies, he is like, I am taking, like, I'm not going to let you just get away with this. He blows up the entrance to the World 3 area so you cannot actually go there. He, 
he suicide this, bombs himself. Yes, yes. He actually blows okay. himself up, destroying say, the passageway to the World 3 area. Is Al-Qaeda theory is holding water. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. A lot of stuff blows up in this series. All right, so... But when they do beat him, he leaves behind a bit of data, which is location data, which lets them know where the World 3 is, like, in the real world, so they can just directly go there. So Lan takes this data, gives it to his uh, dad, and his dad is like, all right, I'll decode this, but like, I really don't want you to go there. It's really dangerous. But, the, but he goes anyway. Of course Lan's going to go anyway. All his friends are there for him. How does a fifth grader get to an island? Uh, th- underneath his school, there is a secret metro line. The metro line's what the train is called. Why? Uh, that's just where they built it, I guess. It's like underneath a statue. Video game you, logic. Wait, and, it, and it runs directly to the island. Yeah. yeah that, well, that's how they were getting to ACDC. Town. Have you ever seen Logan Paul's The Thinning? No. <laughs> Move on. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> get to the World 3 Island. You have to go through all these areas, which are like each area is like a recreation of a previous dungeon. Like you have like the Fireman Dungeon, the Number Man Dungeon dungeon all those and at the end you fight uh the final member of the world three yahoot and his navi magic man now yahoot magic man and so uh mega man does not actually successfully defeat magic man magic man is just too strong he just comes back the moment he's defeated and mega man's like oh man i'm weak so lan's dad calls him and is like well, I've got just the thing for you. Did you know? And this is a huge plot bomb that, like, if you play the later games, they will just casually talk about this and spoil it. But it is, like, a big spoiler in this game. You find out that uh, Lan was originally a twin. And he had a brother named Hub Hikari. And uh, Hub died of an illness. It was like a heart disease. I forget what it was actually called, but it was some heart disease. And Hub died when he was, like, a little baby. But uh, Yuichiro, he's a very, very smart man. So he takes Hub's DNA, turns that into computer code, and turns that computer code into a net navi, and that net navi is Mega Man.exe. And there is no afterlife in this series, so he's just <laughs> subjecting him to death twice. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> Actually, no, it's almost definitely not true because there are like souls as like a real thing in this series. Like they, there are like souls that like interact with the human world constantly. So. <laughs> The, the sequel trilogy gets really, really silly. He just trapped his son's soul in the internet. Or maybe Mega Man is just like a soulless machine that has that doesn't have the soul. Uh, that's probably not true because of how in sync they are. That's that's only explored in the mainline Mega Man, not here. Yeah. Anyways, so, I'm so sorry, Woodman. What this all <laughs> what, what this all ends up amounting to is. Yuichiro made it so that, like, there was, like, a 0.2% like, difference in, like, the original hub code and what Mega Man's code is. So he gives Lan a program called hub.bat, a batch file, that will just, like, change those 0.2% to make Mega Man a perfect recreation of hub, which manifests itself in a way that just, like, all of Mega Man's stats are doubled because him and Lan are, like, operating in perfect sync. In later games, they would, like, do a similar thing where it's a massive power-up, but later games will also make it half Mega Man's health, mm-hmm. which is supposed to represent, like, when Mega Man gets hit, they both take damage. So that's just whenever you get, like, the huge combos going, whenever you do a whole bunch of... No, that's uh, that's more deck building, because decks, like, your battle chips have codes, and you just want them all to be the same letter. Yeah. No, all it does is takes Mega Man's, like, three stats, like, attack, rapid, and charge speed, and just doubles all of them. Okay. Okay. Which makes it really busted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, eventually, from this, like, you find out what Wily's final plan one was to revive this very powerful virus called the Life Virus, which has this unbreakable aura called the Life Aura. What the Life Aura is, is, like, there are barriers in the game that, like, say if you have a barrier that has 100 health, like, it'll take 100 damage, and then it'll go away. Mm-hmm. What an aura does, if you have an aura with 100 assigned to it... Uh, any attack that does less than 100 will just do nothing. But you, but you hit it with something over 100 and it'll instantly break. So the life virus has a life aura which has, over, which has 100 health. And that's kind of the big thing that makes the life virus like the ultimate virus that will unlaunch what uh, Wiley calls Cybergeddon. <laughs> Cyberside. <laughs> He's, he just wants to destroy the internet because what it, what it ends up being is that uh, Wiley just hates the internet because... 
when Wiley was studying robotics and Light was doing networking, Light's networking got funding over his robotics, and Wiley is just very jealous, and he wants revenge, so he wants to destroy the internet. So that's what he wants to do, and he wants to use the ultimate virus to do it. And the fact that, like, Light and Wiley, or, or whatever, T Tadashi Hikari and Wiley are, like, both kind of colleagues, it's kind of like how... And you find out later they kind of work together on early planning stages of the internet. And that's kind of how you... That's kind of, like, what justifies how Wiley has such an easy time uh, doing his terrorism. And also explains why Lan is... The, the whole Mega Man is hub thing explains why, like, Lan and Mega Man are so good at dealing with all these threats is because Mega Man is a very special Navi. Is Wiley his actual name, too, in the series? Yeah, his name is just yeah. Dr. Wiley in this. Oh, okay. Yeah. You never find his first name, so we don't know if it's Albert Wiley, but it probably is because he's still Dr. Wiley. Makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah, Mega Man defeats the life virus. Wiley Island blows up. Everyone's happy. Let's go home. Wyland. Wiley. Let's go to the Wyland. And yeah, this art here is the life virus, in case it wasn't obvious. Oh, I thought that was Clockman. Yeah, I also, I Bobby Man, Clockman. Baby. Yeah, so we got uh, the post game of Battle Network 1, because all these games have post games. <laughs> Not much plot here. Yeah, no. In this <laughs> yeah. one, there isn't much, but usually there is a story attached to the post games here. So uh, in this one, it's just kind of like, you know how you went to the back of the internet to fight Bomb Man? Well, in this game, it's just kind of like you go to the... There's a second path to the back of the internet, which takes you through the undernet. And when you go through the undernet, that's where, you're like, in one area you'll fight Pharaoh Man here. In another one you'll fight Shadow Man here. And uh, that's basically it. Every area will have, like, a challenge where, like, as you go through it, you have to be, like, above a certain rank or get through in a certain amount of time or whatever. So you get to the back, and when you get there, if you have every chip... Except, well, there will be one that's missing because you get that chip doing this. But uh, you can fight base... And when you beat base, you get you get the final chip, which is a life aura chip. It just gives you the life aura the life virus had. Why does base have the data for the life virus? We'll just have to find out later, because that's in a later game. So Pharaoh Man, wasn't he yeah. really big in the Battle Network? In the TV anime, he straight up show? deletes Mega Man at one yeah, point. Yeah, yeah. There was a board game based around that they had that was yeah. just a really jank version of Monopoly, if I remember correct. <laughs> it's just instead of money, you're collecting like Mega Man data bits. Yeah. I, Which, uh, by the way, that has to be I never got any friends to play it with me. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that has to be non-canon because one of the things that uh, Yuichiro mentions when he gives uh, Lan hub.bat is that once this is fixed, like Mega Man's data is completely unique and cannot be restored. So like unlike most navvies where if they're deleted they can come back. If Mega Man is ever deleted, he is just gone. That's why you game over if you lose. Hmm. So that's uh, th that's it for Battle Network 1. We've got some character bios. We've got, uh, here's Lan and Mega Man. They're the deuteragonists of the Battle Network series. Lan's kind of a uh, typical, like, uh, young Japanese anime trope where he's like, he doesn't care. He doesn't want to go to school, man. He doesn't want to do his homework. And Mega Man's like the responsible one. Like, man, you got to wake up on time. You got to you gotta do your homework, Lan. And uh, other than that, like, you know, they're super chill with each other. They're brothers. Uh, that's their design. Oh, yeah, they never get taken seriously. They save the world six times. <laughs> they get acknowledged for it once. Uh, yeah. Uh, here's uh, male Sakurai and Roll. <laughs> <laughs> also 12. 12. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm the, I'm the one can, who got on to you for... She throw the uh, headband thing. Like, that's the uh, attack you get from Roll. I, I, no, no. Her, uh, Roll's chip is like she like goes in front of an enemy with oh, them with yeah, the hairband. Oh, yeah, and then the thing spins and, around. And then she heals yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Yeah, throughout the story, that's like... That's a really good chip. Especially early on, like, yeah. the healing's really good. Like, at certain points through, like, every Battle Network game, Mail will give you, like, a chip that lets you call in Roll to help. Mm -hmm. Huh. Because, like, every Navi, including the bad guys, have their own battle chips associated with them. Yeah. Like, for the bad guys, after you beat them in the story, you have to, like, go and find their harder versions throughout the internet, like, just hidden in corners. Mm -hmm. And when you beat them, if you do well enough, you get a battle chip of that character. Hmm. Which is, it's really fun hunting down, especially when you hunt down, like, the bosses, like, real early. If you want a challenge, go for that. Yeah. And once you beat the version 2, which is just hidden in corners, like, in that area, the version 3 will just, like, be a random encounter. 
so you might just like randomly get your teeth knocked in. <laughs> Think Princess Peach, mostly a damsel, can fight if the plot demands. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. in certain a games, game based around how she can actually hold her own pretty well. Yeah, it's called Super Smash Bros. Melee. <laughs> or Super Princess Peach. No, that game sucks. <laughs> I like that game. No, I don't have a problem with it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, know. basically there are a few times when Roll is like shown to be a competent, like Navi, like they're competent net battle force, but they don't really do much plot significantly. But that's all of Land's friends. <laughs> Speaking of Land's friends who don't do much, <laughs> uh, Dex Oyama and Gutsman. <laughs> All right, so in the first game, uh, Dex is more of like a bully, and he's just like, Lan, you and your wimpy Mega Man, I'm going to beat you up. And then, like, eventually they become friends. Like, they start out like complete enemies. They kind of don't like each other. Eventually they become kind of like frenemy rivals, and, you know, like, by the end of three, like, they're, they're pretty good pals. They really care about each other. Uh, Gutsman talks like a caveman. That's true. Uh I don't know if this is necessarily in the games. In the anime, Dex had, like, a crush on male, and that kind of, like, became, like, kind of a, a running theme of, like, her rejecting them in favor of Lan, but... So he's a simp? Kind of. Oh, nice. I love how you... <laughs> simp <laughs> I love man. how most of your slides now have, like, some kind of joke in it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of them do. <laughs> Dex thinks he's hot shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh... <laughs> Gutsman's chip is really good because area control is very important in the series. Yeah, you can knock out part of the board for the enemy yeah. and they just That's can't a go really, there. I really yeah, that. Yeah, so Gutsman can, can like makes stuff, like, all the panels in front of him cracked. Mm -hmm. And so you can and when you move on a cracked panel, when you move off, that's a hole that you can't move on. So it's very good for like locking enemies in place so you don't have to worry about whether or not you hit them. Gutsman, very nice chip. Also, these character bios, there aren't going to be too many after this first batch because it's a lot of the same reoccurring cast throughout the series. Uh, this is Yai and Glide. Uh, Glide, I don't even think I mentioned him in the original lecture, but in yeah. Mega Man Legends 2, there is a rival pirate group to the Bonds, <laughs> and they are Glide and his bird bots, and that's who this Glide guy is based on. Oh, that's cool. I didn't he know they, I didn't know they referenced horrible, that. He looks horrible, though. Yeah. He's like the worst design. Well, he never fights. You never yeah. see him do anything. <laughs> Glide sucks. doesn't have a chip because he sucks. Yeah. <laughs> Glide does not have a chip because he sucks. Yai also sucks. Her gimmick is that she's rich. She's really annoying. Oh, of course. Yeah. She She's, reminds me of the chick from Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, she, she has like a giant like man. She is a lot house. like Princess Morb. She is a lot like Princess Morbux, actually. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first thing Look that came to my mind. Line. Yeah. She's already <laughs> she's already balding at the age of like <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she's Four. also twelve. She looks a lot younger. She looks. Like, she looks like she's like five. Yeah, she looks like five. I know a Japanese man would be like, damn. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, Eugene Chode and Pro. <laughs> I forgot his pants were camo. Yeah. <laughs> this, so this man takes himself very seriously. Why do they give him Proto Man? <laughs> what? They, well, he's they, supposed they to be like fit. the. Yeah. Serious rival dude. You're supposed to take him like really seriously. Zero. He takes himself really seriously. Yeah, so uh, because they didn't really reference much outside of the classic series, they decided to like not make Proto Man just red Mega Man. They gave him like some design ideas from Zero, most notably the sword yeah, and the uh, and like it his hair long thing. hair. Yeah. yeah. Which I think was a good idea. I think Proto Man is really cool, oh. even if I don't like Chod at all. I had a proto man. Eugene I had a proto Chod. man toy, and the the hair annoyed me so bad that I cut it off. <laughs> I didn't like that he had long hair. That's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, so basically, uh, oh yeah, because proto man had a scarf too. His long hair is also supposed to be reminiscent of that. But like one of the design rules they had in this series was navvies are not allowed to have clothes. Ex there's one exception, and we'll see him later. But uh. Yeah. Also, Chad made Proto Man himself. He's he programmed power. Proto Man himself, <laughs> which is really cool. He's a prodigy. He's a very very talented net battler. At the age of twelve, he is already like working with the officials who are like people the government hires to take care of net battle related incidents. So, very important character, but he is kind of a douche. Fuck you, Lan. I already and got my GD. <laughs> and unless I slip up, I will be referring to him as Chode for the rest of the lecture. <laughs> All right. Chode. Uh, th that's Miss Mary. 
She's a teacher. Teacher. <laughs> That's awesome. uh, oh, yeah. Here are some World 3 guys. Uh, we got Higsby and Number Man on the left. Mr. Match and Fireman on the right. Higsby's great because eventually you have where he's just running the shop and you get a yeah. bunch of really rare chips from him. So he's like a slot machine eventually. Yeah, he runs the shop on like most of the other games. Yes. I don't know if you noticed this, but he's actually the, the kid from Digimon grown up. Uh, oh, yeah, Higsby? Higsby yeah. is? Yes. That oh, hair, dude, he is! That hair is spot on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Move, move the glasses up to rest on his uh, head instead of his eyes, and there you go. He's yeah. also Cowboy Bebop Mr. Cowboy. Oh, Spike. Yeah, he does kind of look like Spike, too! <laughs> That's wild. Uh, he's nowhere near as cool as either of those Generic characters. Generic anime hair. Kind yeah. of, yeah. Uh, Fireman's so. pretty wild. Wow, I love it. Yeah, I like how they take a lot of the early robot masters and like remake them into kind of this like more more directly humanoid design. Like they're taller, they're more slender. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Fireman just looks like a like straight up superhero. Hello, cool. my name yeah, is Ignition that. Montoya. You killed my fire. Ignition. <laughs> <All right>. Ignition. <laughs> yeah. uh, there we have Doctor Freud and Cold Man, and then Stone Man on the right. Remember, he doesn't have an operator. Yeah. Oh, Cold Man's just. Cute. Like, that's the design. He's an ice climber. He's an ice climber. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He is an ice climber. Yeah. Uh, his Everybody design like, is basically yeah. exactly the same as it was in the original. Because he was also, say, like, a small he, kid. He Mega looks Man a lot one. like the original. His yeah. face yeah. makes me think of Squirtle doing the bubble attack. Yep. Yeah, I can see yeah. that. All right. There we have Count Zap and Elect Man, as well as Miss Mad and Color Man. <laughs> looks like Clown Man. There is. Oh, actually, there's no Clown Man in the series. Even though I think there was in the classics, but there are multiple clown-themed enemies, but never a clown man. Hmm. I don't know. I have no clue if this is canon. That's Clockman and some art done for the crossover. Oh, Clockman looks way worse in that picture. Yeah, that's pretty. Wrong. Yeah, no, it's really. He reminds me of uh, Entropy from. <laughs> Yeah, he does look like Entropy. He, he's Clockman. How are we gonna convey this to the kids? Clocks. Put, just put a bunch of clocks on him. <laughs> yeah. Give him oh, God. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Holy crap! They That's should've... a lot of clocks. Uh, do you have the time, sir? Yeah. <laughs> they should have. There have we have uh, Bomb Man as well as Yahoot and Magic Man. Uh, Yahoot's design was actually based on Dalsim from Street Fighter. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> yeah. Capcom too. So uh, not. Yeah, Bomb Man looks. He's Bomb cool. Man looks kind of rough. Yeah, Yahoot is yeah. not racist. No, yeah. no, he's based on Dalsim, yeah. who might also be a racist because character. <laughs> could be a racist character. But uh, you can kind of see on Bomb Man's design that he kind of has like a W there because he's Dr. Wily's personal Navi. All the Navis have like personal symbols, which in the front of the camera back there, you can see Mega Man's symbol, which is kind of that thing. You could see Mega Man and Land standing on it back there, like back when I was on that slide. So they all have that. And usually their operator will incorporate that on their design somewhere as well. Mm-hmm. Like Rolls is a heart, uh, Gutsman's is like I don't know, like a. It's like a plus. It's like yeah, it's a, a construction like thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So th- they're all like that. I'm not going to point them out. I might point out one more because it's like a neat tidbit of a character who otherwise doesn't really have one. But uh, moving on, these are side characters. Technically, these aren't optional bosses. The shark. What the heck? That's Shark Man. That's I, Shark Man I, I and you. Masu. <laughs> He's a recurring character in the anime, but I think he's only in this game in the games. On the left, you have uh, Sal and Woodman. She shows up a few times later. I I know she's at least in four. Is she the one that gives you the bamboo sword chip? Probably. Okay. And And then Skullman looks sick. Yeah, on the right, you have uh, Mayu and Skullman. Skullman, that's sick. I like that one. (laughs) Pretty pretty interesting. he's edgy. Yeah, you th- they're supposed to be optional Holy bosses, <laughs> but when you're trying to hunt down Bomb Man to get to the back of the internet, to get like the passcodes to get further in the internet, you actually do have to beat all these guys. So they're technically not optional, but you can just do them whenever you want. They just pop up during the story. Sharkman is so uncomfortable looking, man. It's he's a very annoying boss to fight, too, because he spends most of his time under. underwater. Yeah. Oh, boo. So yeah, nobody up. likes Sharkman. He, he fight him once and never fight him again. His hands just look weird. Oh, yeah, the hands yeah the they're kind of like thin hands. I don't like them. <laughs> I'm going to like, slap the right. shit out of you. Here's the Hikari family. I mostly put this slide here to show Lan's mom and dad, because I've already shown the other two, but uh, yeah, that's what super, they look like. they're super basic looking. Yeah. yeah. You can notice that uh, Lan's dad has the same logo on him, though, as Lan does, so that might be just the Hikari family logo. It's their crest. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> what the holy be, heck is going on in here? They should be the mom's richest stance. crap. They invented the internet. 
Uh, maybe. Maybe they just like to live... Uh, normal. Yeah, normal. Maybe they, they just like I, that. That talks about that in a couple of the games, I thought. Like, that's why they move later on, right? No, they move in six because Lan's dad gets a new job. Okay. Yeah, so... Here's Dr. Wily. Oh, he yeah. keeps his skull motif, especially with his little cane thing. Mm -hmm. I love that cane. It, it is a cool cane. Uh, he has it in every game. He just kind of looks like a more... I, I guess he does just look like a direct Battle Network translation of the original design. He's yeah. less cartoony, mm -hmm. a little more anime. Uh, as you can probably imagine, we will see more of Wily in the future. He comes back pretty often. And uh, yeah, like I said before in the main story, his motivation is that he was colleagues with Dr. Ikari and then he's jealous because it, things didn't really work out for him. There is a lot more to learn about Dr. Wily actually. He is actually a very fleshed out evolving character in this series. Huh. But we won't really get to that until later. Okay. Alright, so next we have Mega Man Network Transmission. This is a platformer on the GameCube. That is what? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect this. <laughs> what? I included basically every Mega Man game, but uh, <laughs> the ones that <laughs> well, <at least laughs> this game that. sucks. So let's just hurry up. Let's just get the it zero over with. Virus. Yeah. So uh, remember how I said they did? No. Of course it sucks. The zero virus is a part of it. Yeah. No. 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 You're thinking of uh, X6's nightmare zero virus. nightmare. No. The zero virus is basically just the Maverick virus in the main series. This is kind of like the equivalent of that, where zero just is a virus in this game. Huh. And, like, basically, there's a fake vaccine for the Zero Virus that just makes robots go insane. And this guy called the Professor is just trying to get some money so he can make a stronger life virus called the Life Virus X. But you mostly fight a bunch of the same dudes from Battle Network 1. Oh. And it's not very great. It's, it's a plat It's a platformer. It's not super great. The art is cool, though. There are a few oh, new ooh. navvies here. We have wow. Needleman, Swordman, Star Grab... Starman... Had to have been a fan favorite design because he returns later in 4.5 as just like a cameo kind yeah, of. Yeah, I, I like how it kind of melts into the different colors with like that pixel thing. Kind yeah, of like and his head is shaped like yeah. a shooting star. That's cool. Yeah. Bright man's funny. Bright man is pretty <laughs> funny. His eyeballs. <laughs> yeah, his, <laughs> eye, his eyes are light bulbs. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. <laughs> That's zero oh, on EXE. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's not so great. It's like they he looks they, like a Gundam. I am your father. They Do tried to make him look more virus-like because they already well, one like he is a virus, and yeah. for another thing, it's kind of like they already used a lot of like the signature zero design pieces for Proto Man. Yeah. So they were kind of like, uh, we don't really know what to do with this guy. Just make him like really edgy and I'm about to say he make looks him like a virus. he looks like a like a Gundam or something. Yeah. yeah. The worst the worst part about this design is they he literally still has the slots, but they removed his glass nipples. Aww. And that's terrible. <laughs> he got scooped. Unacceptable. He did get scooped. But let's go on to Battle Network 2. This game is uh, Kino Incarnate. It's, uh, it only gets better from here until, until it doesn't. Until we hit four. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, I, threw, I threw a few memes in. So, uh, so basically the entire internet gets redesigned, which is basically just an excuse to not make the internet labyrinthine. Which basically now, like, in every area, there's, like, a much thicker path meant to represent, like, higher bandwidth that is just, like, the actual way to get through the internet. And at the end of every area is something called a net square, which is just, like, a social hub for navvies. Mm -hmm. And so the internet is just way more fun to run around now. <laughs> so, I, I just now read, sorry, I just now read the uh, what they were saying. In the <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that really quick. Uh, Mega Man and Lan, like, they're just messing around on the internet, hanging out in the new Cyber Square, and this guy comes by and is like, hey, you can get your net battler license. It's ba basically, you prove yourself a talented enough net battler that you can just do, you, you have, like, a few extra privileges because, like, everyone knows that, like, you're good at net battling. You're not, like, a danger at, like, getting you everything You can be ruined. a mod. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I'd necessarily say that, but... Uh, Moderate the internet. Not, viruses. not really, because you don't really have any authority over other people. Hypnospace. You can just like go to certain other areas. You need to do real mods. Maybe. I mean, I think the officials Hypno probably mods. serve as like the mods of the internet. Mm. Probably. But uh, anyways, Lan gets his Z license, and uh, immediately after, Glide calls, and he's like, Yai's air conditioning is acting up. It, there's too much gas. She can't breathe. Oh, yeah, it she's, almost kills her. Yeah, she's yeah. trapped in her bath, and uh, you go in, you go into her air conditioning unit, 
and uh, you fight Airman, who is cool. And that's where that first line of dialogue on the slide where Yai is infamously like, too bad for you, Lan. You missed out the chance to see Moi naked. And Lan probably like regurgitates in his mouth a little bit or a lot. <laughs> I forgot, like, yeah, a lot, like, on that screenshot posting page, I'm always seeing stuff from you guys on. They they put a lot of cre- screenshots of Battle Network in there because there's some meme-worthy lines in yeah. these games. Yeah, well, Battle Network 2 in particular, the translators just didn't really care about, like, localizing to the point of removing stuff that might not be appropriate for, like, young kids. So there are a lot of things in this that are just, like, not necessarily kid-friendly. Well, I, I wouldn't say not kid friendly, but like more than you'd expect out of a game for kids. And also, the jokes land. Yeah, <laughs> the jokes do land. <laughs> like, uh, there's one part where they go camping, which is directly after this. They go camping, and like, uh, they invite Chode, but he refuses. But then he shows up anyway, and he's just like, "I'm not here to hang out with you, land." And that's where that oh, yeah. scene yeah. comes, where he's like, "Do you not like having fun?" <laughs> which is a very usable image. But uh, they go to there this. There you go again. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they go to this park and they're just like camping out. They're having a good time. And uh, basically after a, a little bit of camping shenanigans, it turns out there are a bunch of bombs laid around everywhere by this terrorist called Speedy Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Speedy Dan? Yeah. Speedy Dan. And oh, uh, Speedy man. Dan's navy is Quick Man. Oh, nice. And uh, basically, you have to go into, like, a bunch of different devices, which are all, like, a different area in the Quick Man dungeon. You beat Quick Man at the end, because it turns out the final bomb was Speedy Dan's PET itself, which he is just going to, like, make Quick Man detonate his PET and blow it up and kill a bunch of civilians. Also, after the Airman scenario, the guy who operated Airman, whose name was, like, Arashi or something... uh, when he's like walking away, he's about to take the metro line to go somewhere. His suitcase blows up, and then you, Lan doesn't know this, but this is like something shown to the player, and he gets like a phone call saying, "You will not underestimate the net mafia gospel." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, before, net mafia gospel. Yeah, named after uh, Bass's dog Treble in the Japanese was called Gospel. They just didn't localize that to Treble, so he's uh, named after that. Okay. His uh, dog, if you remember, before gospel, yeah, before. they're they're the mafia and this, the net mafia. Dude, they're a lot more brutal than the uh, World Three was. Maybe they've blown up a lot of stuff. Before yeah. we leave the campground, are we gonna leave out the part where you jack into a bear? Oh yeah, yeah, you do that when you, when you first come in, like a bear statue that's actually like a security system is acting up. And you, you jack into a bear. There's like a line of dialogue where Land's like, "I'm gonna go jack into that bear." <laughs> There's Amazing. a lot of fun camp shenanigans, but uh, we can't cover every fun little... This, yeah. this, no, I just remembered it. It's great. Can't go over every fun little moment. I've put in a bunch of highlights, but... I'm you, excited. You, yeah. But, like, you can't cover everything. You really ought to play these games yourself. Yeah, I've, I've always heard this is the one to play. This oh. one and three. I think two, because two still kind of has the issue where it's like, it's like Battle Network 1 that it's like scenario, scenario, scenario. Yeah. There's yeah. not much of an overarching plot. Battle Network 3... The gameplay, there's a little more filler. It, th- it feels a little more bloated, but the story overall is much better. But uh, 2 and 3, both very fun and have pretty decent stories. Those are the two great games. Battle Network 6 probably has the smoothest gameplay, but they never give you a proper challenge, mm-hmm. unfortunately, because Battle Network 6's gameplay is really good. Battle Network 6 had a competitive scene for a little bit when it first came out. Huh. And it was fun, because Battle Network 6's actual gameplay mechanics are yeah. great. Oh, yeah. But uh, two and three, the best overall packages for sure. Okay. Anyways, moving on. After that terrorist incident. Oh, yeah. And the thing was uh, Mega Man, <laughs> like Quick Man was, before he almost blew himself up, he was like, uh, he said like, no, don't, I'll, I'll stop. And then like uh, Mega Man's like, well, all right. And he's like, sucker, I'm going to blow myself up. <laughs> and then Proto Man, because remember, Chad was also there. Proto yeah. Man comes in and cuts Quick Man in half. He's like, Lan, you are a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like Proto Man. Well, no, no, Chod says that. Proto Man is like very serious, like official, like, yes, sir, Chod. Program executed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he just it's follows orders. <laughs> yeah. Well, the Proto, Man's, Proto Man's cool. I like Proto Man. Yeah. Uh, cho- cool. Chode's a Chode, though. Anyways, after this, uh, there's another, like, series of, like, side missions where, like, you're introduced to the side quest system, which is literally a help board Mm -hmm. where you just take on people's requests and you do (laughs) some favors for them. 
And by doing a certain three, you get your A license, which is like the step up from the Z license. So Lan has more privileges to go to more places on the internet. And uh, because he can now travel to other countries' internets, uh, he has like a summer project he has to do, or at least some sort of school project, where he has to write, a, it's a creative writing topic, and he decides, hey, I'm a dumb kid who loves to eat. How about I do foods around the world? And then like he has to narrow it down eventually to Yumlandian food, which is like, there are kind of two Africa paralogs in mm -hmm. uh, the Battle Network series. There's Yumland, which focuses mostly on like interesting cuisine and that kind of stuff. And then there's Netfrica, which is more just like their tribal people. Uh, so one's a much more positive uh, portrayal than the other. But uh, they're both kind of based on Africa. And uh, so Lan wants to do a report on Yumlandian food. So he wants to go to the Yumland internet. So it's just an empty plate? No, no, they have plenty of food. There, there is no starvation and hunger in the Mega Man Battle Network. There's no poverty. Yes. No, I was well, there, there, a joke about Africa. We'll arrive to 20 I know, but I don't appreciate your racism. <laughs> it's not racism. People are starving. No, it's not racism. It's just what's actually happening. But it's not true to Mega Man. Fair. There, there is, like, some class stuff. Like, you go to a certain place in Battle Network 2 where, like, there are just, like, poor people living in alleyways. But, like, it's... Presume there's no like homelessness. That's just kind of their lifestyle, I guess. They don't really. <laughs> no, I like it. Don't put your government up to fixing it. Yeah. Anyways, uh, <laughs> but he. Oh yeah, I put that meme. In. <laughs> I forgot that uh, Speedy Dan says this when you're about to beat him. He was like, "How could two kids beat me? Future head of gospel IQ 170." <laughs> So anyways, he goes to the Yumlandian internet only to find it decimated. Every Navi there is deleted. And so Mega Man's like going through it. He wants to go to the back and he finds out eventually that this assassin Navi Shadow Man, if you'll remember him from the post game of Battle Network 1, uh, he deleted all the Navis in the Yumland network because he's trying to find this program that they like held very close to them. It was like their guarded national treasure, change.batch. Or change dot bat, whatever. Mega Man is attacked by Cut Man, who is just there. Cut Man does not have an operator. He is just there, and he attacks Mega Man, and Mega Man beats him, and that's that. Because they didn't want Shadow Man to be the boss yet. Mm -hmm. But during this process, Mega Man finds the ghost of the head Navi of Yumland, and he gets change dot bat from that guy. And then you go to the next scenario where Shadow Man is in Electopia, who's trying to like attack the officials. And it's during that scenario where you're trying to stop Shadow Man from attacking the officials that Change.Bat finally kicks in and you're, you unlock the ability to have style changes, mm. which is where Mega Man will turn into a random style and element. So, like, you'll have, like, any elemental element that's there, you know, fire, wood, etc. And also a style that is based on your gameplay. The element is random, but the style that you get is actually based on how you play the game. If you use a lot of chips, you'll get, like, the team or brother style, which, like, lets you hold more Navi chips. Uh, if you have, like, really good, like, flow in your deck, like, you have a lot of the same code, you'll get custom style, which lets you select more chips on the custom screen. That's the best one. Mm -hmm. If you use a lot of defensive chips, you'll get uh, shield style. Use your buster a lot. You'll get gut style. Uh, very fun. Uh, it's a really interesting mechanic, and I like it a lot. And when, after that, you know, you just beat Shadow Man, and that's cool. And then after this, because Shadow Man was, he was not a part of Gospel, but he was hired by them. And so finally, after these three incidents, like, the officials are just like, all right, we got to do something. So they fly in people from all over the world to, uh, to deal with gospel, to meet and argue about what to do. And so uh, when you get there, eventually it turns out that one of the officials, who is, like, actually some royal from some country, Princess Pride, uh, she is actually a net mafia spy, and she just uh, betrays everyone, locks them all up. And her Navi, Nightman, is controlling, like, the systems. They, like, hijack everything. And so, because, like, there are people all over the world. Lan got recognized for once, and they were like, okay, well, you dealt with these other incidents. Can you come and, like, testify about what you did? Chod's there, of course, and a bunch of people from around the world. You have, like, a bunch of characters like that. Like, uh, you find this guy, Raul, who uh, does Element Man. I think he was there, which he was in Netopia when you first went there. I think that's when that is. But anyways, yeah, you just go into, like, the castle's security systems and you eventually beat Nightman. 
And uh, that's about that. So on the plane ride back, you're on a plane, and the plane gets hijacked. Eventually, you find out that it's this guy, uh, Gauss Magnus, and uh, his Navi what? Magnet Man. Oh, okay, yeah, Magnet Man comes back. But uh, it doesn't really matter yet, because during, like, the turbulence of all the plane shaking and stuff, some, like, animal collector who was there, a very rare spider with very deadly, dangerous venom, gets let loose. And the only thing that it's really attracted to is the smell of fine whiskey. And so when they're all trying to figure out what to do, what about this Navi hijacking us? What, what about everything else? Lan, of course, is tasked with obtaining the whiskey. And uh, this is how he does it. <laughs> no way. Some of this wiki, you got to get out of the crib, bro. Oh, suck your mama milk. What? You still up in my face? Oh, my God. All right, kid. We'll see what's up. You want some of this? It ain't going to be free. <laughs> oh, my God. I can't read. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> 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 What the hell? <laughs> oh. Wait. I thought this guy would give you cognac instead of whiskey. I don't, I don't get that joke. Hennessy instead of... No? Oh, no. Okay. I said no racism. <laughs> so... <laughs> You rap battle this man. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually just means you repeat his lines back at him. Because, of course, there are no better lines than the ones he comes up with. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, child. Lan whiskey. gets whiskey. I'm pretty sure this guy actually does not know about the spider. He just gives Lan whiskey for being a good rapper. Oh, hold up. Just, Can we go to the next? just save that man's oh, life. Is that a... Uh, Whoa. All right, yeah, saved his life, and he didn't even know it. Land's a champ, and he's about to get his sip on. <laughs> so after his ascension to rap godhood, you see that Eminem actually stands for Mega and Man. <laughs> uh, he goes to sleep. Like, he, he makes it back home fine. And he is goes, that, is goes that gospel? Yes, that is the Bug Beast gospel. That's the not. final boss of this game. Ooh. So, yeah, eventually you it's find out that, like, Gospel's boy. not only the Net Mafia, but, like, their big project they're working on, the Bug Beast. Nice. But uh, that's a little later. So, oh. next, uh, the Net is frozen over the next uh, day. It turns out it's the head of Gospel, Sean Obihito, I think is his name. Uh, his personal Navi, Freeze Man, is responsible for this. And you basically have to go all the way to the back of the Undernet in order to fight Freeze Man. And save everything. The world is not frozen over anymore. But uh, when they do this, they get the final piece of data they need. Because uh, they have two plans. One is to irradiate this one building that is their headquarters. Just a bunch. And like it radiates so strongly that the internet in the real world just start coinciding. Like internet stuff is just in the real world now. But the radiation, radiation works. <laughs> They're yes. a bunch of furries. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> my, my cat girls can finally come to me. <laughs> Take it back. Take it back. Gospel's going to make anime real. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, yes. anyways, it's coming from their tower and they're like, all right, well, that's what we, that's a big problem. So they make this anti-irradiation suit. Lan gets it for some reason. And uh, basically. Let's send this fifth grader in. <laughs> He stopped every. Uh, he stopped all of the other ones. His net navy did. He's a fifth grader. Well, okay. It's also bring it's, your it's USB, Lan. We need it. It's also shown that like Lan is actually a very talented operator as well. It's not just Mega Man. Oh, that's right, because they sync together. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Lan, make sure and bring your net navy. <laughs> also, your hazmat suit. <laughs> <laughs> no, they give him a hazmat suit. You'll need it, son. <laughs> Anyways, uh, he goes to the tower and he finds out what their actual goal was, was to create, they get a bunch of bugs and they mash these bugs together to create a copy of another Navi known as Base 
They are not trying to actually make base. Base already exists. He was in Battle Network 1. But uh, in Battle Network 2, they're trying to make a copy of base. They want to mash a bunch of bugs together to do that. So when you get to the top of their tower, uh, you beat their copy of base. And then once you beat that, like it starts to destabilize and eventually morphs into the Bug Beast Gospel, who is what is shown there. And that's the final boss. And this actually interesting later will tie into something from Battle Network 6, which is uh, interesting. But anyways, yeah, Mega Man beats Gospel, uh, the Bug Beast and the organization. And Lant, because like it turns out Sean's whole motivation the whole time. Who's Sean? The, lead, the, first, the leader of Gospel, the head. That's the first time hearing his name. I, I said literally... <laughs> Yeah, Obihito. Obi didn't pay attention. That's your fault. Anyways, Lan is now friends with him because it turns out he was just really lonely the whole time. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> he just wanted friends. He just he wanted people. a friend. He blew things up. He wanted to destroy the world because the world did nothing for him. That That's his deal. He's also 12. Wait, what? <laughs> he is also a kid. Oh. Oh, hell yeah. Whoa. All right, so here's the post game. Uh Anyways, there's a certain door in the undernet that opens after the end of the game. And uh, when you get there, you can go to the World 3 area. When you get there, you kind of just go through the area. It's just like a very difficult area. And you fight uh, Pharaoh Man, who returns from Battle Network 1, as well as Napalm Man, who is there. And eventually, at the very end, you'll fight Planet Man. I legitimately thought it was was supposed to be like Astro Man for a minute. I'm surprised it's not. There, I think there is an Astro Man in the game. Oh, my God. Is that Cubix? Are we fighting <laughs> Cubix? <laughs> Navi's for everyone. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, basically right before uh, right before he is deleted, Planet Man is like, uh, the World 3 will rise again. <laughs> and he also mentions that, like, in some way, Wily was manipulating Sean the whole time and kind of pulling the strings behind the Net Mafia. Just like I've landed. Yeah, and then later on, uh, you can kind of see, like, during the credits of the main game, you can see in the post-game, base is going around the World 3 area, deleting all the other copies of him that uh, the Net Mafia Gospel made. Hmm. So uh, that's the thing. And then after you beat Planet Man, you can find the real base just, like, as an encounter in Battle Number 2. Base is the, like, secret boss in, like, every single game. Doesn't Wild. Napalm Man come back in later yes. games? Okay. He's okay. in Battle Network 5. Good. His design is awesome. I believe Team Proto Man. Don't quote me on that. I, I like Planet Man. That was the one you ready for. Planet Man is an interesting design. Mm-hmm. He's got that... Uh, He's got those two butt plugs for feet. That's why, yeah. <laughs> that's why he reminded me of uh, Astro Man, just for some reason. I don't... He doesn't look kind exactly of. like it or anything, like but... I like his I guess. face. He's got those, like, empty eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is pretty cool. Anyways... Oh, yeah, here's a character bio. She reappears enough that I decided to give her a bio. Rabita, she's a news reporter. Her navvy's Toad Man. She's an optional <laughs> boss in a bunch of the games. Not very important, but there she is. This guy is actually important. This is Mr. Famous. What? He is in almost every game. <laughs> and uh, basically, he's always an optional boss. And in every single uh, thing, in every single game, his navvy that he has for that game is a fan design that was submitted. And they just like choose one to make into his navi That's for so that game. Cool. That's I've, so cool. I missed out as a kid not knowing that they had this. I would yeah. have loved submitting. I, like, I mean, th- these fan were art. these were Japanese kids' designs, obviously. Damn. But uh, in this game, his navi is Gate Man, who is broken because he. If you have his wind name and fan. Gate Man. Gate Man. Gate. Gate yeah. Man. That's what I heard. Yeah. I was like, "That's so." There's no way if you get a wind <laughs> and a fan, and then. Like, there's a program advance. Program advance is, like, you put three certain chips in a certain order, and you get, like, they combine. Yeah. It's, like, a very powerful attack. For Gate Man, you can trivialize this whole game by getting wind, fan, any Gate Man chip. Doesn't matter what version. And that gives you the Gator program advance. The thing is, is that it only does, like, 20 damage per hit, but it does, like, 16 hits. So, like, every single attack plus 10 you give it is 160 extra damage or something like that. I don't know. Basically, Gator is busted and it is very easily the best strategy for everything in the game it hey. annihilates everything main game post game doesn't matter it's broken it kind of ruins the balance of the game obviously you can kind of see he has like a different design in every uh in every appearance that he has i like the number motif on the shirt like it's yeah. kind of a shame that it didn't stick around for the one of him with like the sword yeah 
I don't know exactly if those correspond to something he does. It's like 15, 18. The other one, his arms are crossed. I don't know if he has that or not. I like it, though. Yeah. Oh, another cool thing is that the scenario designer for the series, uh, Masakazu Eguchi, uh, every time he appeared in public to some Battle Network relevant event, he would cosplay as (laughs) Mr. Famous. And also, Mr. Famous's design is supposed to look like him. Yeah. So it's really cool. That's great. Anyways, here we have the gospel dudes, oh, uh, wow. Speedy Dave and Quick Man, Arashi, Kazefuki, and Airman. They, it seems like they were more inspired by the class design. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I really like Quick Man's EXE design. Yeah. 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 It's like 3D almost. Yeah, yeah kind of. put a lot of gradients on him, like mm-hmm. way more than any other character design. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's Dusk. Cutman looks exactly like old Cutman. <laughs> yeah, Cutman looks exactly like old Cutman. Yeah. He has a C on his chest, you, though. You don't, you don't want to mess with that design. It's too good. Yeah, the guy on the left is Dark. He's Shadow Man's operator. I put him there, but obviously we've already seen Shadow Man. Mm-hmm. He's a ninja. They'll both be returning later. Uh, then we have uh, Gauss and Magnet Man, as well as Princess Pride and Night Man. Uh, all of these guys, except for Magnus Gauss, will appear later. Yeah. Uh, because Magnet Man reappears, but he has a different operator. Yeah, Magnet Man. It's like his daughter. Basically just Guts Man. But Mag, no, no, and when you like play as him in later games, like he plays completely differently. Yeah, no, like, like he draws everything in with his magnets. Yeah, yeah. you bring him has, to the first. Yeah, block. and there, he has like two of them because he has like the positive one and the negative one. Yeah, that's constantly yeah, there. yeah, yeah. So no, I'm just saying, just in his design, he's just yeah. guts man. Kind of, yeah. yeah. He's he's big fist dude. Mm-hmm. Anyways, uh, th- both of those two on the <laughs> left are Sean. <laughs> uh, <laughs> On the le- on the far left is what he actually looks like. He is just a kid, and then like he's kind of like in disguise for most of the game, and he kind of has this irradiated thing, which is kind of like reflective of the radiation that kind of like engulfs the world at the end of the game from his tower. But he basically always looks like that until the very end. And then on the right there is just Freeze Man. Both of uh, both of the two on the right, they they look like Ben Ten characters. They do. <laughs> they, yeah, they I look could a see lot. that. Yeah. I'm not familiar enough with the, Ben the 10 to the really right say absolutely that. absolutely looks like yeah. a Ben 10. Freeze yeah. Man. Yeah, I could see that, I guess. Wasn't there already like a diamond ice guy in There's ben? a diamond guy. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, I have he not watched more, it. Was... And honestly, I think this might have been right before yeah, Ben 10. Yeah, here we go. So now we get to my personal favorite game in the series. This is one of my first games I ever played. Battle Network 3. Which, also which in this game. did you play, blue or white? Uh, when I was a kid, I had white version, but I will just go ahead and tell you blue is the objectively superior version. See, there were two releases that were like a year apart in Japan. You had uh, EXE Blue was the, or EXE Blue, I think, was the first one in Japan. And then, no, I don't remember. I know in Japan it's blue and black for some reason. And basically one was an updated re-release. Like they added more content to the game. And then they kept that in both the versions here, and white is the worst one. It's the not not more modern one. So mm-hmm. always play blue. Also, uh, Mr. Famous is not even in white version. If you oh. saw back in Mr. Famous's art, there was like some like scrawny looking dude in the corner. That's yeah, his, apprentice. his apprentice. Yeah, uh, that's who you meet in white, and you don't get to fight his navvy because in blue, uh, his navvy is punk, and his apprentice does not have punk. That boss fight is just not in the game. Hmm. What, what, so, so what was the point of white then? I, that's what I, I don't they wanted to introduce Pokemon versions to sell more. Yeah. That's what I was thinking. Okay. There are some other chip differences, like all the giga chips you get, which are like every game has like five giga chips, which are like the strongest things you can get. They're different in every version. Once they introduce versions here, but like blue even has better giga chips. Blue has folder back, which Ooh, literally you yeah. use it, it instantly refills your like custom bar, so you go right back to the custom screen, and it gives you all the chips you've used back. Mm-hmm. Which, by the way, if you use all your chips, you can just be empty in SOL and only have your buster. Yeah, yeah, and that's, so, it takes forever. The thing about folder back is when it restores all your chips, it also restores folder back. You just, <laughs> so you have infinite He's chips. put it in. Yeah. yeah. So uh, always play blue version. All right, so uh, this starts out in Scilab, lands on a field trip there, and he's getting a tutorial on how to play the game. Every game starts with some sort of tutorial. It's usually like a school lesson or something where you learn how to play the game. It's actually really annoying. They don't let you skip it. Mm -hmm. It's easily the worst part of any Battle Network game. But uh, the next day, Lan remembers he forgot his homework, and he left it at school, so he doesn't even know what the assignment is. So he has to break in and get his stuff back. But when he does... 
uh, there's someone else who also broke in, and it turns out to be the operator of the Navi Flashman, who uses screens to hypnotize people. So, like, all of Land's dumb friends are, like, running around being even more useless than normal. Like, Yai is, like, spinning and calling herself, like, a ballerina pelican or something. Gutsman or uh, Dex thinks he's a train or whatever. Uh, and Mail, I think, was a zombie, and, like, the roll chip falls out of her pocket, and that's how you get in that game. But uh, anyways, what's eventually important is you go into the principal's computer and you beat Flashman, but you find out that Flashman actually got some data they were after because like most of the other games, you're trying to get a bunch of pieces of data. But you don't know why or who this guy is with yet. But uh, also right before Flashman dies, he does the shining browser charge or whatever. And uh, it actually causes Mega Man to go on the fritz and Mega Man cannot like properly fight. Whenever he's trying to talk to Lan, like his dialogue will like cut in and out. So eventually, Lan's dad gives him what's called a sub PET, which basically, like Mega Man, will like can be stored on the sub PET just fine, but he, it can't like jack in or anything, so it's terrible. And then uh, the next day, uh, this little kid comes in, Chisao, whose name literally means small, to contrast Dekao, which is Dex's name, which means big in Japanese. And uh, this kid is Dex's younger brother, and he, he's saying, like, he's looking for the number one battle in AHDC. And then, like, they, they bring him to Lan because they think he's looking for Lan, but uh, he's actually looking for Dex, who just lied and said he beats up Lan all the time. <laughs> but uh, you net battle Gutsman, and you actually have the option of whether or not you throw the fight. <laughs> but uh, you gotta, you got to put him in his place. <laughs> and oh, oh, 100%. Gets, yeah, of course. Um, but Land then kicks uh, Dex's ass for lying. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, after that, they're all hanging out. They've all met Chisau, and he's a cool dude. And they're ha- they're like chilling in the park, and this TV producer named Sunayama comes up. And Sunayama is like saying, "Hey, I'm gonna hold a tournament, a big tournament with the best net battlers all over the world, called the N1 Grand Prix." And this is the first like tournament arc in Battle Network. Which is really cool because usually the tournaments are good. People really like the N1 in this game, and that's why the next game kind of is how it is, but we'll get to that later. Anyways, uh, they all try to enter, and uh, all of them but Roll get in. Even Glide does somehow. (laughs) Yai and Glide actually make it, like, decently far. But uh, anyways, during all of this, uh, you get a new gameplay mechanic where Lan's dad sends you the Navi customizer, which lets you like do a little bit of programming. You get like a little like custom screen, and like you have programs you have to like fill in blocks for, and like you have to follow certain rules. Like the same color can't be next to each other. Certain programs have to be on this certain line, and other ones can't be. It's a very interesting way of like customizing Mega Man with different programs, like HP pluses, attack pluses, etc. Mm-hmm. That's a really weird thing to put in a kid's game. No, it's it's not like actual programming. Okay, the way you made it sound made it sound like super. No, like, it, no, no, it's, it's, it's like, actually, like what? It's actually, like a, it's, it's like a game of Tetris. Oh, kind, oh, kind yeah, of. I get you. I get you. Yeah, it's a block organization puzzle type okay, deal. Okay, cool. Yeah. And uh, it, it's it's a very cool mechanic in my opinion. Very welcome. The Japanese version makes you hard code everything. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Japanese version you have to like make you have to, like, the game yourself. Boss. <laughs> they give you the assembly and you have to compile it yourself. Anyways. Uh, during all of this, they go on a field trip to this place called Yoka Zoo. It's just a zoo. It's like next to an inn called the Yoka Inn. And while they're there, a uh, animal manager named I, I forget his name, man. Uh, but he's a zookeeper and he lets all the animals loose. And like while you're at the zoo before, Not you can like learn well. the facts about the animals, and that's kind of like relevant when you go into the computer to try and like stop Beast Man, who is that guy's Navi. And uh, you do eventually beat Beastman, but it turns out Beastman also got away with one of the four Tetra codes. What are those? We'll find uh, out. Oh, whoa. After this, you do some more <laughs> side quests, and Lan beats the N1 qualifiers, which is cool. And Lan is officially going to enter the N1 Grand Prix, which is awesome. But first, Mail wants Lan to come help her install a dishwasher. Sexist. This game is sexist. She loves to cook and clean, man. <laughs> Also, Miss Mari is there because she also is excited about this dishwasher and loves to cook and clean. But uh, basically, it's a dishwasher that just came out that is tied to the Internet of Things. You know, you can have your Navi do your dishes for you. Oh, this won't go wrong. 
Yeah, so it turns out this uh, dishwasher was made by the World 3. It's opera. <laughs> <laughs> it's a... Uh... Dr. Wiley. Dishes. <laughs> yes. Finally. <laughs> I died a virgin. <laughs> now everyone will, except he didn't. We'll find out. Oh, yeah. Anyways, uh, Bubble Man his son is. Chad, I'm gonna be mad if his son is Chad. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find out. Anyways, uh, Mega Man must defeat Bubble Man. Who Bubble Man is an operatorless navvy. He just wanders around the internet, and you have to chase him down throughout the internet. It's really annoying, and you get a style change because he has like these three goons with him, and you chase all of them down. And eventually you corner them, and like when Mega Man gets there, he gets a style change for the first time, and all the goons are like super afraid of him. They're like, oh no, which I uh, just hope you don't get a fire style because you're about to fight Bubble Man. But uh, what's important during this is eventually Bubble Man like swims across a very small path, which turns out you need to get a Navi customizer program called Press, which compresses Mega Man, lets him walk on small paths. To make that program work, you meet this guy, Dr. Kosak. Oh. Who uh, nice. will be important later, but it's kind of like you just run into him. He's like, hey, kid, are you having trouble programming? And Lan gives him his PET, and Dr. Kosak makes press work. I don't trust you, you Russian. <laughs> no, so Russians are good in this series. A little small child. Are you having trouble <laughs> with the programming? Yes. Oh, let me see your terminal. And so throughout, like, between every scenario, there's been, a, like, a little thing about the N1 Grand Prix. So it's like an overarching plot. And finally, it's time to begin the N1 Grand Prix. So everyone who made it past the preliminaries is blindfolded and put on a boat and taken to a place called Hades Isle, where they have to go into this net battle machine <laughs> and find certain data. Hey there, fifth grade child. <laughs> Would you like to go blindfolded on yes. the boat? There, there are the Hades far, Island. Far there, away from all your uh, adult guardians. <laughs> There are three children at this tournament because uh, in the finals, uh, no, four. Uh, Lan, Dex, Yai, uh, and Chode. Chode are all finalists. There are four other dudes, too. Uh, one of them is uh, Tamako, and her Navi is Metal Man. Another one is uh, the mysterious Net Battler Q. We'll find, we'll find out more about him later. At what? least they're all children. They're not locked on an island with an adult. I oh mean, no. Tamako and Q are adults, as well as, like, the two other generic guys who are there. It's a Boy Scout jamboree, and we all know what goes down there. <sighs> no. Lord of the Flies, anybody? No. So, anyways, later on, you actually start the tournament part where uh, your next round, like, uh, half the people get dropped. Yai is one of them. She falls on her head. She gets dropped through the floor, falls down, and lands on her head, and she is literally hospitalized after that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. But uh, Lan doesn't care. He continues on. Of course. <laughs> and uh, he next, the next round in his tournament is uh, against Tamako and Metal Man. You beat her. You can fight her earlier, actually, because she runs a gift store at the uh, Yoka Inn. So you could have already fought her at this point, I believe. But uh, you fight her again in the tournament, and it's cool. Like, I think Metal Man is a fun Navi to fight. I like Tamako's design as well. It's cool. She has like saw blades as like hairpins. What the heck? <laughs> uh, you'll see her later. She Anyways. Run, she runs an inn? Yeah. No, no. She uh, runs the gift shop at the inn. Okay. That's less impressive. Yeah. No. I don't know who owns the inn. Maybe she owns the inn. I don't know. Anyways. Uh, when you get to the final round, your next round, like there are only certain people left. Your next round is against Gutsman and Dex. You beat them, obviously. He's not the number one duelist. No, he's name. not the number one net battle. Uh, Chisao, very disappointed. Uh, had his childhood innocence ruined twice. And then uh, you go to the final round. Your next round is going to be against Chod and Proto Man. But uh, it turns out that uh, net battler Q is doing some weird stuff. Oh, wait, no, never mind. Uh, it's not going to be against Proto Man because net battler Q is battling Proto Man. But then like everything's getting like really weird and shaky. And then uh, another one of the finalists, uh, Tora, who operates Kingman, he's your next match. So you beat Kingman as well. Tora's kind of a dick. He makes you do some side quests earlier. I don't, or later. I don't really want to talk about it. But um, anyways, you beat them, and the Net Battler Q ruins some stuff, and you don't really know why. And then Net Battler Q throws off his cloak, and he's like, I was actually the producer of this whole thing, Sunayama, and I'm also a member of the World 3. And so his navi, Desert Man, is going to be the next boss. 
But uh, Suniyama decides not to play fair, and he tells Chad to come upstairs. And in like the production room, he has Chad's dad tied up. He has him hostage, and he tells Chad, "Hand over your PT. I'm going to dis- I'm going to destroy it and delete Proto Man, and then I'll give you your dad back." And Chad's like reluctantly, like, "Well, I guess I have to." Stupid you know. kid with your boss net navi yeah. i so, want it give it to me now I'm yeah beat your dad up. <laughs> yeah so uh land follows him upstairs <laughs> and land's thinking huh how can i how can i save chad how can i how can i deal with this problem because there's no place to jack in in the production room at least there's no place that'll like stop sunayama from just like killing uh chad's dad and so this is the solution that land comes up with which is one of the best cutscenes in the series it's up there with the rap battle Chucks his PT at the guy. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's really good. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Just drops him to the ground. It's so violent. Land's like, got, dude, Land's got an arm. No kidding. The uh, way he falls. That was yeah. the best battle yet. That's yeah, really that, good. That is the greatest net battle of all time. <laughs> uh, fight, fight me 1v1 real life. <laughs> Yeah, so after, after this, Mega Man fights and deletes Desert Man. Like, it's pretty obvious. Desert Man's an okay fight, I that guess. Desert Man? No, that guy on the right is Dr. Kosak. Oh, that's right, oh, because like Net Kosak. Navis don't wear clothes. Right. Yeah. Uh, but because of this, because Suniyama was behind it all, they don't, like, Lan and Chad don't actually get to face off in the finals because the N1 is obviously canceled from this. So they go to the hospital to check up on Yai, and they find this other kid who's, like, in the room next to her who is way more cool than Yai. So they hang out with him instead, called Mamaru, who I <laughs> – when I was a kid, I always pronounced it Mamaru, but it, it's supposed to be Mamaru. So basically, I'm going to slip up and say Mamaru at some point, but it's Mamaru. And uh, he has a complication that causes him to need an operation, but he's kind of a coward. So he's like, I don't, I don't know if I want to do this. Like, you know, it's very risky. Like, I'm going to die from this condition anyway. But, like, I might die earlier if I, like, get this operation and it's a failure. So he's really worried about that. And Lan's, like, trying to cheer him up. He's like, man, you got to do it, man. You got to go through with it. Be brave. I'm your friend. And so to, you have to find this, like, really rare chip, Ice Ball M, to, like, prove that you care about this kid. And then, like, uh, Mega Man personally is, like, very passionate about this. Like, he's really egging on land. Like, dude, you, you should really help this kid. Because it turns out that the condition that Mamoru is suffering from is the same thing that killed Mega Man when he was Hub. And they care a lot. And during this, uh, when Lan, like, gives him the chip and is giving him his speech about how, like, everything gets better always, uh, Sean actually comes in and joins in. He's like, yeah, like, sometimes it sucks, but it gets better. Believe. He just shows up. Yeah. Believe it. Yeah, yeah he just shows up. <laughs> Sean's just there. What's, okay, what's, Hi, what's Terrace. The, what's the, what's nice to see you again. Yeah. What's the gif of Land? <laughs> oh, that that's just from – that. that's That's not actually from the games. That's just from – that's just something I found on the internet that I thought was funny. <laughs> he just, like, winks smugly. <laughs> anyways. Uh, anyways, uh, so Mamoru agrees to go through with the operation, but the World 3 attacks the hospital. You have uh, Aneta and Plant Man, who Aneta is basically like this giant hospital symbolizes how far we've strayed from nature, and it's ruining everything. We have to return to Monkey. So, <laughs> so they're so, gonna they're gonna dark knight monkey. that hospital. Yes, <laughs> yes, they actually are. But no, there's a there, basically the power source of the entire thing is this tree called the Tree of Life. <laughs> and Plant Man yeah. takes over the Tree of Life, and like vines are like spreading throughout the hospital. <laughs> All the power's out, so like Mamaru is in like critical condition. <laughs> and so Lan obviously has to go through the whole thing. You get this really obnoxious program called uh, Fuck Energy you Change. And kills a whole bunch of cancer kids. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, it's implied that it's implied that Aneta is like very gullible, and that Plant Man's the one actually loyal to the World Three and just oh. kind of like takes well, advantage Poison of it. Well, Poison Ivy. We could, if we're going to get the, the Dark Knight parallel. Yeah. The weak should yeah, not kinda. survive. <laughs> Anyways, uh, rules of nature. Land does stop uh, Plant Man, obviously, brings everything back online, and the operation is a success. Mamaru is Mamaru. Mamaru is very happy about this. Yeah, I didn't die. And, yeah, now him, too. now him and Land are very good friends, but unfortunately, Plant Man did get the third Tetra Code. 
which is terrible. That's the last one. Oh, yeah, by the way, the N... No, it's just the third one. There's four Tetra Code. Oh, okay. Tetra, Tetra Code. Tetra. Yeah, the N1 was not... They didn't get any Tetra Codes from that. Their whole, like, plan there was just, like, a show of force. Like, they just wanted to break Chod's PET on live television. That was kind of the final plan there. We're going to break this 12-year-old boy's PET on <laughs> I mean, he's one of the best net battlers in the world. Anyways, uh... Immediately after this, Mr. Match gets a job at Scilab. He's a reformed man, and he wants Land to like help him like deliver maintenance data to random things in Scilab. Turns out they were all like fire-based hacks, and all of Scilab catches on fire. Land's dad is like in critical condition. <laughs> Land, no, this like actually like really messes with Land like emotionally. He's like, oh, I am a dumb kid who got taken advantage of. I'm a little in over my head here. But eventually you go to like the undernet. To like after you put out all the fires everywhere, uh, you go to the undernet to fight uh, Mr. Match's Navi, Flame Man. I'll probably call him Flam Man because they leave out the E in the game to like shorten everything down to eight letters. And so you fight Flam Man to kind of a stalemate. You beat him, but he's still there. And then immediately after this, a uh, base shows up and is like, Get out of here, pathetic Navi. And he just kills Flame Man on the spot. Ah. <laughs> Like, he literally, like, has this attack where he grabs an arrow and stabs it into them. And where Flame Man was, there is a crater in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> so Mega Man has to fight against base. That. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a hopeless boss fight. You lose. He has an aura, but you can't break the aura no matter what. And let's really drive home the, the helplessness here. Yeah. So you, you actually Dad's do. in the hospital. You get in a I fight. Beat. Yeah, you get in a fight with this guy. You can't even damage him because his aura is unbreakable. And uh, that's terrible. But uh, eventually this other official comes up and he has, he has a life aura, so he's very important. And he kind of like fends off base. And eventually base, like, he tries, he, I don't know if he actually got beat or if he's just playing it cool, but he just kind of like leaves. He's kind of like, whatever, you're good for now. You're, you're too weak for me right now. <laughs> and eventually that uh, Navi goes away too. But uh, that's fine. Then uh, also match during all of this, uh, actually got the final Tetra code from Scilab, hmm. which is terrible. So, yeah, matches uh, back yeah. with the World 3, of course. Oh, shit. <laughs> whoa, wait, whoa, whoa. That's, uh, what? That's Dr. Fight. Yeah, it's, yeah uh, that's Tadashi Hikari. He's just Dr. Light in a Hawaiian shirt. I thought Tadashi Hikari <laughs> was <laughs> Lan's dad. What? I thought Tadashi Hikari was Lan's dad. Tadashi Hikari is Lan's grandfather. Yuichiro oh, Hikari yeah, okay. is Lan's gotcha, dad. Gotcha. Yeah, so uh, while he sends his final Navi, Drill Man, who uh, in a certain Scilab area, there is like an area you can go to from like the very beginning of the game. It just has four barriers and like something is behind it. And uh, it turns out the things to get rid of those barriers are the four Tetra codes. So Drill Man goes, gets rid of the barriers, and then he takes whatever that data is, and then he drills a hole in cyberspace and just goes into the undernet through there. So you chase him down and you beat him, but it doesn't matter. He gets that data back to Dr. Uh, Wiley already. But uh, in order to find out more about this, this turns out to be a piece of data called Alpha. We don't really know what Alpha is, but we know it could destroy the internet. And so to find out more about getting this thing called Giga Freeze, you have to... So mm -hmm. if it can destroy the internet, it's that, uh, uh, that photo of Kim Kardashian, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> No, we'll find out what Alpha is. Uh, but uh, in order to get the Giga Freeze, you have to race through. The Undernet has a ranking system. So you get like a program that makes you look like a bad guy, and everyone recognizes you <laughs> as a fellow Undernetter. So, and you like rise through the ranks to become the best Navi in the Undernet. And there's a bunch of stuff that's really cool during this. I can't go over all of it. But uh, once you become rank two, the previous rank two, who is either Bullman or Mistman, depending on your version, Bullman in blue, Mistman in white. Uh, says the number one ranked Navi is the administrator of the Undernet named, I think he just calls him S, but uh, his name is Serenade. So you go to the Undersquare and eventually you talk to this statue that Serenade can just talk to you through. And he's just like, yeah, you don't have to beat me. I will just give you this program. But if you are not worthy of it, it will freeze you immediately. So Mega Man grabs it and he's perfectly fine, of course. But uh, Pure of heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure. Mega Man's great. And uh, he gets the Giga Freeze, and with this in tow, he goes to, uh, oh, yeah, and uh, 
in order to get to where uh, the statue is so you can talk to it, you have to actually find where the administrative like computer is for the undernet, which turns out to be hidden behind a hot spring in Yoka Inn. And it's there that you meet the guy who is actually the like human administrator of the undernet, Mamaru. <laughs> I'm serious. He, he's, he is the administrator of the undernet. He is Serenade's operator. And Serenade is like a post-game boss. Hmm. He's super cool. Which is cool because earlier in the game, when they first become friends, uh, Lan promises Mamaru that like when he gets better, they'll have a net battle. And then in the post-game, you do that. That's nice. When you become rank one and beat Serenade. That's freaking wholesome. It is. It's really cool. Hmm. You see a picture? Do you have a picture of Serenade later? Yes. Okay. Of course. But yeah, who's that in the right? Uh, the monster guy? Yeah. Drillman. That's Drillman? <laughs> no, no. Oh. That's, that's Alpha. Yeah, so it turns out that Alpha, you go to the World 3 Island with Chod, Dex, and King Man's Operator, Tora, and you find there are these chairs that let you pulse in, which lets an operator directly go into the internet. <laughs> and when oh, you're... Yeah. when oh, you're, you, bring, you bring Mega Man because, to the real world eventually, too. Yeah, yeah. and like there is um, no place to jack in anywhere in the uh, World 3 Island. You have to pulse in. So Lan has to like go and put himself on the line along with Mega Man, as well as all the other operators. You like fight all the other World Three operators who like sync with their navvies because you sync with your navvy. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once you're there, you beat all them. You get to the end, and like when you're in like one of the areas, uh, base shows up, and uh, he's like, "Yeah, I'm just gonna kill you all." I'm. Turns out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. There we go. Come on. Fuck yeah. you guys. Yeah. So base is actually working <laughs> with Wiley. And uh, base basically says, yeah, okay, you're messing with us. I'm going to kill you all. But then another guy pulses in and stops base, and that man is Dr. Kosak. He grabs base and stops him because he's synced with his Navi, who was that Navi with the life aura from earlier. And it turns out, this is where we get base's backstory. Base was designed to be the first autonomous Navi that could act without an operator. Uh, this experiment was deemed a failure Base was not under control. He's a very renegade -y boy. He's bad. Don't like him. And so they just left him to die. But because Base had another program they worked on called the Get Ability Program, which is how he got the Life Aura in like the earlier games. He stole it from the Life Virus mm. by like scavenging it. Uh, because he has that, he was able to like eat viruses and bugs to survive. That's why they tried. That's why they tried to form him by just putting together a bunch of bugs. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So, but they didn't have the get ability program, which is like base's big thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, they do that, but and like Kosek stops base. Oh yeah, and yeah, that's basically base's thing. And so they stop. Uh, Kosek stops base for now. So Lan and everyone else continues on. They engage with Wily. And Wily has this like little block in front of him, which he has base destroy with the same little arrow attack he used to kill uh, Flame Man. And then like there's a little orb in it, which is a program, and base uses his get ability to absorb it, which is just like a stronger aura. And so you have a boss fight against base, and you beat base, obviously. And that's when Wily reveals that uh, because like base, like a lot of base's angst is that like. The moment he wasn't useful to Scilab's research, they just abandoned him. He says, humans only see navvies as tools to be used. Which uh, Lan, immediate, Lan, who is synced with Mega Man at this point, is like, that's not true. I see Mega Man as a friend and a brother. He's not way more than a tool to be used. And like Wily was just like, that thing you destroyed, that was the last uh, piece of like restriction on Alpha's programming. And then like, uh, and then, like this like blob comes up and eats base. And like, he's like, you dirty old man, how could you do this to me? And Wiley's like, well, navvies are, after all, just tools to be used. <laughs> <laughs> but then the blob also eats Wiley. <laughs> because Alpha is out of control. Because it turns out Alpha is the prototype of the internet. He was, in the Japanese, he was called Proto, actually. But they had to change that because, you know, proto Blues man. was Proto Man yeah. in the West. So they had to change that. So now he's Alpha. And then it turns out the reason they stopped and why this prototype was considered bad was it kept eating everything. Every program they tried to put on there, Alpha would just <clears throat> eat it. And so that manifests as this guy right here. That's Alpha. And Mega Man has to fight and stop him. It's a pretty cool fight. He has like a, you see his little like belly there? 
that's like jelly, and you have to like keep hitting it until gotta, his core is exposed. I, I gotta say, his jelly belly is making me uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. So eventually, you destroy him, and uh, once you beat him, like everything starts blowing up. Everything on Wily Island blowing up all over again. But uh, a door is left behind where Alpha was, and it's a bit of data left behind from when Alpha was created. And uh, inside that is like some like recorded memory data of Dr. Tadashi Hikari right after he finished making the internet. And he just, he's like, you must be my grandson. Because apparently he's also sentient. He can just talk to you. So it's not actually recorded, but he's just like, you're super cool. And he, he basically tells you all the backstory about how he made the internet and all that. But uh, eventually he just gives you like a little piece of data and says, hey, give this to my son, your dad, and just uh, tell him like it's encoded, but like have some fun trying to encode it. It'll be funny. And then uh, so it, they have like a big hearty moment where like, you know, he's like, it's very dramatic and all that. And then Mega Man leaves and on his way out, a blob comes up and eats him. And they are trapped inside Alpha, along with Base, and sort of Dr. Wily. And, like, uh, basically, Mega Man is like, I'm going to use the last of my energy to, like, burst you out of here. But, uh, yeah, I'm going to get left behind. And Lan is very upset by this. But Lan does make it out. And Mega Man, sadly, is consumed by Alpha. And then uh, that's basically it. Uh, Mega Man has to go home. He's now Navulus. He's going to have to get, like, a new Navi. Uh, Mega Man sacrificed himself for him. And then uh, there's an entire credit scene. During the credits, you have a few <laughs> other uh, you have a few other cut scenes. Like uh, also inside Alpha uh, Base, here's like this growling, and we'll find out more about that in the post game. Base is still alive inside of Alpha, mm -hmm. and if you remember, he like always survived by like scavenging stuff. Yeah. So eventually, is, after the post credits, what is he alive because of the life aura? No. 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 You'll find out. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just the post game of this game, so it'll be like really quick. And then, uh, but it turns out afterwards, uh, they like Land's dad did decode the data, and it's literally a message saying, "I knew my son could decode this." <laughs> That's it. But uh, you piece of garbage. Yeah, but uh, also like when they were studying the remains of Alpha afterwards, they did gain enough data to recreate Mega Man. Of course, they wouldn't kill him off. But there was like a long while. Like they let the credits play while you think Mega Man is dead. And Lan has like an entire moment where he's like, I guess I'm going to have to get a new Navi. Like, man, this sucks. <laughs> he like says Jack and Mega Man execute like looking towards the ocean like one last time the day before he gets his new Navi. But then, you know. That's really depressing. <laughs> yeah, no. But, th but then like the, it, like the very like last scene after the credits is just like Mega Man going, hey, Lan, wake up. I was like, ah, oh, you can you can buy a new one. They're just tools yeah. to be used. Yeah. It's just like, <laughs> but no, like Lan is like really it, beaten up about this. Pussy. He is like crying. He's like, he's like, no, I'll I'll wake up on my own. I'll do my homework. I'll do all this. Just don't leave. Oh, no. it, it's actually really sad. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll set my own alarm clock. <laughs> no, it's it, it, it's real. It's really you. emotional in the moment. My dead God. God. Anyways, my dead uh, brother died again. Presumably, they also get Wiley out of this. Somehow, Boo. yeah. Boo. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, that's the ending. They remake Mega Man from like the data left inside uh, Alpha. Then we get to the post game where uh, if you what go back to where that statue there? was, there is a warp pad behind him that uh, takes you to the secret area. And in the secret area, there's a bunch of really tough fights. You fight eventually uh, this guy called Dark Man. Then, uh, if you remember from uh, Yamato Man, he's called Japan Man in this game for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but uh, you fight those. The China Man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it, it, no. It, it really is. Like, like, they were trying to make it like less culturally insensitive, just have like, some spear dude being called Yamato Man, but like, it becomes way more offensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know what they were thinking yeah. about that one. But uh, you beat these guys at the end of like each area, and then at the end of the third area, you have to get every single battle chip in the game to open a gate, which lets you go up the stairs and fight Serenade and become the number one ranked under net, net battler, as well as fulfilling your promise to Mamaru to net battle him someday. When you're doing all this chip hunting, it will probably occur at some point that right next to the stairs to where Serenade is, is you have to, like, there's a bug frag trader where, like, you put in 10 bug frags and you get, like, a very, very rare chip out. And uh, every, like, 
dur- while you're doing this, you hear a growling like every like 50 or so you put in. Mm-hmm. After you beat Serenade, if you come back to this area, also after giving this trader at least 300 bug frags, in that trader's place, it'll be destroyed. There's a crater there. And then base will show up. And it turns out how base survived being swallowed by alpha was inside alpha was also remains of the bug beast gospel who base consumed with his get ability program. And that's how he survived. And you face a uh, base GS, which is just base who has like a lot of gospel themed attack. S something. It, GS just stands for gospel. Okay. Like there are a lot of like two letter, like everything that's not V1, V2, V3. Yeah. There's usually like a two letter abbreviation, like GS for gospel DS in the later games for like dark soul. It just sounds better. Yeah. <laughs> it also fits the eight letter character limit that a lot of these characters have. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, you fight Base GS, who now has a Dark Aura, which is twice as strong as the Life Aura. Very powerful. And he has, like, a bunch of attacks themed after Gospel. Uh, But he's also insane. He legitimately does not remember who he is. He is, like, nothing but bugs at this point. He's one huge like So he's, like, a a, a G-Virus, like, tyrant, you know? like Kind of. Yeah. Yeah, he's (laughs) just kind of insane. Sorry. I'm just bringing up Resident Evil stuff now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, yeah, Gospel kind of is like a Resident Evil sort of thing, kind of. Internet Resident Evil. But uh, Mega Man just puts base (laughs) out of his misery. He's deleted. And then uh, you can do other challenges in the secret area after beating Serenade and base GS, which is like fighting like version 5 of all the navvies, and you have like a time trial where you have to beat them really quickly. So I was like, there's some other trials, which is really cool. They're a lot of fun, but there's not really any story there. Once you beat all of them, like whenever you do absolutely everything in a Battle Network post game, you can go back to the end of the story and fight a stronger version of the final boss. You can fight Alpha Omega, <laughs> which is cool. But uh, basically, that, that's basically it. Like the story part of the post game is over when you beat base GS. Okay, who is, who is this on the right? Is that Serenade? That's Serenade. Okay. That's China, man. Yeah, and if you actually look on his belt there, you see a symbol. And if you look at Mamoru's art on his wheelchair, the same symbol is there. Because they, they never directly never say that Mamoru, Mamoru is Serenade. I didn't know he was in a wheelchair. He <laughs> is in a wheelchair. Oh, yeah. The, that's Dark Man and Yamato Man. Dark Man looks freaking sick. He looks like a Spawn <laughs> character or something. Yeah. He looks like yeah. Spawn. It, it's like an edgy design done like actually pretty well. Yeah. I, lo- I love it. Yeah he's, yeah. Go- he's goofy edgy. I like it. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, here's I did oh, a, hell yeah. I did a character bio for a base. He looks cool. Base, I like base big is the one square exception. Hands, okay. Yeah, base is the one exception to the no clothes rule. He has a cloak over him, which he actually uses to hide. Like where his symbol is on his chest is just a big gash because like when they tried to delete him, uh, in Scilab, that that's like where he got like seriously injured, but uh, so he like hides that and like you can kind of see under his thing, like you can see like part of the mm. gash there. But uh, you can also see down there, that's what his symbol originally looked like. You never see that in the games, but it's in the art book, hmm. which is it's a fort, uh, it's fortissimo like, symbol because oh. he's, he's forte in Japanese. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so he was the first autonomous navi. I kind of already went over all the things about him, but uh, he's basically the post game, like final boss of like every battle network. Like every post game has a base fight at hmm. some point. I, I think so. Yeah, yeah. Every post game has a base fight at some point. He's cool. He's he said earlier that Darkman was like a pretty good edgy design. Base.exe is like top tier edgy design. I love this dude. It's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah black, he, black and purple instead of black and red. Black and purple it works, is so much cooler. Yeah, it works. That's yeah. probably one now reason always, why I like Darkman's design too. Yeah. A lot of what? Darkman's Dark Man. design. That's why I like it too. Black and purple Pro- just works. Probably, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot more of that in Battle Network. There's not a lot of black and red in Battle Network. I mean, Zero.exe had it, but... Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, most of the time, dark guys are like blackish purples, like kind of murky colors. Mm-hmm. So we can move on here. Oh, yeah, that's uh, Tora and King Man on the left and Tamako like, and Metal Man on the right. I really like King Man. <laughs> he's just... He has, like, ah, he's he's just has like, goofy. He has like rooks in front of him that like block attacks, and he has like pawns in the front row that swing their sword at you if you get too close. He's just a chesting guy. He has... That's uh, perfect for he has an attack That's not what though. I would have expected, yeah. but yeah. He has an attack called Checkmate where he moves his rooks onto your side to try and trap you. Then he just jumps at you. <laughs> It's really cool. I like King I am Man King a lot. King Man. <laughs> He's awesome. I love I, it. I, I love King Man. Uh, that's Mist Man, Bull Man, and Punk. 
Mist, they're all autonomous navvies. Mistman and Bullman, depending on your version, number two ranked under net navvy. Punk is uh, Mr. Famous's navvy in this game. These mm-hmm. designs are just getting better. Yeah, they really do. Yeah. I love the art of this series. I do think the art just keeps getting better, honestly. Mm-hmm. But I, say, I like most of the character designs. Now, yeah, yeah. we've got to get the search, man. Search man, yeah. That's, that's that's like the best use of camo on like an anime character. <laughs> I believe that's the next game. It's I'm pretty Mega sure there's a Search Man. It's a design. Mega Man 8 character, yes. All right, here are the not so cool dudes. That's uh, Flash Man and his operator, who I forget the name of. His I, operator looks horrible, but Flash Man looks yeah. kind of all right. Yeah. Uh, I forget Beast Man's operator's name, too. He's a zookeeper guy. Why does he look like some weird, edgy redesign of Fred Flintstone? <laughs> He's uh, Fred Flintstone, but he has the same like scratch marks on his eyes as red haired Shanks. <laughs> I got this when I tried to fuck a dog. Right. Yeah. Oh, funny thing about Beast Man's uh, thing. You know how I said you can find stronger versions in like around the internet? Uh, you find Beast Man's stronger version inside Land's doghouse. Like you can jack because his doghouse is like also a security system. You yeah, can jack yeah, into yeah. it, and like that's where Beast Man's stronger form is. <laughs> Pretty funny stuff. That's Bubble Man. Uh, this guy's oh, really annoying. Wow. He's both annoying as a character and annoying to fight. I hate him. That's a bad yeah, design. Bad. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> you can, so on the right, you can see Anetta and Plant Man. I love that. Yeah. On the left, like you can see like the normal looking guy is Sunayama. You saw him get pelted with a PET earlier. Yeah. Uh, to the right is his like net battler Q alias, and up top, obviously, is Desert Man. Oh my gosh, that's Desert Man is horrible. That's amazing. Desert Man's a really cool design. I yeah. like it a lot. Who's brown lady? Oh, uh, that, that's Anetta. Oh, uh, okay. That's Plant Man's operator. She's the one that tried to kill a bunch of uh, cancer children. Yes. She, uh, cool. she does not look like she would be the one doing that. No. Well, like I said, she's kind of more naive and got tricked. Mm-hmm. That's actually why in the final... <laughs> I'm going to kill a bunch of kids. I think in the final area, I think she actually... Like, you fight most of the World 3 Navvies again. I think you actually don't fight Anetta and Plant Man again because I think she, like, realizes she was duped. Don't quote me on that. That might be wrong. On the left there, that's uh, Flame Man. That's Mr. Matches Navi in this game. On the right, that's Drill Man. I, I'd, I'd imagine so. <laughs> yeah. <Good> Lord. <laughs> what, what What's his design? What makes you drills. <laughs> <laughs> He's a lot like Clock Man in that regard. Everything is drills. I like uh, Flame Man a lot. He's like a dog. Yeah, that's wild looking. He looks like yeah. the, he looks the like those things that would be in like dentist or like doctor's office where you'd like move the rings around the little swirly. I was, oh yeah, he kind of yeah, does. Yeah, maybe that was intentional. I didn't know Gurren Lagann was in this. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Okay, now we got another side game: Mega Man Battle Chip Challenge. Why, this was like a bigger series that I realized. Yeah, I me know too. there was like off games. Yeah, what the, what the heck? It's a one row thing. All no. you do is pick the chips, and you just use them in turns. Uh, the plot is Yai hosts a tournament, and then oh, like dude, I hate it. I hate it. Before before you fight yeah. the last guy, uh, base just like runs in and Akuma's him. Just like in like the screen cuts to black. And, <laughs> Then base is the final boss. That's it. There's no real plot. Yeah, that looks just, terrible. What What is it on? Game Boy Advance. Really? Yeah. Very I mean, odd. it has the same like sprites used as. Yeah, I thought it might be like a mobile game or something. Like there that. are mobile games. But oh, I'm sure. We'll get to those later. Oh, there's there, that's, those are the presentation. Oh yeah, there are some new ones. Turbo Man <laughs> and Ring. Ring. Speaking of looking like a child's toy, she's a bunch of like teething rings or why something. Is, why is she yeah. Ring? What? Why is she called? I can't ring. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good explanation. I agree. Anyways, now we get to the second half. This okay. is the one I had. Yeah. So as it turns out, uh, Battle Network 3 was actually supposed to be the last game in the series. Mm-hmm. Of course. Like there's a lot of finality to it. Lan like defeats the prototype of the internet, finally meets his grandfather and all that. But uh, Battle Network 3 sold really, really well. So Capcom was like, make more. And they made four. Four is the best-selling Mega Man Battle Network game in the series, and that's only because oh. three was so good. Because four is really bad. Yeah, I didn't get very far in it. So, all right, so we have Blue Moon and Red Sun. A fun little bit of continuity is that uh, in the last three games, uh, each one there's like a soft continuity of like certain navvies reappearing in each version. That kind of makes it so that like Red Sun, Team Proto Man, and Cybeast Gregor are all canon to each other, and then Blue Moon, Team Colonel, and Cybeast Falzar hmm. are canon to each other. Not directly, it's more like they just like have navvies that reappear and they act like they already know each other, kind of. 
Just, you just dressing that game Pokemon. You really, you really need to. Yeah, no, they definitely Pokemon. did this because of Pokemon. Yeah, like two games sells double the copies, obviously. Yeah. But uh, yeah. But really, like canon doesn't really matter. You can play any of the games you want. And it's all like ex- the same stuff, except for like Battle Network Five. Names. I would recommend in Battle Network Five play as uh, Team Colonel, because uh, in Battle Network Six, uh, Colonel and his operator Barrel appear, and Lan acts like he knows him. Hmm. And like, if you play Team Proto Man, like Lan has seen this dude for all of like five seconds. So yeah, please play Battle Network Five Team Colonel. All right, this game sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it, and I what had a to polite take. Polite young man, she was. <laughs> we have become yeah. masters of science. <laughs> we have. Science. We have become masters of science. So a bunch of the masters of science at Scilab find out there is a meteor heading for Earth. But who cares about that? Back to Mega Man. Mega Man goes shopping. <laughs> or yeah! Land, Land goes shopping Woo! with me. Yes! Yeah! <laughs> We want it. They go to some electric store. Uh, when they get there, this dude's like handing out flyers for a tournament that's about to happen called it's either the Den Battle or the City Battle Tournament, depending on your version. It kind of implies that these two happen concurrently, and there's just some other protagonist winning all the other tournaments. <laughs> but like whichever one you play, it's just land. But uh, during this, like the speaker he's using gets hijacked, and you have to like yep. grab some bats, which is really annoying in the speaker. And you have to, because like Shade Man, a bat dude who's evil, kidnaps Roll, and you got to get her back. Uh, no. It's terrible. The mini game sucks, but you save her. And then uh, Shade Man is like very upset because he's chased off by like Proto Man or whatever. Because Proto Man's there. But he drops a chip, which you give it to Higsby because Higsby has like connections to bad guys. And Higsby is like, and he also knows a lot about chips. And he's like, Get rid of this chip immediately. This is a dark chip. Get rid of it. It will turn your Navi's soul evil if you use it. Spooky. No. Yeah, so... Uh, it also uh, does a lot of damage, just it, saying. Yeah, it does a lot of damage. Just saying. It's <laughs> they're, like... they're, they're really useful. But every, <laughs> <laughs> they do a lot of damage. They're very powerful. But in order to use them, you have to get like beat up. If you take a bunch of hits without ever... like hitting them you get into like a t- there's an emotional state in yeah. the game now where like Mega Man can like get tired and when he's like tired and desperate the option to use dark chips appears which is super cool which is super yeah no cool, the emotion actually. window I is something those. from the sequel like the later three games that I actually think is a really cool mechanic I like it yeah especially in the late especially when they introduce like double souls and beast out but uh anyways uh you get the dark chip and uh, when you use it you actually get a uh what's it called uh there's like a invisible point that is like your morality meter. You use enough dark chips, Mega Man's emotion window will just be like evil. He'll have like red eyes, and he'll have like a sinister grin, and then dark chips will just always be available at the beginning of every battle. The thing about dark chips is every time you use one, you lose one point of your max HP permanent. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can like fight honorably and all that, and eventually Mega Man will unevil himself, but you will never get that HP back. It's a lot like drug abuse. Matter of fact, like, when you go through these games and see how they talk about dark chips, like, it's very clearly a drug allegory. <laughs> Get out of here, Lan. You don't want none of this. But me as a stupid kid, I was like, damn, Mega Man looks cool, though. <laughs> like, I'm going to use <laughs> He's dark this. Mega Man sick. <laughs> and anyways, uh, Lan completely forgets about the dark chip existing and enters the Den City Battle Tournament. Uh, All right, so we have, like, some special uh, circumstances for this. All those guys you see there are potential fights, and they all have their own scenario tied to them. I was not going to make slides for all that, so I have a Google Doc where I will read what happens in all of them. So you can see all these guys down here. You can see the normal Navi, Number Man, Top Man, two heel Navis, Spark Man, and Aquaman. Uh, who would you like to hear first? I can do them in any order because it's randomized. Man. Who? Heel Man. Uh, the heel Navi. Uh, this is Tetsu and the heel Navi. Uh, Land like you know that like uh, that con where like you pretend to like run into someone and like have broken your leg, that happens and then like uh, <laughs> by some thugs and then like Land's opponent Tetsu shows up and beats those thugs up, gives them a real injury, and uh, Mega Man and Tetsu's Navi like have to go through the internet. That's the thing about a lot of these tournament scenarios is a lot of them are just like run through the internet with some gimmick. It's mm. actually awful. It, they're, they're not fun. So you do that, you beat up a bunch of like gangster navvies and get to the back 
And then, like, after you beat them, like, you get to have your actual match against Tetsu and his heel Navi, who has a name that I forgot. Anyways, uh, who do you want next? Aquaman. Uh, Aquaman. Yeah. Aquaman is Blue Moon exclusive. Uh, his operator, Shuko, um, is, like, saying he's going to, like, replace this washing machine that's just been acting up, and it keeps on going blub, blub, blub all the time, which Aquaman goes blub, blub, blub all the time. So he thinks they're going to replace him. And he cries so much, he floods the internet. So Mega Man has to run through the internet, but flooded, to talk down Aquaman. Then they have their match. And he talks to fish. Yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, in uh, Aquaman returns in Battle Network 6, and they have to call him Spout Man because of the DC copyright issue. <laughs> All right. oh, oh, yeah, I should which, mention that that screenshot is from Blue Moon. There are two Red Sun exclusive navvies, which is uh, Dex and Gutsman and Mr. Match and Fireman. Oh. Eh. If, you want, if you want me to mention it. Well, I'm, I'm going to mention all of them. Yeah, but. yeah. Go, oh. go through Match, man. Okay, Mr. Match and Fireman. Fire, yeah. It's the only time he uses the same navvy twice because it's the same navvy he had in Battle Network 1. Uh, he seems to have turned over a new leaf. His old cronies aren't happy about that, so they plant bombs in the tournament room. <laughs> but Land disarms them, and Match is just like, yeah, I know, I have a criminal past. I'll turn myself in. He literally turns himself into the authorities. <laughs> but Land is like, no, don't arrest him. I need to net battle this guy. <laughs> and then <laughs> Land net battles this guy. Also, <laughs> Mr. Match has a girlfriend in this scenario, and she is never mentioned again. Like, he appears later in the series. They do not mention his girlfriend, ever. She didn't like prison. No, she 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 didn't like prison, man. <laughs> prison man. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Mr. Match. I can't do any more conjugal visits. I've had enough. <laughs> you you really need to turn down the thermostat. <laughs> All right. That, that's that's the ruiner of every marriage is the thermostat. <laughs> no, it's a burning sensation after sex. <laughs> uh, just the just back in. just to make sure that like all the stuff on there is stuff we can still go over. I'm gonna go ahead and do Dex and Gutsman. Yeah. Uh, Chisao comes. And he wants to watch Dex do his net battle, but Chisao gets kidnapped. Uh, Lan finds them, and that's cool. Also, and afterwards they have their match, and it turns out at the end, like after the match, Chisao is like, "Yeah, I staged that whole thing myself. I just wanted to try and make the match not happen because I didn't want to see Dex lose. He's not gonna be fooled a third time." <laughs> He knows Dex isn't that good. All right. After that, you can ask about any of these other guys. Uh, uh, why do you have two of the same Navi on there? Uh, those are both heel Navis, which is just a type of Navi. They're just like evil, sinister looking. It's heel like a heel wrestler. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, yeah, they're just like sinister looking dudes. They're so both these, two different guys. So these are all like heel generic turn. Navis. Yeah. yeah. But two of the guys on the screen are just filler, and you'll never fight them. No, no, only one of them is. One... The other heel navy is a filler. There's only one heel navy scenario. The in one this next to that, um, second one on the left. Number man? Yeah. Okay, the number man scenario. Blue Moon exclusive. Uh, Lan advertises for Higsby's shop to avoid it being bought out. Then they have their match. That's it. Oh. Yeah, you, you hand out, you hand out flyers. Fun. No, you oh. hand out flyers. Damn. This game's bad. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts 2 intro. Um, what's the one next to him? Who's that? That's a normal Navi. That's uh, Yuko and Ponta. Uh, Lan hangs out with Yuko, who is pretty cool, but she summons ghosts or something. So, <laughs> La so Lan has to ask her dad how to exercise them. After you do that, they have their battle, and it turns out Yuko was dead all along. No one what a twist. No one expects the Spanish Inquisition. Yes. What? Okay, yeah, that's just kind of... Yeah, no, it kind of sucks. It's weird for Battle Network, all right. They jam so many scenarios into this game that most of them just aren't good. Uh, what, what's the last one left? Is it the yellow guy? There's Spark Man and Top Man that we haven't gone over yet. Let's do... Oh, let's do Top Man. All right, Top Man. This, his operator is this old dude who Name only bottom. got... What? Named Bottom. Sure. But, uh... Basically, he's a top fiddler, but his kid doesn't think old things like tops are cool. Yama so he Cusco. gets into yeah, he gets into uh, net battling in order to appeal to his his like grandson. He wants to spend time with him, and then you know eventually, let's see. Oh yeah, and Lan like talks to the guy's name is Tenske, the old man. Ten pen slammer Ske. Yes, exactly. Because they're spinning tops, they're Beyblades. Yes. 
So anyways, he talks to his brother and, like, tells him how to get along with him. Then they have their match, and, like, uh, after their match, like, Tensuke's grandson is like, man, tops are cool. You're the best, Grandpa. It's one of the better scenarios, just because of the little wholesome moment. Sure. All right, Sparkman's the last one? Uh, yeah, Terry Jamon and Sparkman. Jamon. All right, so Terry messes with Lan, and, like, me- he, like, hacks his PT or whatever to give him, like, a garbage battling folder. You have, like, beginning of the game chips, and it sucks. So Lan finds Terry's grandfather, who tells Lan to how to unlock his folder. You have to get a password. It's really annoying. And then you fight Sparkman with your real folder. And it's kind of annoying because it doesn't automatically put your old folder back. You have to change to it. Oh, God. So you so might you have walk a bunch into the of, like, the bombs that you have to toss that do, like, 30. Yeah. Uh, well, they do 50, but. Okay. Anyways, uh, that's it for the City Battle, City Den Battle Tournament. So back at Scilab, uh, there's, a, there's a new guy who's just started working at Scilab called Dr. Regal. And Dr. Regal, along with Yuichiro, discover that the meteor has a cyber world inside of it. The meteor is part of the Internet of Things. Oh, no. The aliens. But enough, about, but enough about that. Here's Mega Man. It's Mega if you Man remember 8. from the classic series, there is an alien. Yeah, Mega Man 8. Yeah. It, that's, it's, that's exactly it's, 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 oh. it's Duo. Oh, wow. Duo is in the meteor. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Well, <laughs> but enough about that. Here's Mega Man. Let's fight Dr. Wily. All right, so Lan remembers he has a dark ship, then immediately decides not to do anything about it. And <laughs> because a new theme park is opening, and oh, Mayo man, invites park. him. You can smoke that dark ship at the theme park. <laughs> Let me just yeah. a thousand times more fun. Yeah. yeah. Black tar heroin. <laughs> <laughs> gonna heat him up this dark ship in a smoke. Mega meth. <laughs> <laughs> Rock man cocaine. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, Mega Man, like does something online where he wins, like, tickets. He gets two tickets to, like, Roll wanted him to win the tickets. And Mega Man's like, well, here are your two tickets. You can go with Yai or something. <laughs> <laughs> and Mail's like, well, Yai's busy. Don't you want to go with me? Like, she's, like, very, like, she's trying to get Lan to go on a date with her, but Lan is, like, really stupid. He's like- and Lan's mom, that's where that comes from, is like, yeah, she's asking you on a date, you dunce. <laughs> Lan's just gay. Yeah, Lan's yeah. too focused on, <laughs> on <bush>. Chod. <laughs> he, he wants the chode. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways, they go to this place, and there's, like, a bunch of, like, stories you can read there. Like, every attraction has, like, a fairy tale associated with it. And you have to memorize all these because eventually the robots that are, like, at the park go crazy. You have to jack into them, and, like, part of the mini game to get through them is to, like, complete the story as it was. The problem is when you get to the last one, which is Draki versus Django the Solar Boy, which is actually one of the first crossovers with the uh, Botkai series, which crosses up. Basically, it's this guy with sunlight powers who fights vampires. Okay. And so uh, the last story is based on that game, but the story gets edited, so Django loses at the end. And then at the end of that, Shade Man shows up, and Shade Man is the bad guy who you got to beat. But every time you attack him, he just, like, turns to darkness and disappears. So how do you beat him? Well, eventually, Mega Man, through, like, after, like, three turns, Mega Man immediately gets put in the tired state. And you have to use a dark chip to defeat mm-hmm. uh, Shade Man. Fortunately, they don't give you, like, the HP penalty. And I don't think you lose a morality point for it. But, uh, yeah, you're forced to use a dark chip kind of like he's coaxed into using it once. It's terrible. But uh, but he used the chip, so it's oh yeah. And Mega Man like afterwards when like Shade Man's like I want the chip back. Mega Man like throws it at him and like shoots it. So now the chip's gone. But then the chip is like mysteriously immediately back in Mega Man's folder. It's like attached to him now, as a person. Uh, the next day, Lan. Badass move though. Yeah, I no. Love he, that chip. <laughs> yeah, it, it it was a cool moment. I like it. Uh, the next day, Lan magically knows that either the Eagle or Hawk tournament is happening. He does. And uh, you have this really obnoxious minigame where, like, there, you have to do a pixel hunt to get 50 points. You have to find, like, all these different little hidden spots to get 50 points to enter the tournament. <laughs> and it's terrible! <laughs> it, it's really, really bad. I'm glad I didn't keep playing this. I'm glad you didn't keep playing this either. It's the one bad Battle Network game. Like, one is rough around the edges, but it's still fine, especially if you play Operate Shooting Star. And all the other ones are good. Battle Network 4, a waste of my time. <laughs> yeah. 
Anyways, here's the Hawks. Damn it! <laughs> uh, great. There are th- okay, so you know how I said the N1 was really well liked in uh, in the first game? Yeah. Or in, in Battle Network 3? Yeah, so uh, they decided let's put three tournaments in this uh, game. All right, so uh, who do you want? The second tournament? Yeah, this is the second tournament. Oh. All right, of three. Woodman, go. Woodman, okay. <laughs> Woodman! This is Blue Moon exclusive. <laughs> Sal and Woodman, who returns from Battle Network 1. Sal has, like, an environmentalist squad. She loves the environment and makes a lot of natural food. But they're all being radicalized by some random navvy, including Woodman, who goes rogue against Sal and starts, like, doing stuff. You have to run through. It's another, like, run through the internet with a gimmick yeah. thing. And, like, some, like, wood spikes will come out and you have to avoid them. What's really bad about this one is this was somehow like really awfully optimized. And uh, if you are playing this game on anything other than an original Game Boy Advance, this includes like this glitch will also happen if you're playing it on an SP or a DS and also on an emulator. So if you're not playing it on an original DS, getting hit with one of those spikes locks your game and just completely ruins it. I think it actually bricks the thing. Oh my goodness. It does something really bad. It either deletes your save file or it bricks your game. So just an original DS or an original Game Boy Advance, that's it? No, just an original Game Boy Advance. The SP and the the DS DS both will encounter... Because they, like, do... It's an anti-piracy measure, but, like, when it detects that it's not on an original Game Boy because it's on the SP or the DS, it's like, oh, this must be emulation. Great. Yeah. Uh, What's the guy on the left? Dark Helmet Man. Ooh, uh, this is a fun one. Uh, this is Viddy Narcy and Video Man. So Viddy Narcy. Viddy Narcy sounds like a Chris Chan, like, have, backwards name. Does he have AV cables in his head? Yeah, those are AV cables. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So Viddy Narcy pretends Video Man is going to, like, die in a few days and asks Lan to throw the match. Lan refuses, so Video Man rewinds Mega Man, so all your controls are backwards. And you have to run through the internet with reverse controls. And there are also these panels on the ground that have a reverse thing where if you step on them, you go back to the beginning of the area. Oh, and it's no. awful. But it's it's perfect because Vidi Narcy... This is good game design. This is a great idea. Ship it out. Yeah, Cy, Cy yeah. Beasts had one where it was like you're in a beach world and like it all throws yeah. you back to yeah, the beginning and it's a really bad puzzle. Oh, yeah. I know which one you're talking yeah, about. No, nobody, not, likes, no. nobody likes those puzzles yeah. ever. Yeah, pretty it much. It should never be done. Not with reverse controls also. Yeah, we're just going to skip yeah. over the fact that this man has AV cables in his head. When He's you cool. have dishwashers connected to the internet. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and go over the Red Sun exclusive ones just uh, just because they're not on there. The first one is Lily and Windman. Uh, Lily goes insane for a little bit and Lan has to calm her down. Then Windman goes insane for a little bit. So Mega Man has to go calm him down. You go through the internet, but it's windy. Uh, then they fight. Afterwards, they realize what made Lily go crazy was that the water she drank at the beginning was actually sake. She was drunk. <laughs> was she a child? Yes. <laughs> You'll see her later. I've got sake, a whiskey, flint dark, water. Dark. <laughs> <laughs> Mega Meth. Right, uh, Black tar heroin. <laughs> Yeah. The other uh, Red Sun exclusive one is Mail and Roll. Roll gets kidnapped by some pervert <laughs> nabby. <laughs> and Mega Man. Wait, really? Is that what happens? Yes. Yes, really. Oh no. Mega Man beats the dude to like learn where he's keeping her, but like she frees herself because she. <gasps> where is she? <laughs> yeah. But uh, because it, it turns out he just left some viruses to guard, but like one of Roll's powers she just has now is she can charm viruses, so she's fine anyways. And uh, she thinks Mega Man doesn't respect her, so you have to play tag with her over the internet. And after it's Roll is done it. acting like a three-year-old, they have their <laughs> match. You have to earn her respect. You have to yeah. play tag. <laughs> you treat me and like And before a you child. fight her, before you actually fight her in the... Uh, That's how women work. Yeah, before you fight her in the whatever, the tournament, like the announcer is like some chick, and she's like, I'm rooting for male because she's a girl. Woman power. And then but, you uh, fucking delete her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Roll, Roll's fight is actually pretty cool because, like I said earlier, that like one of her things is she can charm viruses. She summons viruses to fight you during the fight. It's pretty cool. Huh. Also, like some of these guys, when you beat them, like your soul resonates with them, and you can like sync with them. So, like Guts Man, like any like groundbreaking thing, you can sync with that chip mm-hmm. to turn Guts Soul. Any recovery chip, you get Roll Soul. 
etc. Oh, is this the Aqua stuff where Soul. Mega Man gets the the costumes? Yeah, I like the okay, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, really yeah, cool. Yeah. I like them a lot. And yeah, basically, it's uh, it's pretty neat. You're guaranteed three on they. It's random what scenarios you get, but it's also preset. So your first playthrough will always give you three souls. Your second one will give you two. And then you'll get the last of the six in your third playthrough. Because this game has a new game plus feature and it's mm-hmm. terrible. Anyways, those are the Red Sun exclusives. Uh, which other ones do you want to hear? Blade guy. Who? Saw Man. Metal Man. Metal Man. Oh, this one sucks. <laughs> Remember when I said I liked Tamako and Metal Man before? Okay, this is a Blue Moon exclusive one. Uh, Tamako wants to have a rock-punching competition, so Mega Man goes to the back of the internet to learn how to punch rocks from some drunk kung fu guy. Then, after you do that obnoxious internet BS, you have to play Punch Rock against Metal Man three times! Also, Tamako acts like Battle Network 3 never happened. This is the first time they've ever met each other. It's like she's a different person. It's terrible. I hate this scenario. I'm glad I picked... Uh, it's not the worst one, though! Oh, <laughs> good lord. Where are you going? Uh, I also... Okay. I'll Actually, let's take a slight break. I would also like to get some water. All right, that's cool. I need to use the bathroom anyway. All right. We're back. And we're... Still in Battle Network 4. Yeah. Yeah. Woo! All right, can we skip to the ending? <laughs> all right, you, you have to hear about all these wonderful <laughs> scenarios. All right, all right are, we we on, have, are we on Speed Man, the one that does speed? Can we speed past Yeah, the yeah, Otsuki, Homer, and Burner Man. Mr. Match and Otsuki get in an argument about who the better fire guy is. They start, fi- <laughs> start fighting, which puts a lot of the internet on fire, so you have to run through the internet on fire, and then they have their match. Uh, Flav Yamakawa and his normal Navi. Uh, Lan tries Flav's curry and thinks it tastes good, but it's lacking something because the secret ingredient is love. So Flav is like, let's have a cooking battle before the net battle. So Megaman has to go through the internet, get some ingredients, and find some dude who teaches you how to cook in this obnoxious minigame. It's terrible, and it's awful, and when they have their cook-off, Lan's curry is so good, it lets some old man meet the ghost of his dead wife for a bit. <laughs> They also imply later that this is because Lan put in some mushrooms, which was definitely not an ingredient they got. So there were some bad mushrooms involved there. Another drug. You mean good mushrooms? Yes. I mean, let him see his dead wife, dude. Like, that's good. Uh, let's see. What else have we not done? Uh, Riki and his heel navvy. Riki comes from a Yakuza family, but he just wants to bake bread. The family isn't too happy about that, so they kidnap his navvy. Megman <laughs> runs through the internet in a stealth section. And then they have their match. Okay, that, that's it for the Hawk and Eagle tournaments. Son, we need you to bust some kneecaps to keep the family the family. Problem. Yeah, how, how... I just want to bake bread, Dad! How dare you get this bread? All right, so immediately after you win the Hawk or Eagle tournament, uh, the head Nebula Navi, Laser Man, comes in and either turns Aquaman or Guts Man into their Dark Soul, and you have to fight their Dark version. And that sucks. Uh, NASA, which is like NASA but internet, <laughs> fires a laser beam at the meteor, but at the last second it doesn't work. And both uh, Yuichiro and Dr. Regal are like, this smells like sabotage. Uh, the NASA scientists decide their only course of action now is to send the best Navi in the world to the meteor. <laughs> Do you want to know how they decide how to find the best net battler in the world? A tournament. A tournament! The Red Sun or Blue Moon Tournament. Uh, Lan goes to where it's being hosted and he just gets kidnapped because it's a foreign country. <laughs> He's trapped in his hotel room, but it turns out that finding the four key data pieces to get out of the hotel room was the preliminary for the tournament. Uh, oh, so the so guy, the, yeah, the guy who kidnaps yeah. him, like this dude comes out of a car and like punches him and takes him. <laughs> <laughs> He apologizes. And then now Lan is in the Red Sun and Blue Moon tournament. Oh, well, that's okay. <laughs> All that trauma I just experienced as a 12 year old child is forgiven now. Yes. All right, uh, I'm not even, just to save time, I'm just going to run through these. I'm not going to, like, ask. All right, so uh, the guy with the mask there, that's uh, Mr. Famous and Kendo Man. Damn. All right, so Mr. Famous wants Mega Man to become a licensed Kendo expert. So you do some mini games on the internet of Netfrica, which is the less appealing Africa analog. 
Uh, Lan goes back for their match, only to find Famous is going to be late, because Lan flies back with five minutes left of his match. He goes to Netfrica and finds Mr. Famous fighting some dude who had a hostages. It was like a terrorist or something. And then they get back, within five minutes, of course, and they have their match against Kendo Man. You have to do an obnoxious sword fighting minigame, and then you have to fight the terrorists. It goes on too long. Man, I love uh, I'm going to... Mega Man save some people from Boko Haram. All right. I'm going to skip the second one for now because that is the worst one in the game and I want to talk about it more. Uh, Jack Bomber in the normal Navi. Uh, They want to play a game against Mega Man called Foot Bomb, which is soccer, but you kick bombs. Sorry, it's (laughs) cyber soccer, but you kick bombs instead. So you have to find special shoes to play the game on the internet and then you play the obnoxious soccer mini game. He gets so mad he loses that Mega Man has to find him somewhere else on the internet so they can play bomb foot bomb again. Then they have their actual match. It's oh, annoying. Fun. Uh, Polly and his heel Navi. Uh, Polly wants to bring attention to his small Netfrican village, so he invites Lan to partake in his local Water God quest, which is an item hunt where you find like some totem on the Netfrica internet. Lan wins, and Polly gets mad and drains all the water in his village through like their water control system. I mean, Mega Man has to go and get the water data, which is a really annoying teleporter maze. Like every uh, area looks the same, uh, but just has three teleporters, awesome. and you just gotta find your way to the end. Left, right, left, middle, left, right. Yeah, 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 something like that. Oh, man. So, like, every Battle Network game is technically like, oh, you have to run across the internet and kind of find, like, the thing that just advances the story. This game outlines it so Support much by just, of. like, yeah, by just having where it's all in this layout. Yeah, kind of. But also, like, usually the scenarios in the other Battle Network games have an actual dungeon attached to them. Yeah. Where you yeah. go inside, like, a certain This is just you running thing. across, like, yeah, you, just the worst Internet part plus of gimmick. Battle Network, like, yeah. over and over and over again. It's really bad. Also, Polly apologizes, and they forgive him. Does his village forgive him for draining all their yes. water? Yes. Because I was going to say, that's a really rational thing to do. Man, this kid beat me in a game. I'm going to freaking kill my village by taking away their water. Yeah, uh, Raul and Thunderman, Red Sun exclusive. These guys are returning from uh, Battle Network 2. Some foreigners want Mega Man to try some cyber bread, so he has some, and then his power keeps going down. Raul informs Land that Mega Man must find a cyber voodoo doll on the internet. One pixel hunt later, and Land and Raul can have their match. Uh, the other Red Sun exclusive. This is ass. Yes. This sucks. The other Red Sun exclusive scenario, uh, Rika and Search Man. This guy's cool. Yeah. Like Rika gets a call from the president of Sharo, which is the Russia analog, who sends him on a mission because he's in the military. Lan helps. You go through the undernet and you fight some nebula navvies and someone's like shooting at you the whole time. It's run through the undernet while someone's shooting at you. You get there and you're like swarmed by navvies, but Searchman shoots them all. Searchman was the guy shooting at you the whole time. He just didn't know you were a good guy, I guess. And then you have your match. Uh, the other Blue Moon exclusive one is Chod and Proto Man. Uh, Proto Man, uh, Chod had to fight 500 nebula navvies at once. And he used a dark chip in order to get through this. So now Proto Man's evil. Mega Man does a pixel hunt to do keys to get through the undernet to find Proto Man. Proto Man attacks Mega Man, but like Chod is operating Mega Man. And like because of this, he like reaches through and like reaches out to Proto Man. Mega Man like grabs Proto Man's sword and like Chod transmits his emotions through the internet into Proto Man. Saving Proto Man. And- Join me, Mega Man. Do drugs. And I will make your face the greatest in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, with Proto Man saved, they go and have their battle. Yeah. Land wins, of course. Uh, junk Man is actually one of the cooler scenarios. Uh, someone tells Land to check out some junk data in Yum Land. So they do. Afterwards, Mega Man is just like, man, I want to quit. I don't want to do this tournament anymore. But it turns out Mega, Mega Man, Man is possessed. <laughs> Mega Man is possessed by Junk Man. So they have to go to Yum Land's Buddha statue to get kind data from Buddha. Did they, they jack into a... Yeah, you jack into a Buddha statue. <laughs> <laughs> There's a dude in there who gives you kindness data. Uh, once you give Junk Man the kindness data, he's touched by Mega Man's kindness and he passes on. Okay. And finally, the last... The, the last scenario. He just freaking dies? I, <laughs> All right. Yeah, Junkman just dies. Okay. 
Uh, Ivan Chilsky and Coldman. This is the worst one in the game. Ivan thinks the locale is too warm. So he hi Notice he is wearing like very, very thick clothing. He could just take them off. But uh, he hijacks a Sharo weather satellite to cause a worldwide blizzard. Mega Man has to go to all the satellites and like each one has like a thing of torches that are like uh, you have to put in like a certain chip. Like if one is like two torches, one behind the other, you need like a heat shot because heat shot hits in that way. Is your phone going off? Wow. Yeah, I think, yeah. It, I think it just came up. Oh, uh, well, oh, well, we'll just have to, we'll just have to go on. But yeah, basically, uh, it hits that way. The problem with that is, is that this game has a New Game Plus feature. And the layouts for these chips and what chip they require does not change. Like, for example, one of the satellites requires a Black Bomb 1 chip. The problem is that if you're playing New Game Plus or New Game Plus uh, Plus, that virus that drops Black Bomb 1 does not appear. It drops, it, the virus that drops like Black Bomb 2 or 3 appears. But the minigame still requires Black Bomb 1. You can still like do the chip trader and get it randomly, but that's what makes it the worst scenario in the game is not only is this chip hunt awful, like some of these chips are still obnoxious to get, but like you are completely screwed over and have to go by pure luck if you're in New Game Plus or New Game Plus Plus and you happen to get this scenario. It is terrible. This is the worst scenario in the game. It can virtually soft lock you if you get it on the wrong playthrough. It is terrible. And it's just another idea of how poorly thought out Battle Network 4 is. All right, this is it. What is this face? <laughs> that, okay, so one of, Duo, one of Duo's attacks, it's called Anger Impact. He just shoots his angry face at you and it causes a shockwave. And that is the perfect face to represent this entire game. To represent the player reaction. <laughs> yeah, it really yeah. is. Duo is me. Why, why am I just fighting a Power Rangers uh, Mecha Zord, whatever? Is that Duo? Yeah, that's Duo. He sucks. I, I don't dislike Duo's He No, no. He looks like a Kool-Aid jammer. Like, he doesn't... <laughs> okay. What, what are the little yeah, twist cent- top he, things? Yeah, his centerpiece yeah. kind of does. Anyways... Uh, Lan gets a helicopter ride because he's now the world's greatest net battler. He goes to Naxa, but Nebula attacks everywhere at once. So Lan goes everywhere and stops everything. Uh, Regal suggests to send his natty, Laser Man, to the satellite in the meantime. And they do because it's implied that the Red Sun and Blue Moon tournaments both happened and Laser Man just won whichever one you didn't do, kind uh, of. I wish I had thought to use my Navi Asteroid Destroyer <laughs> Man first before. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, partway through the network of – because Mega Man also goes to the asteroid. And partway through the network, Laser Man is like, I'm evil all along. Dr. Regal <laughs> is the head of Nebula, which is the evil organization behind all of this. Dr. Evil? Regal. Oh, Regal. Yeah, so you fight Laser Man. Then after you fight Laser Man, uh, you go to the end and you confront Duo. And Duo is like, humanity sucks. They're all evil, so I'm going to destroy the planet. I'm just judging you. You're evil. And to show how evil you are, I'm going to take the guy you sent to me and bring out his evil. And his evil's going to beat him because humanity's evil's stronger than it's good. So he brings out Dark Mega Man. Who is, like, really cool because, like, the game analyzes how you play and, like, what attacks you use. And when you fight Dark Mega Man, he will use your strategies against you. It is actually a really cool fight, and it's at the least, one cool At least bit. that was a really cool idea. Yeah. They managed to shove in there. So you fight Dark Mega Man. It's actually a cool fight. The problem is he also has the same health as you, which, like, usually bosses have way more health than you, so the fight's over pretty quickly. Mm. Then after that, you fight Duo. And after that, like, Duo kind of, like, steps aside. He's like, all right, you're strong. Here's the steering wheel. Can you turn it? There, there is a steering wheel to this asteroid. Of course. <laughs> so Mega Man grabs what? it. And he's trying to push, what? but he just can't. So everyone in the world is like, go Mega Man, fight. And he gets so much friendship power that he turns the steering wheel and, and averts course. And they all die. <laughs> Oh, no, it's the eraser all over again. No, he yeah. just hits Netfica. Yeah, and so uh, Regal, a- after this, like, oh, yeah, Land sinks with Mega Man. That's part of wh- what makes it work and the cheers of all the people around the world. After this, Regal is like, well, I lost. He jumps off a building. <laughs> <laughs> he jumps off the satellite building they use to, like, transmit their navvies to the meteor. <laughs> See ya. Uh, 
Yep. <laughs> All right, here's the post game of BN4. If you beat the game all three times, which means you get all the double souls, you can go through a door in the undernet and fight base. After you beat base, you get a portal that can go to Black Earth, which is the secret area, and it's literally a spiral, like a straight spiral path that just have mirrors that have the dark soul versions of all the bosses in the game. And you beat all of them, and then you get to the end, and there's a giant mirror, which gives you a stronger fight against Dark Mega Man, which is actually cool. That is, like, actually a fun, challenging fight, especially if you use, like, a lot of program advances and stuff. Mm. Uh, and then after that, you can... Oh, yeah, and when you beat Dark Mega Man, you get both hub.bat, which is in most of the games in the secret area. You can just find it around. And then also uh, you get another program, which is like called like Soul Cleanser or something, which basically it makes it so you gain good guy points, like in the morality thing. You gain good, bi- good guy points twice as fast. Oh boy, I can get my good boy points now. Yes, Mega Man gets a lot of 10 Ds from this. <laughs> Unfortunately, he doesn't get any HP back, so if you use any dark chips, you'll never get that back. Mega Man tells people to stop using slurs and gets Reddit gold. <laughs> <laughs> and, then he, and now he's good. He's a Reddit power user. <laughs> Anyways, if, you come, <laughs> if he comes back to uh, the mirror later, you can fight uh, Base DS. Base right. is not yeah. dead anymore. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he never will be. Uh, here are the guys from the Density Battle. You have Sparkman and Tomo, whatever. Uh, Shuko and Aquaman and Tensuke and Topman. They're cool. Everyone else is like a generic design, so I didn't include them. I only included like the unique Navi mm-hmm. designs. Uh, these are the Hockey Eagle guys. You have uh, Lily and One Man, Vidi Narsi and Video Man, and oh. Tens- uh, whatever, Otsuki, Homura, and Burner Man. I, I, like the, I like the tape like going across his arms. Yeah, yeah Video like, Man's like real, an interesting that's, boss that's fight. That's cool. It's one of the funnier scenarios, too. Mm, Mikey, I'm sorry, but I'm going to say it. Vidi Narsi is a cross dresser, yes. Oh, no, I was going to say it. It's like JoJo. They have oh, kind names. of. No, no, but Vidi Narsi is like explicitly said to be a cross dresser. Oh, okay. I think they weren't, like, going, like, some people think they were going for, like, a trans thing, but I think, like, with the time this game came out, it was probably more, like, pretentious art person who just, like, thinks, you know, they're, yeah, more, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Japan really has a thing with cross-dressers, so that's about it. it their culture is, like, different about that kind of stuff. I don't know. They just don't care. But this that scenario is actually really, like, as annoying as it is to go through the internet backwards, like, Vidi Narsi as a character is, like, actually really funny. The dialogue in the scenario is funny, which makes it one of the better ones. Mm-hmm. Yeah, video yeah, it's, it's really funny when this is, like, the person you immediately see. It's kind of funny. Video Man is a really cool design, too. Uh, Burner Man is pretty cool, but he's just another fire guy. Yeah. I like how – I do like how Burner Man's operator has, like, blue spiked hair for, like, blue fire because, yeah, like, his yeah. scenario revolves around him being, like, rivals with Mr. Match. Yeah. Munich I don't have much – Montoya. What? Munich Mission Montoya. Sure. Uh, these are the guys from Red Sun, Blue Moon. Kendo Man's there, which he's you've already seen, uh, Mr. Famous. That's Junk Man in the bottom right corner. Ivan Chilsky and Cold Man and Rika and Search Man. Rika and Search Man will be returning in Battle Network 5. Thank God. They're cool. I like them. These are Nebula guys. That's Dr. Regal in the middle, Laser Man on the left, Shade Man on the right. How did they not know this guy was evil? Ah. Anyways, now we have Mega Man 4.5, real what operation. Come on. <laughs> what? There's no plot. It's just real operation. Literally, it's nothing but tournaments. You can the the gimmick of this game is you can play as like almost any navi. There's a ton of different navis you can <gasps> just have. You can unlock different ones by doing tournaments. You can buy like an accessory called the battle chip gate, which lets you use the battle chips from the toy. Which is what you guys back. Yeah, which is what I have like back there on the camera. They're cool. Moving on. Battle Network 5, Team Colonel and Team Proto Man. All right, so we need to get a... Oh, yeah, Lan's dad invites him and his, his stupid friends that nobody likes to, like, see some new data he found. Regal is back, and he revived Nebula, and Nebula invades the lab at the exact same time, and they take all of Lan's dumb friends' PTs, but Lan was, like, in the next room or something, so him and Mega Man are fine. But uh, after this... Uh, Nebula just takes over the entire internet in one night. Like, they just own the internet and nobody else can go there. Only them and their Darkloids can travel through all the areas. Like, the internet is off limits. 
So, a certain someone, Chod in Team Proto Man, or this guy called Barrel in Team Colonel, they're assembling a team of teenagers with attitude. Yeah. And they kind of like stage this false hack on Scilab as kind of like a trial, which makes more sense in Team Colonel because he doesn't already know Lan. Which, if you're playing Team Proto Man, Chod will just straight up say, this is the one time Lan gets acknowledged for his previous feats. Mm -hmm. Chod is just like, oh, yeah, you've saved the world like... Four times now, dude. Like, yeah, you're on my team. But, uh, yeah, so you join either Team Proto Man or Team Colonel, and you go and liberate the first area, which is the ACDC area from Blizzard Man. The liberation missions are very controversial. It's kind of like a grid-based strategy thing where, like, yeah. certain areas are dark, and you have to do net battles to reclaim them. You, you might also like have it. different creatures moving through. Like, it's kind yeah. of, yeah, it's kind of like a strategy game within the already kind of, like, real-time yeah. turn-based stuff with Mega Man. not very Mega Man-like. Yeah. Which is why it's controversial, but I like it. I thought they were a ton of fun. I, I, I never I, I never too. got past, um, I never got past one of the last ones as a who, kid. Who you don't, never, don't never want to spoil it, I guess? No, no, I never beat, yeah. I never beat five. I so team Brodo, man. anyway, yeah. So anyways, you beat Blizzard Man and reclaim ACDC area. So Lance friends now all have nothing. They uh, or yeah, they don't have their navvies. They're bored, so they decide to go to an island to just like have some fun at the beach. Uh, this is where they introduce like something that kind of like becomes a sort of running gag, even though it only happens twice. The Houdini of the beach, which is a thing where uh, they talk of a legendary way to like take your underwear off from underneath your bathing suit. But the thing is, is that it stretches your underwear to the very limit and it'll snap if you don't do it perfectly. So it's kind of a joke. Like, Lan does it correctly. Dex fails. Ha ha. Very funny. It's, it's something. I don't know. But, uh... <laughs> <laughs> like they're all just like, kind of uh, uncomfortable because these are kids. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, it's... The way it plays out is, like, not in a weird, like, oh, they might not, like, whatever. Like, it it, yeah, it, read, it, it plays it, it, out like dumb kids, kids having kids fun doing... Kids underwear funny fart joke, haha. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah Spider-Man and Elsa. <laughs> <laughs> the way it plays out in the series, like, does come off completely innocent. Like, th yeah, okay. Anyways, uh, what, there's a mine on Oren Island, and the island starts shaking, and it turns out that uh, someone is there mining... And it's terrible. Oh, by the way, that's Blizzard Man up there. Anyways, uh, someone is mining, and they're all, like, it's either this chick, who is uh, Tesla Magnus, who is now Magnet Man's operator from before, or it will be, because, uh, you know, they returned from Battle Network 2, or also returning from Battle Network 2 in the other version will be Princess Pride and Nightman. And they're, like, mining for this stuff called Magna Metal, and they want that, and eventually you have to go through the drill computer and stop them because they're going to, like, accidentally kill Lan's friends. And you talk to them, and they were like, oh, well, I didn't know your friends were down there. Sorry. But uh, that's cool because they go to, like, try and liberate the Orin area of the internet, but they need someone who's got, like, good defense and is big and bulky. Well, they just met someone like that. So either Magnet Man or Night Man joins your team. And they go and liberate the Oren area from the returning Shade Man, who's back. They go they go into a mine, too, during this. And yeah, like yeah. The, the drill computer yeah. is, like, inside a mine. Yeah, yeah. and it's actually kind of cool because you have to go down into the mine, and you actually feel like you're kind of crawling into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a cool it, it's, area. It's like, yeah, it's a nice, actually, like... It's mm -hmm. one of the nicer, like, mazes that's put together. Later on in the game, there's a secret area in the mine, which is where you can find Mr. Famous and his uh, Grid Man Navi. Huh. We'll see Gridman later, but uh, first we got uh, Barrel and Colonel. If you're playing Team Colonel, these guys are the leader of your team. Uh, they're both they're, they're military men. Like they are actually in the Netopian military. Netopia is like the Japan analog. Electopia is like the America analog, the Amera Europe white people land analog. So these guys were in the Netopian military. Can't say too much more about them as characters right now, but know that these are the guys you're dealing with. These are the leaders of the team. Probably, if you're playing the correct version. You know them well. <laughs> They're cool. He's the leader of the bunch. Yes. <laughs> All right. So uh, the next day, someone challenges land. It's either going to be Dusk and Shadow Man returning from a bunch of different games, or this new guy, Charlie, Airstar, and Gyro Man, where you have to go and do something inside the squirrel statue. And in ACDC Park, there's a squirrel statue. Mm -hmm. And you have to go in there, and there's like some challenge they do just to mess with land. 
And uh, eventually you find the Scilab area in the internet is blocked by clouds. Well, you just found a guy who can either be a ninja and poof past it or turn into an airplane because he's literally a transformer and turns into a, rope, into a helicopter and fly over it. So you do that and you get these guys on your team. They're your new member. And then uh, you also want... Oh, yeah, and then you go and liberate the uh, Scilab area from Cloud Man. After that, Cloud Man actually captures Mega Man in a cloud and sends him off. And, uh, yeah, the Nebula has captured Mega Man and is forcing evil dark energy into Mega Man. And, uh, anyways, you go on a boat trip. And uh, on this boat trip, <laughs> <laughs> you need... A by the way, during this part of the game, because Mega Man is gone, uh, your team leader will let you operate their Navi. You will either, like, your main Navi when you jack in will either be Proto Man or Colonel. When you're doing liberation missions, you can play as all the Navis on your team, by the way, which is really cool. It's really fun they, like, implemented multiple playable Navis. Oh, yeah, yeah, and even on the Outworld, before you go into battle for everything, yeah. like, you have to, like, move them a certain number of, like, spaces for each turn. Yeah, pretty much. Anyways, uh, you go on a boat trip, and on this boat trip, you get a heavy weapon specialist so you can get into the next thing, which is either going to be Napalm Man or Tomahawk Man. Both of these guys are super cool, mm -hmm. and I love them both. Anyways, you want to liberate the end area from Dark Mega Man, who is the guy, you know, it's just Mega Man, but he's evil, and he's holding the end area, or at least the first half of the end area, negative. After you beat Dark Mega Man, Mega Man kind of like, he's saved, he's, you know, he's a good guy again, but he still has like a bit of that dark power in him, giving him the Chaos Unison ability, which like, okay, so you know I mentioned earlier you have like the double souls where you like kind of merge with a chip? Mm -hmm. uh, the Chaos Unison is when you merge with a dark chip. The thing about that is you can like kind of use the dark chip in a special way where like you keep flickering back between like a small circle and a big circle. If you use, if you let go of it while you have the big circle, you will use that dark chip with no negative penalties, which is uh, really broken if you get good at timing it, and oh, it's yeah. not hard to time. <laughs> uh, so, anyways, they get some data from Yuichiro's lab, and they find they find out that there's like this past data that is like I forget what it's called, like the memory burst or something. But basically, the data that like Nebula is really trying to look at is hidden somewhere in this like past data, the, the memory, whatever, which is fine. Uh, in this process of like looking to like decipher this data, your next member who is either Higsby and Number Man or Rika and Search Man will join you as kind of like your technician, your like hacker dude. And then you liberate the other half of the end area from Cosmo Man. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, uh, oh yeah, Nebula attacks a team's base and they manage to... Uh, delete the leader of your team, either Colonel or Proto Man, because they were protecting someone else who's like a weaker Navi, either Toad Man or Medi. As you can probably tell, they join your party mm -hmm. later. But uh, Nebula brings the leader Navi back, either Proto Man or Colonel, and like puts a Dark Soul in them, and that's like the next boss of the Liberation mission is like Dark Colonel or Dark Proto Man. And also like in the process of this, Toad Man or Medi join as your healer. Oh yeah, here's some art. Uh, that's Cosmo Man on the left. That's uh, Medi and her operator, who I forget the name of there. That's uh, Dingo and Tomahawk Man. And I forget the guy on the bottom right, but that is Napalm Man's operator. And Higsby thinks this team is going to make a man out of him, so Miss Mary will finally notice him. <laughs> I'm not kidding. That's his motivation for joining. Oh, also, like, they hired an assassin. Yeah. Yeah, that's Team Colonel. So, like, Team Colonel has Higsby, Dingo, Princess Pride... Dusk and Rabita, and the other ones are Team Proto Man. I don't know. I like these guys. I think I, Medi's like one of the best designs of I like think any of the. I Mega definitely Man. think yeah. Medi is better than Toad Man. Oh my god. <laughs> like, it's really the kind of thing where, like, I think all the Team Colonel Navis are better, except for, like, Medi is just infinitely better than Toad Man. Yeah. And I could go either way on Tomahawk Man or Napalm Man. They're yeah, both cool. Yeah, they're both cool. They're Tomahawk both cool. Man looks dope. Yeah. He, he is. I, I really like Tomahawk Man. He's fun to play as, too. Okay. Uh, these oh, yeah. He has such a cool chip. Yeah. Uh, Grid Man on the left. That's Mr. Famous' yeah, Navi. On the I right is Lark now. Man. You just kind of find him on the internet. He doesn't. He's not really important in any way. But Lark Man is just there. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I'm forgetting. I don't know. Anyways, here's Battle Network 5 included. So you go through all the like past areas, 
And it turns out it was trying to find the... More evil. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that is Regal's plan in this game, is you find the soul net, which is kind of like a... It's a way to, like, overlap the internet over the real world, kind of like what Sean was doing, but different. But because, like, now, like, everything's about souls and stuff. And so, like, because this is, like, a soul, you can, like, put a dark chip in it and make it a dark soul. So he wants to overlap this all over the world and give it a dark chip. So now everyone's evil. Lan has, like, an amulet, which you find out is made of the Magno metal they were mining earlier. And so, like, that stops it from affecting him. So he has to destroy all these satellites that were making everyone else go crazy. And you, one by one, get all your teammates back. It's pretty cool. Uh, The leader comes back, and, you know, he's still Dark Soul guy. But you beat him, and then they come back, and, like, the healer, like, purifies them or whatever. And that's how you get them back. So... Mega Man fights Creepy Pasta, the game. Yeah, and you win. <laughs> Mega Man fights Colonel Dot EXE. Colonel Dot EXE. Dot EXE. But yeah, you yeah. you beat all those guys, and then like you find out the backstory behind Soulnet, which is that uh, it was a joint project between Doctor Wily and Tadashi Hikari. They wanted to use it to make the world a better place. They were like, you know, we can. All this internet stuff is great, but we can work together to make it all work out. This was before Wiley went crazy jealous because he never got, like in the original series, he never got any recognition for his work. And you also find out that Regal is Wiley's son, which is why. Yeah. And uh, Wiley is very, uh, we'll talk more about what, because Wiley hasn't actually shown up yet. We just find that out through like the flashbacks that he has a son. Wiley's very what? Very sexually active. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, this is the timeline where everyone gets laid. Notice there are n- there are no apocalypses in this series because because everybody was ev- able to reproduce. Yeah. No. No. Because because <laughs> the everyone's in- were right. no no no. It- Wiley would have tried to destroy the world with zero, but then he had that like post nut clarity. <laughs> he was like, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's why Regal is how he is. He never had that post nut clarity. <laughs> oh no! Delete him <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> from the real world. So, anyways, uh, the corrupted Soulnet program like evolves into the final boss, which is Nebula Gray. It's this guy, uh, Lan, fights Nebula very Gray angry. and beats him. What? Very angry. <laughs> he is very angry. And uh, you have a special cutscene after you beat the game, only if you're playing Team Colonel which is why you should play, another reason why you should play Team Colonel, where Wiley walks in, or sorry, Wiley doesn't walk in, a barrel reveals everything that happened was like planned and like it wasn't entirely his <laughs> idea. And then it, like Wiley walks in later and is like, thanks, Beryl. And Beryl's like, no problem, Dr. Wiley. And then like Wiley just like mind wipes Regal. <laughs> because like, you know, like he worked with Soulnet. He knows how to do that. And you can get into people's minds with that. Just men in black, so. Yeah, he really does just men in black him. And the reformed Dr. Regal joins Scilab as, like, a real good doctor guy. Wait, so Beryl was the bad guy all along? Well, he was taking orders from Wiley, but everything he did was good. Basically, this was all Wiley's, like, behind-the-scenes plan to tell his son to go to his room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which is fascinating. Nebula Gray looks like Exodia. Yeah, he does. Yeah. He's Red Exodia. Yep. Anyways, here's the post game. I didn't know what to put there because there's no like unique navvies really, but uh, that's young Doctor Hikari and Doctor Wily. That's cool. You see them like you see them in the flashback stuff when they're like still developing Soulnet, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. And uh, basically, you find a secret ne- nebula area. It's in the back of the internet. And it's just more liberation missions, which kind of suck because there are no new bosses in this post game. You liberate stronger versions of all the story bosses. And eventually, like at the very end, is a fight against uh, Dark Mega Man Omega, who is a really fun fight. Like, it's just like Battle Network 4 Dark Mega Man, where he, excuse me, he uses all your techniques and stuff, but he's just souped up. This is one of the most fun fights in the entire series. I don't know if it makes the rest of this post game worth it. This is one of the worst post games. All about say is it doesn't seem like a really good one. Hmm. No, it r- doesn't. Oh yeah, and you can find base SP and base XX so you later fight, on. You fight base three times. Yeah, you fight base like just normally in the post game, and then later on you can find base SP and later XX as uh, just random encounters in the nebula area. 
which are, it's a fun fight. Like at the very end are a bunch of really fun fights, mm. but like you have to do like three or four liberation missions against the same yeah, enemies. Yeah, yeah. It's not that good. It's a shame. The rest of Team Proto Man, Team Colonel is pretty cool. All right, so here are the last of the Battle Network side games. Uh, Rockman EXE WS is for the Wonder Swan. It's a platformer. It's really janky. It's not so great. And it's basically a retread of Battle Network 1 plot-wise. It's not that great. Uh, there were two other games that played just like the normal games that are actually kind of good called Phantom of the Network and Le uh, Legend of the Network. While I was making this lecture, they were thought to be discontinued, never to be available again. But then, like, they just happened to get their hands on, the, on like, a guy, a Japanese guy who just had the games on his cell phone. Still, he had, like, an old-ass cell phone. And he brought it back. And then, like, some dudes in the Mega Man fan community were, like, porting the games to PC to preserve them. And then Capcom gave them a C and D. Yeah. Because, like, around this time, like, it's pretty clear they're planning a Battle Network legacy collection. Yeah. So yeah. I imagine they're just being much more protective about the IP. Hopefully that implies they're going to put these games on there. It probably but doesn't. No, but probably it, it's not. It's probably just that they're protecting it because it carries Battle Network in the name. Yeah, probably. That's what I think, too. But uh, there's some pretty cool designs. The final boss of Phantom of the Network is like this guy, Cash, mm -hmm. which is the guy on the top right. And on the bottom right is the final boss of uh, Legend of the Network, the Trojan Horse. <laughs> uh, you can see other guys like Dr. That's, that's a fun idea. For it, it really game. is. I like that. I like the designs and that they yeah. went that far for some dumb mobile games. Yeah, yeah. I don't know much about the plot because they are Japan only and, you know, we don't really get them. Mm -hmm. I think you can find, I think Phantom of the Network has a summary online, but I couldn't find anything for Legend. But uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, there are some other navvies that are like original to the games. Hat man. Hat man. Ride man. He's gonna ride you. Yeah. Ride. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Battle Network Six. Cybeast Falzar and Cybeast Gregor. It's getting even more into Pokemon. Gregory is the best one. Yeah, I, I think Gregor is the better version. I enjoy both the like double soul navvies a lot more, as well as I think Gregor is like Gregor's beast out form. Spoilers, eventually you can like fuse with one of the two Psybeasts. Of course, yeah. I think Gregor is cooler oh, than that, Falzar. Oh, that's like, this is right before they get around to Star Force, and you can start yeah. seeing where a lot of the designs like are yeah. really inspired by rolling. this game. Yeah, so, so uh, Battle Network 5 sold awful because Battle Network 4 was, was so, so bad. bad. So yeah. like, they knew making this game that Battle Network 6 was going to be the last one. And they went out with a bang. This is a great game. Mm -hmm. Like, like I said before, like it plays the best in the series, but it's not as good of a complete package as two and three, but it's still great. So Lan has to move away from ACDC town. He's away from his stupid friends that nobody likes, and he makes new stupid friends that nobody likes, which is like uh, these guys in the bottom right, uh, Mick and Tab, uh, they suck. They're arguably worse than <laughs> the old friends. Is is Tab the one with the blue jacket that's just always complaining? No, that's Mick. Mick. Okay, yeah. yeah I Tab hate, is the I dork. I hate Mick. I hate Mick. Yeah, he's really bad. Oh, uh, but, but on your way to school for the first day, uh, there's this girl being attacked by a robot dog. You beat the viruses in the dog, and that's kind of your tutorial. And uh, you find out uh, this girl's name is Iris. And uh, Iris. that's all you really know for now. Iris! <laughs> <laughs> yes, that Iris. <laughs> Uh, but uh, you get to school and uh, you find out there's this thing called a copy bot because the school just has a copy bot, which basically you jack your navi into it and then that copy bot just becomes the navi and they can walk around the real world. They don't have like their weaponry, like Mega Man can't like shoot his gun in the real world, but Mega Man can be in the real world and that's pretty cool. Uh, so uh, this local punk dude, Mick, who's the guy there, he gets in a fight with his navi who's like a normal navi but is just an asshole pretty much. And his navi runs away, and then this other navi, Blast Man, like just kind of shows up in his PET and is like, "Hey man, you wanna you wanna ride with me and cause some real damage to get back at them?" And you, you know, it just ends up setting the school on fire. They take over like a bunch of the janitor robots and just like makes them like spew fire. <laughs> and it's great because they're like all over the school, like going back and forth, yeah. like panicked and on fire. Yeah, it's, re it's and really you, funny. When you talk to them, <laughs> they're like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> there, 
there was one person who like before was like standing outside the classroom with like a bucket of water on their head. Yeah. And then when the panic starts, you're like, I sure was glad I have this bucket of water. <laughs> but uh, eventually you stop them. And like part of the way you do this is to use the copy bot because Mega Man can run through the fire without really getting damaged, which is cool. And eventually you make it to like the teacher's office and fight Blast Man. And that stops that. That's cool. Blast Man's on the top right there. The next day, a penguin <laughs> follows Mick to school. That's cool. You know it's getting real. A penguin. So they decide to take it back to the aquarium, but the aquarium's closed today. But they go there on a like they go there with like with their teacher or whatever the next day, just because like you know they have to take it back anyway. Might as well make an event out of it. So they go on a field trip there. And while they're there, the their uh, the aquarium's taken over by this guy Blackbeard. And his Navi dive man. You have to do a kind of obnoxious mini game where you have to put the right <laughs> fish in the right tank based on a description. It's not that bad, but like it, you're getting it's chased by sharks the whole time, and if you go the wrong path on the maze, you're kind of screwed. It's not really that bad or tough or anything. It's it's one it of the more long. Yeah, none of the like nothing's as bad as like Battle Network Four scenarios, yeah. but yeah, like yeah. it's one of the less fun ones in this game. <laughs> But anyways, you beat Dive Man, and uh, you find out Blackbeard works for some organization, but you don't know who it is yet. But uh, the next day, uh, there's a new student teacher who becomes your first, like, buddy. Because, like, instead of having, like, double souls, you have, like, crosses, which is where, like, if you're friends with someone, you can just select them out of a menu instead of having to fuse with the chip. It's much more streamlined. And also, if you talk to this person, like, in the real world, you can just operate their Navi running through the internet. Uh, depending on your version, that's either going to be Mr. Match and uh, Heat Man, or uh, Shuko and Aquaman, now named Spout Man. Mm -hmm. uh, also, the girl who Lan helped earlier, Iris, joins their class, which is cool. So the next day, there's some circus performer named Yuika. He's saying there's going to be a big cyber show on the internet, and it's right next to this huge crater, and her Navi Circus Man... Just everyone who's there, he, like, forces them to keep dancing, and then, like, their energy comes out of them, and Circus Man, like, absorbs their energy. That's kind of his deal, because they were evil all along, of course. Look at Circus Man. He's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> freak. He looks handsy. Yeah. He, he has an attack where he, like, ora-ra's you. Uh. It's pretty great. But uh, basically, their whole thing, they got all that energy because the giant crater they're after is where these two legendary... Cybeasts were Gregar and Falzar, and he used that energy to rise them up out of the crater because he wants to absorb them and have their power for his own. And he manages to do that for one, which is whichever one you don't like, whatever version you're not playing, you're playing like Cybeast Falzar, mm -hmm. like he absorbs Gregar, and the other one just like roams free on the net. So Mega Man has to go and get them. And they talk to Yuichiro, and Yuichiro is just like, I'll give you a memory expansion so Mega Man can contain the Cybeast in him. Even though, like all of other, all of you each of other power-ups, he's like, man, you really shouldn't do this, but then he does it anyway. <laughs> so you go and you reach the Psy Beast and you absorb the Psy Beast, and Mega Man just conks out. He's unconscious, and you have to like use your friend Navi, Heat Man or Spout Man, to like go find some healing water to heal them. And then Mega Man gets out of his food coma, and uh, he now has the ability to beast out, which is where you fuse with the Psy Beast in you to turn into like a monster form. It's it's pretty cool. Uh, you get some new abilities, but it's whatever. So you chase down Circus Man because you want to get the other Psy Beast back. And you don't really achieve that. Circus Man gets away. But the next day, uh, what's his name? Blackbeard? Blackbeard is standing trial. And so you are invited to testify <laughs> against him. So you go to this place called the Judge Tree, which this is how the legal system in Battle Network works. There's a Judge Tree, which just knows if you're guilty or not. <laughs> this is why we have plant extremists trying to tear down hospitals. Yeah, uh, this is where Plant Man would really come in handy. <laughs> but uh, they judge him guilty, which Blackbeard is like, wait, what, I'm guilty? What? But it uh, doesn't matter. So uh, the next day, uh, I don't know, for some reason, Lan's dad gets framed. Also, you get another teammate. It's either Tengu Man or Slash Man. Lan's dad gets framed, and uh, after this, you have to uh, fight the guy who took over the judge tree because the judge tree says Lan's dad is guilty, which he isn't. So obviously something's wrong with the judge tree. It turns out the prosecutor, Prosecutor Ito, and his Navi Judge Man have taken over the tree 
and you have to go into the judge tree and beat them, which is actually like one of the more fun dungeons. You have like the kind of thing where like you can't walk on the same tile twice, but you have to walk on all of them. Mm. It's an interesting puzzle. Also, when Ito gets captured, he mentions that him, Blackbeard, as well as Barrel are all in this same organization, which is probably much more mysterious if you didn't see the cutscene at the end of BN5 because you were playing Team Proto Man like a pleb. Plebo Man. Uh, so Beryl is like, oh, and then you find out what the organization is because Beryl is like talking to all the dudes. He broke them out and he was like, the, the World 3 will rise again, again. So yeah, Beryl is reviving the World 3. Should, should we keep the name? No, no, leave it. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, man. This name has like some pretty bad PR. Can we like call it Team Colonel or something? <laughs> So uh, Mick Snavy gets kidnapped again. So Mega Man goes to the internet to save him. Turns out these heel navvies that kidnapped him are a Psybeast worshipping cult. <laughs> and they, when Mega Man gets there, they call the Psybeast out of him. And so Mega Man is like in his beast out form and he's rampaging. So you have to go to the undernet with like another navvy, one of your friend navvies, any of your teammates, and fight beast out Mega Man. And eventually he's helped by this other Navi who's kind of been cloaked, but he's been helping you. But he has like a clear sword sticking out of his arm, so like you know it's Proto Man. So Proto Man comes and he like <laughs> finally like calms down Mega Man. And the weather's going crazy now. So uh, it's because it's uh, Vic and Ele uh, Element Man. They control the weather, they've taken over a weather satellite. Lan almost captures him, but Colonel actually uses a copy bot and makes Colonel, like, intervene with Lan taking down Vic. So, uh, and, like, Colonel is, like, about to just kill Lan. But, uh, I don't know. They, they get out. Uh, oh, yeah. Iris shows up. Iris shows up, and Colonel's like, I can't fight Iris because they have something in common. But uh, then there's like a, oh yeah, it's revealed who Blastman's operator is in a World 3 cutscene where it turns out that Land's teacher from the very beginning, Mr. Mock, was Blastman's operator all along. But uh, Mock is like not, he's not a bad guy, sort of. I mean, he's in the World 3, but he's not a bad guy. Then you get your last teammate, uh, Dustman or Groundman, or sorry, you get Dustman and Groundman or Chargeman and Eraseman. Uh, Lan gets to be on TV. Oh, yeah, Lan gets to go back to ACDC town and talk to all his old friends. Yay. You only care about roll. I don't. <laughs> I only care about uh, Glide and Gutsman's ass. <laughs> yes. Anyways, uh, Diveman and Blastman take all of Lan's friends, Navi's hostage, because that's all they're good for at this point is a plot device. So Mega Man fights them back to back, but Mega Man's tired, so Circus Man absorbs Mega Man while he's tired. This is long. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Battle Network 6 is actually a very plot-heavy game. This is the finale to the series. And they put the Beast Out Mega Man into a copy bot to have it, like, wreak havoc on the world. And then all the World 3 operators are just like, we're going to use this. We have this Psy Beast power that's in our control. Screw Wily. We don't know what he really wants. Let's make our own organization and just use our beast out copybot Mega Man to take over the world. But Iris shows up and is able to subdue beast out Mega Man somehow. We don't know. Uh, Mock then apologizes to Lan because when they defected from Wily, Mock defected from everyone and was just like, yeah, yeah, that was a mistake. And so uh, one of your friend Navi's has to go to the hole the side beast you're from, and you jump in, and you have to fight some ghosts. And then uh, you get, I don't know, you, you get Mega Man back. But Mock basically tells you after this, like after you get Mega Man back, Mock tells you that the mayor has been in cahoots with Dr. Wily the whole time. So you go to the mayor's office, which is attached to the school, and then... <laughs> During this, you get, like, a plot dump of where the Psybeasts originally came from. So, basically, uh, you might notice that Psybeast Gregor on the bottom there uh, looks a lot like the Bug Beast Gospel. And he was formed in a much the same way. He is an amalgamation of bugs that combined together to form this Psybeast. And it was so powerful and it was destroying everything on the internet that Psylab wanted to create another side beast to fight Gregor 
and that's how they made Falzar. But then Falzar just started going crazy. <laughs> but they did fight each other. Uh, Gregor and Falzar fought each other, and they both got really tired, and they managed to seal them both in that crater. Was that was that also like Lan's dad had something to do with that one too? Uh, probably. <laughs> All, yes. I can, all I can think of is that's uh, the paint bubble meme from Spongebob. <laughs> oh, yeah. What worse. could be worse than a rampaging Cybees? Yeah. <laughs> you eat your I know. <laughs> can you imagine if this is, like, actually how the internet functioned? <laughs> <laughs> it's not? I don't know. But uh, Chad appears, and he arrests the mayor because he's with the government. Uh Oh, yeah, the underground is, like, the area that's at the bottom of the crater. And Lan gets that seal broken. And then you can go in and get Mega Man back. And, I don't know, Mega Man's better. Colonel and Proto Man fight each other because, you know, Colonel's evil. Proto Man's a good guy. They fight each other. Colonel wins. Mega Man has to beat Colonel. And then Mach reveals that uh, he joined the World 3 because Mach has a daughter who needed an operation. And Wily funded it. And that is also kind of why uh, Colonel is also with him because Colonel and Mock were both in the military and Colonel had some other stuff going on with him that like basically he was a war orphan and Wiley kind of saved him and that's why he's loyal to Wiley. So Wiley's like actually doing like some good stuff behind the scenes. He's not that awful of a person. He's just very vengeful. He's a very angry guy. But, uh, but he, he wants to destroy the internet still, of course. So Mach gives Lan a transport to the World 3 base, and then uh, he goes there, and it turns out Wily has these two giant copy bots that he wants to put the Psybeasts into so he can rule the world or whatever. And then uh, Beryl, during this, explains his backstory, as well as the backstory of Colonel and Iris, because originally Dr. Wily made Colonel to be the perfect killing robot but like Colonel was like holding back too much. He had too much of those pesky emotions. So Dr. Wiley took Colonel's like emotions and like anything that wasn't like raw soldier data, like all his emotions. And also like Colonel, you know how like Navi's kind of like interface with like machines by jacking into them? Colonel cannot do that because that ability was also removed from him. So he'd just be a killing machine. And those programs were turned into Iris who is a net navi, and every time you see her in the real world up to this point, she was just using a copy bot. Which is a pretty cool plot twist. What a twist, dude. Yeah, and Wiley was friends with Beryl's dad, That's too. That's some M. Night Shyamalan stuff. It was pretty cool that, like, this person who you think is a human through the whole game, like, turns out to be a navi. But uh, Mega Man Colonel, because, like, Beryl turns on him because he's, like, you know, destroying the world, not a cool thing. Like, Wiley, you helped me a lot, but, like, th this is a little too far, my dude. So uh, they go, and they both fight one Psybeast. You fight the Psybeast appropriate to your version. So if you're playing Psybeast Gregar, you fight Gregar. And, like, it's just implied Colonel fights the other one. Oh, yeah, and then uh, also, like, Colonel and Iris, like, Wily made it so if they ever, like, form one program again, they'll just blow up. And so they do that to destroy the Psybeast they're fighting. Mm. So they're dead, and Wily is just like, man, that sucks. I lost again, but you know what? I'm done. Like he, he's, he gets a speech from Beryl that kind of like makes him see the error of his ways. And he's like, yeah, you know, that was kind of dumb. I'm going to put all this behind me. And then, uh, oh, right, I put, I put more stuff later. I, I was getting ahead of myself, so I'm going to go ahead and talk about the post game because when we get to the end game of Battle Network 6's story, it's the finale to all of Battle Network, so I have that like after the post game and everything. So in the post game, you do all the side jobs, you can fight a super strong proto man. That's cool. There's a graveyard area, which there's a grave for every Navi in the game, and you have to beat all of them. Uh, one of them is blank, and then like base shows up, and he's like, Mega Man, that's your grave. <laughs> <laughs> Then you beat him, and base is just... <laughs> That's really good. Yeah. But then uh, after you beat him, uh, base was like, I, I want to get some of that Psybeast power. And so like, you go to the underground, and you can fight uh, Mega Man's Beast Out form, which is just like a remnant on there. But right after you beat the Beast Out form, base shows up and he absorbs it. Yeah. yeah, he does his like get ability program, which is like the like original Mega Man series, how he can like yeah. copy. Like base is the only one who has that in this series. You can get like chip data from stuff from beating them, which is kind of like that. But like base is the only one who explicitly has that power. Yeah. 
So he absorbs the beast out Psy Beast, and then, like, depending on your version, you fight either base FX or GX for Thalzar or Gregar. In the Japanese version, there's an area past the underground called uh, the uh, what's the Immortal Area, which is where you can. It's a crossover with the Botkai series again, hmm. where you team up with Django the Solar Boy to fight uh, the Count. Who's that guy? That's the Count. And when you beat him, uh, you can fight a stronger version of the final boss. All right, uh, here's some friend navvies. That's uh, Slash Man, Tangu Man. They're operators. Uh, that's Miss Zap. A Lek Man is one of your teammates, and she just has him now instead of Count Zap. Uh, that's Dusk and a Race Man. Uh, in Japanese, a Race Man was called Killer Man. Did not expect a Race Man to look like that, because yeah, the Killer Man would have implied that a lot better. But this is yeah, yeah. his feet are blades. Yes, all of him is blades. He's, he's Buggy the he's Clown. <laughs> literally edgy. He <laughs> he is quite literally edgy. Uh, there's. Moliarty <laughs> and Ground Man, as well as Al Fairy and Charge Man. I want that Charge hair. Man is just a train. Yes, Charge Man is just a train. Not just a train. Not just a train. A train with a skull. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's Thomas the Tank Engine, but red. Uh, that's Mr. Press, and I think that's Dust Man. This man is not at all what you would expect him to look. No, no, no. Look, look. Uh, he's like a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, kind of. Oh. Look, and his hands go together. Yeah, kind of. Oh, yeah, so here's the actual epilogue. Uh, Iris and Colonel self-destruct to destroy the last Psy Beast. Uh, Wily refuses... Oh, yeah, Wily is like, I lose. I'm done. Hikari's win. Don't care anymore. This place will blow up, and I'm just going to stand here. And, like, Lan kind of gives him a pep talk, and Beryl also does and offers to help him, ex like, escape. And eventually, Wiley is just like, yeah, okay, whatever. I lose. I'll, if you really just want me to live, I'll just go talk to the authorities or something. I don't care anymore. I just lost. Lynn graduates from elementary school. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and at his graduation, Beryl leaves him a present, which is his own personal copy bot, so he can hang out with Mega Man at any time. Which is awesome. That's really cool, actually. Implication, yeah. implication. Yeah. Then uh, Chad, they, all of like Lan and his friends like meet up post graduation. Uh, Chad mentions that he just graduated high school and will be going to university soon. This is where we find out that Chad graduated high school at the age of twelve. Uh, they all mention what they want their future plans in life to be, which you'll see because they all do what they want. There's a time skip of twenty years after the credits. Lan has become a network scientist, just like his father and grandfather. Doctor Wiley builds a new Colonel and Iris. That immediate, whenever a virus like appears and tries to do anything, the kernel program immediately deletes it, and then the iris program immediately repairs that part of the internet. So viruses are just not a thing anymore, thanks to Dr. Wiley. And here's everyone else's things. Dex became the mayor of ACDC town. <laughs> Mail became Lan's wife. Oh, he finally got the, the gun. Yeah, yeah, he did. finally got it. They make like a joke like in the thing where they're talking about their future plans where like they imply that like, oh, Lan's a dunce again and like Mail is like being very forward with him. Anyways, uh, Yai inherits her father's company, which is why they're rich. <laughs> Mick becomes an elementary school teacher. Tab runs a store. Chad becomes the boss of the officials. And that's it. Oh, yeah, and... Uh, Lan and Mail have a kid named Patch, and they make a Navi for him called uh, Mega Man Jr. <laughs> and that's it. Uh, this series actually has a definitive end. They just end the whole series there. That's awesome. So there's no more Mega Man Battle Network except for the Settlers of Catan spin <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Rockman Ekuze Catan Standard. <laughs> Hold on. This is real. <laughs> It's just Settlers of Catan, but Mega Man Battle Network. That's pretty cool. Yeah, no, I, I would l really like to play I this, I would love that. All, All right. right. If we suck, who's going to read? <laughs> yeah, okay, so between Battle Network and Star Force... Uh, Lan is a network scientist now. Okay, I already said all that. Mm -hmm. So Lane's main research in his networking stuff is like, man, what really got me and Mega Man through all that stuff was friendship. So he wants to, like, take, like their ability to work together in sync and like make that like an actual thing everyone can access and he invents 
this thing called the brother band system, which is a thing that's like a mechanic in all of the Star Force games mm -hmm. because you can go on Wi-Fi and connect with other players to make them your brothers. And when you do that, you get more link power, which gives you extra abilities. And Lan invented that, which is really cool. Eventually, they discovered this stuff called EM waves, electromagnetic waves. Oh, what? And once they do this, uh, most of the internet infrastructure is replaced with EM wave infrastructure over the next 200 years. And this culminates in them discovering an EM wave planet called Planet FM. They send one of their top astronauts, Kelvin Steller, to Planet FM as a <laughs> diplomat, but Kelvin never returned, and we don't know why. Kelvin's son, Geo, gets the depression from this. Like, his wife and kid feel really awful, as you might imagine. And Geo stops going to school. He's a shut-in who only stays in his room. But sometimes he goes to this point to, like, stargaze because, like, it reminds him of his dad, who he knows is out there somewhere. Probably, hopefully. He's on the moon. <laughs> like Mega Man. No, th for once, the series doesn't end on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Leading into Mega Man Star Force 1. So, Geostellar, shut in. He's just stargazing one day. He has one memento from his father, which is his visualizer, which are these sunglasses he can put on, which let him see electromagnetic waves in the real world. So he's just wearing them, stargazing, looking at the stars. He can the see 5G. Yes. He can see... Dude, he can see 7G. <laughs> Anyways, he's stargazing, looking at the waves Man, and the stars. Living in 3021. Yes. Uh, it's no, uh, 20, 20XX. 22OX. <laughs> 22OX? Yeah. Okay. Because now, it's, now it's even less ambiguous. It's only within a 10 year window. Well, no, it's like there's a definitive 200 year gap between the series. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, so Land and Everybody's dead at this point. Yes. Okay. The, you can go to a junkyard, and the junkyard is just full of PETs because nobody uses net navvies anymore. Oh, wow. It's kind of messed up because those things are, like, implied to be sentient. <laughs> <laughs> That's your grave, Mega Man. <laughs> Anyways. Sends wiping his ass on a Neopet. <laughs> a Tamagotchi. Anyways, uh, a shooting star starts heading directly towards... Geo, which is kind of a running theme because in Japanese this is called Ryusei no Rockman or Shooting Star Rockman. Even in the Japanese version, there are multiple, like in English, it just says Shooting Star Rockman. But then they call it Star Force because 10 year olds don't like shooting stars. But, uh, anyways, this shooting star turns out to be an EM wave being from Planet FM called Omega Zis, who is immediately nicknamed Mega. Uh, and he can combine with Geo, and they become Mega Man. In the Japanese, his name was War Rock, and that's why they become Rock Man. Anyways, uh, the student council president has been trying to get Geo to go back to school because it looks bad at her that someone in her class is just like a flunky who's never going there. Eventually, Geo agrees because Mega is just like, I really want to see Earth culture. Please go to this and take me along with you. And Geo, like, kind of starts coming out of his shell with this because Luna, who is, like, the student council president, is constantly, like, bothering him and stuff. And he starts opening up ever so slowly. But there are constant incidents where FMians from Planet FM come down and they exploit people who are, like, feeling lonely or whatever. And then it, like, takes them over, like, exploits their emotional weakness and takes them over to turn them into some... Some, like, boss enemy who is, like, themed after a constellation, usually. I'll go over most of these in the character bios because most of these are, like, the reoccurring characters who get these scenarios, which is kind of cool that, like, Star Force is kind of more plot-driven, sort of. But uh, eventually, you do enough of these scenarios and uh, you meet the satellite admins who are the three survivors of Planet AM who, like, it was another planet, Planet FM destroyed Planet AM because they had this super weapon called Andromeda and it finds out the reason why o Omega Zis is on the run. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Omega. Okay, so wow. the reason all the other FMians are coming to Earth is because Omega Zis has the key to activate Andromeda. After what they did to Planet AM, Omega Zis just took the key and ran. And so they're chasing after him. Okay, the this is a lot. FMians were a civilization of slugs that had to sustain off of other species and they would no, they're, create they're, a link behind the ear. What? Uh, Is that a uh, reference to something? Yeah. 
Sorry, I didn't get it. Slug Terra. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, Planet FM is like the planet that Kelvin went to and didn't come back from. <laughs> Sorry, this but, is a lot more than I expected. Wow. Ooh, yeah. Damn. Woo! As soon as we went to Star Force, Wars, it was just like, what? Whoa. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> so, uh, you meet the satellite admins, which is just like from the three versions of the game, Pegasus, Leo, or Dragon. And just one of them will test you to make sure you're ready. Because you've beaten a few FMians at this point, And they're like, yeah, we do not want to see what happened to planet AM happen to Earth. So that's bad. And eventually you get the ability to fuse with your version-specific satellite admin. Which is kind of what you see on the cover there, sort of. And uh, yeah, you get that form. You move on. And the satellite... Ad yeah, That's Andromeda. It eats planets. And Geo makes some friends during these adventures who I will talk about in the character bios. Most of Star Force One's plot I put in the character bios. Maybe not the way I would have organized it going back, but like I, this is one of the earlier games I went through. And uh, eventually the FMians do get the Andromeda key from Omega Zis because of course they do. We need a final boss. And uh, Geo's dad's friend who works at Amakin, which is like Wave Naxa, uh, he gets a rocket or a satellite that Geo, because like Geo can interact with like wave technology, so he can like pulse into the satellite and then the satellite will send Mega Man's waves to planet FM so he can go and stop the planet FM stuff. You go and confront the king of planet FM, Cyphus, or Cepheus? I think it's Cepheus, yeah. Syphilis? Yes. And he, yes. but Cepheus is just like, no, you are, I'm going to activate Andromeda because basically this dude is like mentally scarred because he's a king, but he's also like a kid. Like Cepheus is like not very old. And because of what, because he like grew up very young, people were constantly trying to like kill him to take the throne. So there's a big like, they really expand the friendship theme here where like Cephas has nobody, he has no friends. Whereas Geo throughout his adventure starts out a shut in with no friends and eventually gets like some really close compatriots. It's a, actually pretty engaging, especially uh, one character who we'll talk about pretty soon, Sonia, who has basically his exact same backstory but uh, we'll get to her in a bit. And b but basically, Cepheus is like what happens when you don't have any friends. And he doesn't trust anyone. He's constantly paranoid. The reason he destroyed Planet AM is he just thought, oh, there's like a Cepheus kid on... Cepheus stays noited. Yeah, no. <laughs> he's like, there's a kid on the throne of Planet FM. We can... Like, he was just constantly paranoid. They would just come take over because it's run by a dumb kid. So he just decided, I'm striking first. Andromeda, go destroy Planet AM. <laughs> And then that, you know, that's kind of what made things start in the series. The only survivors were the three satellite admins. And as it turns out, Omega Zis is an, an AMian hmm. who he was off doing something else at the time, which is why he was not dead. <laughs> he was out running errands. <laughs> yeah, he, was talking to his, he was talking to his best friend, clearly. But uh, Cepheus, uh, eventually Geo agrees to be friends with Cepheus and the two actually form a brother band. And Cepheus is like, all right, I'll be good now. And he just leaves back to space. He just needed a friend. <laughs> yeah, Ooh. the post game, you just go like really deep into outer space and you meet your particular satellite admin and you fight them. They're the ultimate boss of the game. They're pretty cool. Yeah, you they get, look awesome. Yeah, you get a really powerful attack if you beat them. I know that like technically the best one is Pegasus for like if you're taking the game seriously, but don't take the game seriously. Both of the other two are way cooler. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think there's a clear best of these three, and the version doesn't really matter. So pick whichever one you like. So here we have character bios: Geostellar, Omega Zis, and their combined form, Mega Man. Uh, Geo starts as a recluse. Uh, Omega Zis is the last survivor. We've already talked about most of this. Uh, there's a really cool thing where, like, Geo is a constantly developing character. He's kind of just a normal dude in two, but there's a real plot thread where, like, Geo needs to be pulled out of his shell by force, starting with Luna, eventually opens up to, like, Sonya and stuff. And, like, throughout Star Force 1, he's opening up. And then in Star Force 3, he is, like, the Chad of the group. He is, like, the shining beacon of extroversion. 
encouraging everyone else, making everyone's day brighter. He's just a great, wholesome person. And I love that development where like he starts out being the weak, like the, the weak one, then later he's like the emotional core of the group. I love that. Uh, this is Geo's family. You know, it's just Kelvin and Hope Stellar. It's a milf. Yeah. I, I, I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Com com common opinion. Very common opinion. <laughs> she, she looks like way younger. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's most Japan design. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, this is Luna. <laughs> She's a milf. <laughs> <laughs> she combines with a fecus because like her parents are rich and never pay attention to her which causes her to feel lonely this is like later in the game like at first she's like trying to pull geo out of his shell but then later on she has her own issue she has to work through because her parents don't spend any time with her and this gets her taken advantage of by ophicus who turns her into this snake thing queen ophicus they're all based on constellations this guy down here is zach temple he is useless and we all hate him all right yeah screw him it looks he's like he's a, the yacht like he, he's he the looks, eye of this series he looks shifty is all get out yeah my name is zach his <laughs> <laughs> his thing is he's a bookworm but nobody cares Zach I stole some cigarettes from my parents. <laughs> I don't know why that's the out. voice I gave him. <laughs> yeah, he, but lo he looks like he would be a generic, like pervy character. Or he's something. not. He's just a nerd. He's just a piece of. <laughs> he's shit. He's just a bookworm. That's it. He doesn't we even don't do like anything. Import. Yeah, and then uh, the last of the three. This is like a trio. They're oh, always yeah. together. Is Luna's kind of like the leader, and then like Bud and Zach are like her two lackeys. Bud. This yeah, guy is, this is the first scenario in the game where, like, Luna's being a chode to Bud because, like, I don't know, he was late or something, and she, like, chews him out, and Bud's like, man, the Prez is going to be real mad, and then that's when Taurus takes advantage of him, and he turns into Taurus Fire, and he takes over, like, a car and just starts rampaging through the city with it. <laughs> he looks really cool, though. Yeah, I mean, I love the, the, I love the, the orange and blue. I think he's a better always. Dex. I, re yeah, I really yeah, do think no, he's a better like dad. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, and the Taurus, like, perfect yeah. form and everything, too. Yeah. Uh, in later games, Wait. Taurus actually chills out and becomes a swell dude, and Taurus Fire becomes an ally. Wasn't wasn't Taurus, wasn't that the constellation in uh, Beyblade? Uh... <laughs> oh, we're going to bring up Metal Fusion now. Metal Fusion? Maybe. Wasn't, wasn't that the oh, fat Lord. one? I didn't watch that show. I don't know. <laughs> That's you guys' thing. I don't remember. I mean, all I know is that we never finished that. Beyblade Metal me... Fusion lecture went. No, no. <laughs> No, no. Yes. <laughs> and then me, me and you, me and Mikey still have to finish Yu-Gi-Oh. Um, Arc V. Arc V. Yeah. And me. And that one's actually like kind of. Cool. It's really fun to watch. Yeah. Anyways, uh, this is Sonia Strum and uh, eventually Harpnote. She basically has a very similar backstory to Geo in that like her mom died when she was very designs. young. <laughs> yeah, the designs are really cool. That's really in this cool. Too. Yeah, her mom died when she was really young, and like her mom loved to listen to her play music. So she kept playing music like in honor of her mom, but eventually she got like her music kind of like she has like a manager who's kind of like douchebag corporate dude who like she thinks about hanging it up because she doesn't want to make music for like, you know, like the soulless corporate industry or whatever. And that's what gets her taken advantage of by Lyra. She's pretty young to become disillusioned with the corporate. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's been like, she's actually very talented and she's been in the music industry for a hot minute. Okay. And yeah, that she turns into harp note. She's basically the role of the series. There isn't a direct proto man in the series. So like harp note is kind of both the role and the proto man where she's like constantly reoccurring kind of like friend rival sort of deal. Hmm. But then like also like the base of the series is also kind of the proto man where he's not, just evil he has like reasons and stuff we'll get to him later but uh they're really cool also the main theme of the series called shooting star is, is a actually, song in yeah. universe that she wrote <laughs> and in star force 3 yeah. which we'll eventually get to there is a lyrical version that she sings and i'll talk about how great that song is when we get to it because it's actually really cool i'm gonna go ahead and change it to, to star force go oh, for it yeah star force is a good soundtrack yeah also in the They're not bad. Star Force 3, I think, is as good as the really? best uh, Mega Man Battle Network games. They're different. Basically, you're trapped to one row and everything's in front of you, but you have a lock-on to compensate for that. Mm -hmm. And kind of like the deal there is that like it reduces some of the depth of the battles, but it makes it more fast-paced and snappy. Are the Star Force, are, are any of those out for like the 3DS? 
That would probably work they're, really good with like the whole like it would yeah, but they're not. Damn. And the 3DS is discontinued now, so. Oh, that's right. Shoot. Yeah. They can move. They can move. Yeah. Rest. Also, in peace. like immediately after Harp Note scenario, like Lyra kind of has a crush on Omega Zis, so she's just like, yeah, we'll stick around. We're not really evil. And Harp Note is just like an ally from that point onwards. That's too good of a character design. It really yeah. is. Like, it's just cool. I like the rolls of toilet paper on the side of her head. All right, who are these people? <laughs> yeah. Uh, these guys are from Amakin. Uh, one of them I talked about in the plot, which is Aaron Boreal. He's kind of Kelvin's friend. He's just always kind of there to, like, support Hope and Geo. And then uh, this other guy is Tom Dubious, which I always read as Dubois when I was younger. But <laughs> anyways, uh, his thing was like, he's one of the guys who gets taken over by an FM Ian. And it's because like when he was younger and worked at a different place, one of his business partners screwed him over and stole one of his ideas. And he just doesn't really trust people. And so he has this thing he made called a flat pack. And uh, Aaron wants to know more about it because he thinks it's really cool. And of course, Aaron's just like, a cool dude. He just wants to know about his friend's invention but he thinks that Aaron's trying to like steal his do what his other friend did before that gets him taken over by Cygnus and he becomes Cygnus Wing Cygnus X1 sorry. Yeah, yeah. Rush reference I'm sorry yeah of course <laughs> Rush uh, these guys are like eventually uh, Geo meets this guy called Pat who's a cool dude and they become friends but Pat has multiple personality disorder <laughs> And has an evil half called Ray. And Ray, they don't really get taken over. Ray just willingly works with Gemini. And they become Gemini Spark. And when they do, there's like, you know, because Gemini, there's like two of them. They're twins. Mm -hmm. And they both, like both personalities get a body. And it's kind of like an emotional thing for Geo. Because Geo's just now like learning to trust people. And then he gets betrayed by Pat, who was his friend at this point. I really like that character. Yeah. Star Force is cooler than I expected. Yeah, green green hair, always good choice. Yeah, so I thought Pat was yeah. a girl when I was a kid. I thought I, I oh. thought Pat was a girl. Yeah, too. no, no, that that's a boy. It, and uh, <laughs> it just reminds me of that song or that verse from Colt Forty Five because she had <laughs> green hair. <laughs> so whenever whenever I hear Colt Forty Five and I get to that verse, I think of Pat. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these are other bosses. Uh, this guy on the left is uh, uh, Geo's teacher gets forced to teach a curriculum now he doesn't agree with. That's character design. <laughs> yeah. There's a what? lot happening here. What? Yeah, so. What is this crab person that looks like it's from some, like, French or Canadian? Like, F it's in a completely Find different out. art style. It looks like it's from DeviantArt. Yeah, this. Probably. Is what? Okay, so the guy on the far left is Geo's teacher who, like, is forced to teach a curriculum he doesn't agree with. He did a thing where, like, he really wanted to make learning fun, and he was constantly, like, cracking jokes with his students. Everyone loves him. And he gets forced to teach this boring by-the-books curriculum. And he's like, like, what am I even doing as a teacher? Like, this is ruining everything. I hate all this. And that's what gets him taken advantage of by Libra, who turns him into Libra Scales, who's cool because he's a yeah. two-element boss. And, like, which element he's weak to and uses depends on, like, which scale is closer to the ground. It's actually pretty neat. Uh, these other, these two in the middle, uh, Cancer Bubble is Cancer. Crab. Yeah, crab. <laughs> and then uh, Wolf Woods is like this gardener. Cancer Bubble is like the, literally this kid who met Cancer, and Cancer is not evil, so they just decided, hey, let's be Cancer Bubble. And the same thing with uh, <laughs> Wolf, who met some gardener who I forget the name of, and they become Wolf Woods, not evil. But also, he's kind of like a werewolf type deal where, like, sometimes he can't real like, he just constantly wants to lash it out. Like, he and that's why you fight him is like, it's really fun for him and it lets him, like, blow off his steam. I was gonna say that character design is made for fighting. That guy is not, <laughs> not harmless. Yeah, yeah but, but like, Wolf is, wolf is more like a an animal game. Yeah, <laughs> like, this is, yeah. Fur affinity. See, cancer. Fur affinity. Ca cancer bubble comes from DeviantArt. Wolf Woods comes from Fur Affinity. <laughs> <laughs> this guy on the right, though, you you fight him in the post game. I love him. Yeah, he, he is he Crown so Thunder. He is an ancient king who has been dead for thousands of years, and then an FMian just came and like took over his skeleton, and now he's back alive. 
Because like the FME just thought he was such a cool dude, and he comes back to life as Crown Thunder. He's just a One Piece villain. I love. He's him. Brooke. Look at him. He's, he's, ele- he's Electric yeah. Brook. I didn't want to. Ru- I didn't want to rush you, but as soon as I saw him, I was like, I love him already. <laughs> no, no, Soul he's King? great. I love this guy. <laughs> I don't even know his personality or anything, but I was like immediately. Look at there. that. Uh, he, he speaks in like yay old English, I think. Look oh, that's that amazing. Smile. Look yeah. at that smile. How can you say? How can you hate this man? He's a skeleton. He looks like a Christmas tree. I, oh, think that's, I think that's an intentional part of his design. I'd have oh, to look at the it. art book again, but like I think that was him alone makes me want to play this game. <laughs> well, you, you'll have to play the game and then like get All to the post the way, game. Yeah. Like he's a post game character. Good. He's not even plot relevant. You, to the you post have game. to earn him. He's he's just there. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so originally I was gonna make a. Originally, I was going to make a game show about this where I was like, did this happen in real life because of all the cyber terrorism that happens in the Battle Network series? And a surprising amount of those actually happened in real life. Didn't pan out. It was a lot of work, and this was taking long enough to prepare. But uh, one thing I did just happen to come across during this, which is Star Force happening in real life. Mysterious radio signal detected coming from inside our galaxy. Because uh, EMW is inspired by EMR, which is the actual electromagnetic yeah. radiation that you work with when you do both AM and FM, but they are yes. different. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Thank it's you, com- audio It's coming engineer. from Jupiter, also known as Planet FM. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's an FM radio signal. <laughs> so uh, Andromeda when? You want to tune in? Yeah, okay, so that was funny. All right, this is the last, like, Ooh. not main game. Uh, this is Shooting Star Rockman, Denpa Hencon on air. That's, like, Geo's, like, catchphrase when he transforms. Instead of, like, jack in, Mega Man, execute, he goes. He's tuning in, into yeah. his frequency band. Yeah, he says, Denpa Hencon, Hoshikawa Subaru, on air, <laughs> or in English, uh, EM wave change, Geo Stellar, on the air. So, I see a toy in this picture. Yes, uh, this is a light gun game, like, Time, Holy like a, what? like Time Crisis or whatever. Damn. Or Super Adventure Rockman. And it comes with like a light gun that because like Mega Man's Mega Buster is Omega's this is head, yeah. you get that as your light gun in the game. I would love It's cool. That. Yeah. The only other interesting thing about this game is it's the only time someone other than Geo is playable because there's like a rhythm mini game where you play his harp note. Mm. <laughs> The only thing that would suck is I'm a grown man, so I'm not sure that my hands would fit. No, almost definitely not. <laughs> it's thing made for little kid mittens. <laughs> it is really cool, though. No, yeah, I would love that. Just 3D print the new one. That's a super yeah, really you could. Cool toy. Yeah. Anyways, Star Force 2. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and say I'm not going to do this game justice. Or maybe I will do it justice, but I'm, g- I'm going to like not talk very much because this is... My least favorite game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. Battle Network 4 is probably worse, but this is the one that like I'm the least familiar with because I played so much Battle Network 4 as a kid. I was not grown up enough to know that it was bad. <laughs> <laughs> Other than Cold Man Scenario, which I knew immediately was BS. Ooh, parts. The ooh All right. Parts. I, yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Let's go to I, the... I forget what that stands for. It's like it's like out outside object or whatever. But uh, anyways... Uh, Basically, uh, in the first game, your PET analog is called a transer. Uh, in this one, it gets upgraded to a star carrier, which can interact with these things called matter waves, which are basically like EM waves that are just real. You can make like a matter wave that is like this microphone stand, and you can like touch it and just use it as a microphone stand. And that's huh. just a piece of technology that's real now. Uh, so there are a bunch of new people who can EM wave change who are working for this person called Dr. Vega. And uh, Dr. Vega just sends them all. I'm not going to go over every scenario here because, honestly, I just don't know them all and I forgot to put them in the PowerPoint. This is, like, the first game I put in here because I wanted to get it over with. Cause Nintendo I, Wi-Fi. The story is actually not that bad. It's the encounter rate is so high that it's a chore to play. Mm-hmm. But, uh, basically, Vega wants to get all the O parts because it'll let them recreate this thing we don't really know why yet also going after the o parts because the o parts are part of like this technology from this ancient civilization called mu and the last living human from mu is this guy called solo he's an edge lord he's the base of the series and as the last thing all he wants to do is to collect all of the mu technology and just like let it not be used by anyone else because mu was destroyed and he's just like, all right, well, that's cool. 
eventually we find out that there's another living being from uh, Moo, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so that keeps happening. Uh, Solo eventually gets to where, like, he tries to fight Mega Man because Mega Man has one of the O parts, which lets you, like, turn into, like, your tribe form, which is either going to be Zerker, Saurian, or Ninja. You get Zerker in both versions, and I think Zerker's considered the best one, so you might as well go with that, unless you really want to be a dinosaur or a ninja. But uh, Solo, after he fails to beat Mega Man, is like, your power comes from friendship. So he takes all of Mega Man's friends and scatters them everywhere. So like, it's kind of a game split into two halves, where the first half is like Dr. Vega's people coming after the O parts, and the second half is going to where Solo sends your friends which also involves collecting O parts. And uh, basically, because the ancient power of Mu is sealed in the O parts, which the O parts are ancient star carriers. It's like the same technology. They can interface with matter waves and all that. And uh, Solo kind of works with Vega, but also he's just like, I want to get all the Mu technology back. Geo almost gets consumed, kind of like the Dark Mega Man thing where like he almost gets consumed by it, but then when he beats it, he gets to use that as his power, kind of like Beast Out. It's whatever. Uh, oh, that's cool. When you're hunting down all your friends who are like uh, scattered, when you find Harp Note, she's working with Vega now. Oh, but it, no. it very, very quickly is revealed that she was just being blackmailed, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, you fight some other guys, like when you're hunting down like Zack and Bud, you fight... Uh, uh, Plesio Surf and like Terra Condor, I think their name is. They're all named after UMAs. And like the two guys who come after you before is like Dark Phantom and uh, Yeti Blizzard. Hmm. So, yeah, there's like, like how in the first game all the bosses are named after uh, constellations. In this yeah. game, they're all named after UMAs. So, uh, eventually, you get all the O parts and you fight Rogue. And you go to the Bermuda Triangle, which is where the ruins of Mu are. All right. In universe, this is why the Bermuda Triangle messes with electrical stuff so much, is because like the Mu technology is messing with it, the leftover like magnetic stuff. So Vega wants to resurrect the ancient like god of EM waves from Mu called Le Mu, which uh, a lot of people believe to be the network timeline equivalent of Ra Moon from Super Adventure Rockman, especially because in Japanese, his name is Ra Mu, hmm. which is pretty cool because Vega wants to use Le Mu to bring back... Vega is a girl, by the way. Uh, she wants to bring back her husband, Altair, who died in a war. Also, Vega it is revealed as the person who invented matter waves which is uh, pretty neat. Like she, like, she basically did all of this. She made matter waves because it, it's something that the O parts could do, which would lead her to the O parts, which would let her eventually bring Altair back. And Geo defeats Lemu, and Vega's assistant Hollow kind of, like, does a thing where she can talk to the ghost of Altair or whatever, and Altair just tells her to move on, and she does. We never hear from Vega. Damn, again. bitch, you're clingy even after the grave. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Man can't even rest in peace. <laughs> All right, so, yeah, back. basically, uh, you beat Lemu, and that's basically it. I didn't do this game. I, I gave this game the respect it deserves. That encounter rate's garbage to make up for the fact that there's, like, four scenarios in the whole game. Yeah. You do the first two with, like, Dark Phantom and Yeti Blizzard, you do the last two, which are Plesio Surf and Terra Condor. That's four bosses. They didn't care. Here's the post game. This is cool. This is like a time travel parallel universe thing, which is actually in universe how you originally find out that Land's the one who invented Brother Band. Hmm. But uh, the main plot is Geo gets a mail telling him to go to the trans dimension, which is just a different dimension that has like a bunch of bosses. You fight refights of all the bosses that are like the boss name if because if, alternate dimension, okay, yeah. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're sent by Dark Phantom If, who is actually a good guy in this one, and their ruler, Apollo Flame, wants to destroy everything. He wants to go into the normal dimension and destroy everything, because he already killed everyone in the trans-if dimension. <laughs> I killed everyone, now I'm bored. Yeah, so Geo goes there, and he fights Apollo Flame, and he beats him, and you have to fight If versions of all the bosses, it's whatever. 
and eventually Apollo, because it turns out Apollo was just programmed to destroy, and so he did. And then Apollo is like, Geo, you only won because you have the O parts and the link power, which Apollo could not use link power because he killed everyone. Oh, what a sore <laughs> loser. You only won because you had the thing, yeah. you cheater. At, at some point during all this timeline hopping, you find like you find like data memento scattered around, which turn out to be part of like Land's journal or whatever, where he describes how he invented link power to like reflect his like relationship with Mega Man. Hmm. Slash his dead brother. Yes. Well, it's it, it's because like yeah, they're like so in sync because they're literally twins, and sometimes they literally operate in sync. Mm -hmm. That like he wanted to like share that with everyone else, and that's why he invented Brother Band. Which throughout the games, you're constantly making Brother Bands. Like there, it's a big moment when like Geo gets his first brother in Star Force One. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, it's really cool, especially in a. Uh, Three, there's a unique mechanic with Brother Band where like you get different forms based on previous enemies hmm. and you get Rogue's noise form if you delete all your brothers. So this guy is Rogue. Uh, the human is solo and like because he's like from Mu and he's just good with this stuff, he does not need to combine with an EM being to turn into Rogue. Hmm. He has this buddy here who it turns out is the like... Uh, Solo is the last human from uh, Mu. Laplace here is the last EM being from Mu. And Laplace, like, eventually they team up. Especially, I think it's in Star Force 3 that Laplace becomes a thing. And Laplace will just turn into a giant sword that Rogue holds. Which is pretty cool. Like, they're buddies. Uh, Laplace literally speaks in static noise. But, like, Solo just understands him. Hmm. So, like... It's a kind of endearing thing. He's not entirely evil. He just is very, very protective of anything Moo related. Hmm. I yeah. So that's so he's, he's hmm? not he's not an alien. No, he's from Moo. Okay. He's the last survivor. So there was of people Moo. on Moo. Yes, too. there were people okay. and EM beings who lived together. Okay. Okay. All right. And there, there was it was like sort of like Atlantis in the Bermuda Triangle. Okay, yeah, because it wasn't like it crashed into the Bermuda Triangle. It was just there, and that was all their yeah. technology. Okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. He's just kind of the last survivor. Uh, these are the bosses. Top left is, uh, you can see Dark Phantom. Uh, his scenario is there's like a movie going on, and he hijacks the movie, and Geo stops him. Yeti Blizzard is like uh, this businessman is like taking over a hotel from this skier, and then he becomes Yeti Blizzard. Uh <laughs> I think it was the Terra... Naturally, like, what else would come of that? Yeah. <laughs> Terra Condor was a pretty funny thing, because that's when you're trying to rescue Bud. And the locals of the desert island he went to just thought that he was sent from heaven. <laughs> they just start, like, worshipping him. Like, he has, like, this, like, tribal crown on his head when you walk up there. It, it's pretty funny, but, uh, you know, eventually you bring him back. Oh, yeah. Also, in the middle, when uh, you split everyone up, uh, he turns Luna into Queen of Ficus again, and you just mm. fight... It's a reused boss. It's not really important to the Is plot. Is one of the middle supposed to be like the Loch Ness Monster? Yeah, Plesio Surf yeah. for Nessie. And then uh, the the one in the hood is uh, Hollow, mm -hmm. who is Vega's right-hand man. And then the chick, in, the chick there is Dr. Vega. Okay. All right. And now it's time for the finale of Star Force 3 because... The Star Force games didn't really sell well, so they just ended this one on three. Mm. Which, again, like Battle Network 6, because they knew this was the finale, like, they went all out. This is a really, really good game. As good as the best Battle Network games, in my opinion. If you just really hate Star Force's style of battle, maybe you wouldn't like it as mm. much, but I do. This one's also a doozy. It's the last right. one. Yeah, so... The Hunter VG is invented, which is just like how the Star Carriers replace the Transers. The Hunter VG replaces the Star Carrier. And this lets you have which is what's essentially an EM wave net navi called a wizard. In fact, a lot of FMians who have come to live on Earth get converted into wizards, including uh, including Omega Zis. And uh, Geo gets a new classmate and a new teacher who are Jack Corvus and Queen Tia. And... They kind of become friends, sort of. They're just kind of around. Jack's kind of a punk. Tia's kind of quiet. and uh, But Geo, and, but also at this time, the re-elections of the student council president is coming up, and Luna oh wants to no. make sure it's her. 
So she is just like, all right, we're going to, there's this thing in Star Force 3 called teams. And you form a team, which is like a union with some other people. And they all come together for a common purpose. Every team has a purpose. So they form the team Luna for Prez. And you go and like help people around the school. But the main thing you do is the science club is going to launch a rocket into space <laughs> with a wizard on it called Magnes, who's going to like collect moon rocks with his magnet power. He's going to... Yeah, he's going to get all that. It's super cool. Like, it's an awesome science project that these fifth graders are doing. And eventually, it turns out that uh, Jack and Tia, bad guys, as it turns out, they throw a playing card at uh, Magnes and turn him into Spade Magnes. All the bosses in this game named after playing card suits or some other playing card theme thing. Yeah. So he's spade Magnes. He starts messing with the rocket. And he's just going to like make it blow up on them or whatever. So Gio has to go in the rocket and stop them. And that's great. And that's terrible. But Gio wins. He gets a letter from someone who knows he's Mega Man. And he tells him to go to Speak'a Mall. And at Speak'a Mall, there's some event where you have to beat some viruses or whatever. But immediately after, you meet this man called A.C. Eos or Ace. And Ace can wave change... Okay, so Ace has a wizard named Acid who is not like an fm or anything, but he can still combine with them. It's like an artificially made EM wave change thing. And also he's able to, uh, he gives Geo this thing called the, uh, it's either the Ace or Joker program depending on which version you're playing, Black Ace or Red Joker. There's no better version. I prefer Red Joker just because I think the design is cooler, but a lot of people like Black Ace. But uh, basically, every time that, like, weird stuff happens with EM technology, they let off some noise and some stuff called Crimson. So you can absorb the noise now with this program, and your noise level goes higher. And it's a really cool mechanic because, like, you get noise equal to the amount of damage you overkill enemies with. And so it encourages, like, planning out how you finish enemies off. Because if you get over 100, you get different chip data. It's called illegal data, and basically, you get a random chip from the black hole server. And basically, you can get some really powerful chips really early if you're, if you're good at keeping your noise high. You can do some other stuff with your noise later, but not quite yet. So after this, Sonia invites Geo to her big I'm coming back to music concert. And once you get there, uh, Jack... Uh, Jack corrupts Bud again. He throws a card at him or whatever and turns him back into Taurus fire because like some residual Taurus data is there or whatever. And he goes crazy. But then Geo beats him and Taurus like just shows up. Actually, I think Taurus was already there. And Taurus is just like, you know what? Yeah, I I'm a good guy now. I like hanging out with you guys. And so Taurus fire becomes Geo's friend. And immediately after this, uh, they corrupt someone else who is like a... Sonia's like fellow musician person, Belle. Uh, her wizard, Ice, she like gets corrupted and turns into Diamond Ice. And that's another thing. She like freezes the stage. Everyone's like freezing to death. It's terrible. And you just, you just got to go and beat Diamond Ice. She's just being jealous. I don't really know how the Belle jealousy plot plays into it, really. It's kind just of like a side thing because it doesn't really matter. They corrupted... Uh, ice. So I I don't uh, really get it, but like she gets better ahead. later. All right. So the whole time, by the kind of holding this back for a second, the whole time, yeah. uh, he's, Mega Man's like had to be like a secret, like secret identity kind of thing. Like oh, no. and uh, there's they're in fifth kind grade, of. and they're in fifth grade again. In the first game, there's a like sort of thing where he wants to keep it a secret, and like this cop dude is constantly after him. Yeah. But it's kind of dropped. There's also like a sort of side joke where like Luna thinks Geo's kind of like just a normal dude, but she has a crush on Mega Man. Oh, one of but, those. Yeah, yeah, but by the yeah. end of the first game, she knows Geo as Mega Man, and there's it mostly becomes a joke where she has to like constantly like she still, like, acts like the whole, like, likes the alter ego but not the original, even though she knows they're the same. And it's constantly a joke where she has to, like, constantly, like, slap herself. Like, no, that's that dork Geo. Yeah. It's, it's kind of funny. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, Geo stops Diamond Ice. And uh, this is the part where, like, at Sonya's concert, she does the lyrical version of the series' main theme. And it's literally a song she wrote. 
and like the lyrics are kind of well written in a way that she wrote it about like her story with her mom how like her mom died when she was really young and she kind of felt all alone and then she sings about how she met this special person who brought her out of her funk and it's worded in a way that like the way that it is like Sonia's story, it is also Gio's story about he lost a parent, oh. was all alone, and then met someone who could like sympathize and brought him out of his funk. Good on you, Mega Man Star Force. Yeah, That's really cool. yeah. yeah, and you can find this online. The song is called Shooting Star. It's you might also get the instrumental version from like right the game. now, maybe. Maybe. No, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> I can put it in. Uh, yeah. In post, was really maybe. Cool if you did. I was talking about editing, yeah. Oh, yeah. But it is pretty cool. <laughs> it's kind of like an anime J pop song, but like, I still like it. Anyways, uh, after this, uh, Ace contacts Geo and he's making a team of teenagers with attitude. I forget what the team is called. It's like Hunter or something or whatever. I don't remember. But uh, basically, it's him and he's recruited a bunch of other people who can wave change, including Bud and Solo, and they're all going to stop the evil organization Dealer, who are kind of like the bad guys throughout all these games, which is just Queen, uh, Queen Tia, Jack Corvus. You can kind of see the theme in yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll get around to... But uh, basically, they're at the beach later, and... Oh, hold up. Oh, yeah, so what Dealer's main goal is is they want to collect the Crimson because the crimson attracts noise towards it. And there is a giant noise meteor called Meteor G that they want to collect a bunch of crimson to bring Meteor G to Earth and destroy all, like it's kind of an electromagnetic thing. It'll just destroy all wave technology. So the meteor is just made up of waves. Okay. Kind of, yeah. It's, a, it's kind of an EM wave meteor. So it wouldn't hurt humans. It would just destroy all the EM stuff. Yeah, destroy all the EM waves. Okay. I, don't, I don't think it would actually like destroy Earth. Okay. The notes just said giant meteor, so I was like, man, they're... It might also... I don't really remember. I, th I think it's just destroying all EM waves. It would fit better with Tia and Jack's motivations that we'll find later. Yeah, I don't think they want to die. No. But they want to bring Meteor G to destroy all EM waves, which is terrible. we got to stop them. So Gio and his friends go to the beach on a field trip called Alohaha, which, as you might imagine, is a Hawaii analog. And uh, the weather control wizard there, who is named Strong, he's this big buff dude with like moss on him. He's holding a big club. Well, he's holding like a staff. And like that's how he, he's like a weather control program. It's cool. And, you know, you might imagine they corrupt him. He becomes Club Strong. His staff turns yeah. into a giant club. He's a fun boss. I like Club Strong. And uh, you beat Club Strong. You go through like his thing where like all the weather's messing up and stuff. It's a pretty interesting dungeon. Like, there's, like, a bunch of different stuff based on different types of weather. Which, uh, I didn't really talk about what the dungeons are like in Star Force, but, like, it's mostly the same as Battle Network. There's, like, a gimmick that you have to solve and, like, puzzle out. Mm -hmm. And then after this, uh, Tia and uh, Jack are just like, all right, we're not messing around with you anymore. They both attack Geo, and uh, you beat Jack, but uh, Tia just runs away. But then immediately after this, because Dealer is just not putting up with Geo anymore, uh, their big bodyguard dude, uh, Dread Joker, comes down. And Joker knows that Geo's a big friendship guy, so he just tries to punch Luna, expecting Mega Man to jump in and take the hit. Which he does, but he also like pushes her out of the way at the last moment. But right after he pushes her out of the way, Joker just teleports behind Luna and kills her. <laughs> and she kind of like, you know, like in classic Mega Man, you have like the death sprites where he like turns into all the little circles. That is what happens to Luna when <laughs> she dies. <laughs> Goodbye. And, yeah. He like shoots a laser beam at her, the dread laser. I was wondering what the big fiery thing was. <laughs> yeah, that's him yeah. punching. But uh, right, it doesn't matter cool. because, yeah. So you can, apparently like there's like residual wave data or whatever. So you know how matter waves like are basically like real matter? Uh, they just find Luna's data around and use matter wave technology to just undead Luna. She's uh, this. She's technically her. She's alive. <laughs> yeah. Don't think about it. I was gonna say, don't think about it too hard. <laughs> don't, don't think about the fact that we captured her death echoes and use that to make a new version. <laughs> yes, actually, unironically, that they. I was really enjoying the la after the last guys. I didn't. I don't appreciate. It. <laughs> 
guys. This is unholy. <laughs> it's definitely some form of techno necromancy. It's trying, not okay. Trying to play God. Yeah, so it's not cool. Technomancy. 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 Sort of. I don't know. But uh, the next day, Ace is like mad because Dealer is getting very aggressive and he just wants to stop them. So Ace goes and he fights Tia, but he loses because Ace sucks. <laughs> Actually, he absorbs too much noise because, like, all the dealer guys, they kind of control noise with, like, their cards. That's how they, like, store a bunch of noise and then just, like, throw it into, like, a wizard to turn them corrupt. And so Ace kind of fails to fight Tia because she gives him too much noise. And Ace is kind of, like, really sensitive to noise because he doesn't really combine with an EM wave being. Mm. Geo shows up and does beat Tia, and she's arrested by Satella police. We were kind of like that police guy I mentioned earlier who's like kind of trying to figure out Geo's identity or whatever, but it doesn't really matter. But uh, Jack, at this point, because Tia got arrested and defeated, he's just mad. They're brother and sister, by the way. Mm. And he just goes and just attacks the school. Dealer did not tell him to do this. He is just mad. And uh, during this, uh, I don't know, Geo beats him. It doesn't really matter. But uh, what's important on the side here is Joker corrupts ace and his wizard and like their their combined form is acid ace and then like he turns them into acid ace illegal because it turns <laughs> out he knows <laughs> it oh, it kind of plays into like when you get a lot of noise when you get the like random chip it's called illegal noise yeah, yeah, yeah. chip card whatever it's just the it's just <laughs> Yeah. Three words together. <laughs> it really it's is acid funny. ace illegal. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so great job naming teams. Basically, the reason that he knows how to do this and why he's so good against them is Ace used to be a member of Dealer and then he quit. And Dealer actually are the people who made acid for him to fuse with. But uh, he just left because he's not that bad of a person. Also, there's like some. I'll fuse with some acid. <laughs> There's also an implied romance between Ace and Tia. It's just a thing. So, so all right. So the like, the, the school shooter like segments done. Yeah, that just kind of that's just kind what of. Are, what are the drills like? In Why this? are Mega Man games so dang dark? <laughs> I don't know. Why are they? But uh, hi, Wiley. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, <laughs> Geo does have to stop Ace while he's like going crazy and stuff, and Ace is put in the hospital from this he's real beat up and uh geo is knocked unconscious sometime after this i think by joker and is taken to dealer's base which is like just this thing in space when he's there the leader of dealer king is like yeah he's basically just like yeah i want to i hate em wave beings i'm going to bring meteor g here and he wants to control it he doesn't want to just like make it crash like tia and jack do he wants to like control it and like decide who does and doesn't have em waves but he's actually later betrayed by a second in command heartless because she is actually secretly an amakin secret sorry a waza secret agent waza is like another science thing they're I'm yeah. That I, I that earlier. Waz, Waza's just like, I don't know, like more government thing. Amakin's more of a private company. Not, uh, Waza is more like NASA where it's like a government thing. Oh, okay. NASA versus SpaceX. Got it. Yeah, yeah. A lot like that, actually. Anyways, she was a Waxa spy or Waza spy. And also it is revealed that like uh, you fight Joker during this who turns into his alternate form, Dread Joker. I'm the Joker, baby. <laughs> but it turns out Joker was actually a wizard all along. He was not even a person. And he was, uh, he was King's wizard. You're a wizard, Joker. Aren't hmm? wizards EM beings? Yeah, though? they're EM wave beings. Okay, so. It's because you said they're kind of like net navvies. Yeah, they're, they're a lot like net navvies. Well, they're, huh. they're EM beings that have been uh, mass waved or whatever, right? Sort of, yeah. Okay. In a way. Not all of them, I think, are matter waved, but whatever. Anyways, so now Dealer is taken care of, but there's still the issue of the fact that Meteor G is heading towards Earth. So they send, uh, they use like a satellite, I think. Oh yeah, Heartless reveals Meteor G is currently being held back by the EM form of Kelvin Stellar. <laughs> who is just holding it back Whoa. because you get a flashback that before Omega Zis came to Earth, when Kelvin went to Planet FM, he met Omega Zis. And when Kelvin was like almost killed by Cepheus, 
uh, Omega Zis turned Kelvin into an EM wave being. Badass. And so now Kelvin is just holding back Meteor G. So Geo goes to the cyberspace of Meteor G, and then King is there. King also went to the cyberspace after he kind of got beaten. And he combines with the core of Meteor G, and then, like, him combined with the core kind of consumes Kelvin. And that amalgamation forms the final boss, the Crimson Dragon. Hmm. It was a pretty fun final boss. Uh, it forces you to use your, like, ultimate form. Like, eventually you get this thing called Noise Finalize, which lets you turn into Black Ace or Dread Joker. And you're forced to do that and use your ultimate attack to finish the fight, which is pretty cool. But uh, after you beat Crimson Dragon, uh, Geo is just kind of stranded in space. There's no real way back. Geo has saved the day, but he is just stranded in space, a lot like Kelvin was. So Omega Zis... Oh, never mind. No, Kelvin, with his last of his EM wave powers, what is left of him, sends a broadcast to all of Earth. And remember when I talked about teams earlier? Mm -hmm. uh, everyone on Earth, literally every single person, forms a team called Get Geo Back. <laughs> and this forms. I like this Kickstarter. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hashtag Get Geo Out of Space. <laughs> it, it's a lot like a hashtag, <laughs> the way those work. Anyways, <laughs> uh, this forms. This, this culmination of link power is so great that it literally connects to Geo and like pulls him back. It's called a purpose <laughs> wave. And like the credits play over like Geo floating back to Earth, but it only brings Geo back. Omega Zis is left behind. And he's like, oh, goodbye. It's like a kind of sad goodbye because they became such good friends. And Omega Zis is like, I've got some stuff I want to do in space. So like I will I come go. visit like it's a sad goodbye kid but like I'll come back someday and we can hang out. And like the credits are like Geo kind of like unconscious floating back to earth. And like as the credits do you can actually see him like getting closer to earth. It's really cool. But he has to leave Omega Zis behind because you might, you might go see him. like a like an asteroid or No. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure the purpose later. wave will just yeah. deflect all of those. I see like a some but, stars is kind of oh yeah and like that the thing with geo drifting cold. back happens on the top screen of the ds on the bottom screen you see a bunch of photos of like what happened to other characters afterwards like uh tia eventually uh gets off on parole from jail and you see her like nursing ace back to health in the hospital it's like wholesome stuff like that and at the very end of the credits yeah, Omega Zis brings Kelvin back. <laughs> and they're all one big happy family again. Yay. Dad came back from getting cigarettes. <laughs> from space. I mean. well, well, no, it'd be vapes. Vapes? <laughs> yeah. E EM vapes. <laughs> I'll have to go get some jewel packs. <laughs> so that's cool. That is the end of the Star Force series. They're all a big happy family again. It's actually a really emotional moment. I like it a lot. Omega Zis is kind of their dog now. <laughs> I'm yeah. sure he just comes and goes as he pleases. No, uh, he, he's the security system. Yeah. Uh, they kind of imply that uh, in like part of like the post credit scene where they show like what happens to everyone, uh, they kind of imply Omega Zis and Lyra kind of like are a thing now. The like FME and who like... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what's her uh, Sonia fuses with? Yeah, I figured that was what was gonna happen with uh, Geo and Sonia. No, there's actually when you're at Aloha, ha, right after you bring Luna back, uh, there is a scene where kind of like you get to pick almost like whether he ends up with Sonia or Luna. Well, it's obviously you, Sonia. You, yeah, <laughs> no, no, yeah. No, basically, you have to all pick Luna, Geo, Geo, and Luna, Earth and Moon. Come on, man. No, well, Sonia. <laughs> Sonia is kind of sky themed as well, but okay. anyways, uh, a star force, anyway, not sky force. Anyways, there's a there's a scene where like they uh, there's like both of them have like personal items that like fly off, and also Bud has a personal item that flies off if you don't want to pick either of them. <laughs> which is the didn't chat. you say? Didn't you say there was like a Sonia and Luna thing going on on the internet? Like there was some kind of like. No, that what? that's that's your thing. No, you that's mentioned not, it. We're not. I mean, this. Th there's this like children's. Th game. There's like shipping wars. Like people. No, 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 not shipping. There was some kind of like fight about this or something like that. I mean, I don't know. Some people care too much about this. But I've, I, I've remembered you. But like, something but like, basically, He's the point is, the is there isn't a clear love interest in this series. They kind of let you pick during Star Force Three, or you can just pick Bud. And basically, that's you get like choice. you get. Bud is still a love interest. Thank probably you yes. 
basically you get like a scene with whoever you do and then you see like the, if you pick one of the girls you see the other one like seething off in a corner while you spend time with that one or if you pick bud you see them both like licking each other's wounds <laughs> that's kind of funny <laughs> Yeah. I also, mean, the Houdini the of the thing. Beach. I just, I just thought yeah. there was some kind of weird thing with the fans about that. Yeah, no. Another... F- I don't know. I, ma- there probably is, but I mean... There's anyways, the Houdini of the Beach thing comes back mom. during the Aloha Ha thing, too. They hear that that's like an ancient legend, and they try it again. To success, I imagine. I don't remember. What, the Beach <laughs> Houdini thing? Yeah, the Houdini of the Beach. Yeah. Yeah, funny. <laughs> anyways, uh, here's a post-game. Wow. Uh, there's this asshole named Sirius... Who is he? Literally collects. Why so serious, Joker? Yeah, uh, he's collecting EM waves. He can just like freeze them and like he puts them in the black hole server. Okay. Like when you go to like where Meteor G is, that's the Meteor server, and Sirius owns the black hole server, which just absorbs EM beings and he just like freezes them and makes them his living collection. He attacks planets AM and FM, and so the satellite admins and Cepheus ask was, Geo to what? I thought AM was. Like they they make like a new planet AM. They're like trying to rebuild. Okay, all right. Yeah. So they ask Geo for help, and you fight a bunch of you do a bunch of boss refights, which is just like boss name R. And Sirius, like part of his black hole thing, is he's using Moo technology. So while you're going to try and do this, like Rogue shows up, and he's like, "No, this is my business. Get out of here, you pleb." And so you have a boss fight against him at some point during the black hole server. Which, of course, you win. And then you go and fight Sirius, and you beat him, and you stop him. And kind of, like, as his final middle finger to Geo, he takes, like, the Moo medal he had that uh, Rogue was after. And he just, like, infuses it into Geo just to be like, yeah, all right. Now he's never going to stop coming after you. Enjoy, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, like, I guess it's kind of like, a, oh, they're going to be fighting forever unless Rogue just gets over it. Nah, he's a little bitch. No, he never no. will. <laughs> All right, so here we have uh, Ace's thing, Arthur C. Eos, and his thing, Acid, and that's Acid Ace. If you want to know what Acid Ace Illegal Both looks... Both he and Acid Ace look like just Gundam things. Yeah. Like, yeah. They, look like they, they look like characters. Gundam wing characters. Yeah. I think yeah. they were going for more of a mechanical look since uh, Acid was like a like artificial like wave thing. So that's probably that was probably intentional. Oh, the, their team was Project TC. They all have, like, codes or whatever. Uh, that's Jack and Tia. Their backstory, the reason they wanted to destroy all the EM waves is they came from this, like, old country that had, like, really advanced EM wave technology. And because of that, everyone wanted that technology and their military wasn't too big or whatever. So their country just got decimated so people could, like, scavenge their EM wave technology. And so they're like... We hate EM wave technology. It's too powerful to be allowed to keep existing. We want to destroy it all. And that's kind of their whole deal of why they work with Dealer. We got a group of rogue terrorists. What kind of terrorists are attacking us, sir? The Amish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, that Gollum one looks really cool. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. that's Club Strong. <laughs> uh, top left, that's Spade Magnes. Uh, pretty obvious who diamond dice is you see both a joker's forms where he's both joker and dread joker uh the dude in the chair that's king and then the chick is heartless pretty cool so that's basically it for star force as well but it wouldn't be a mega man lecture if we didn't have some canceled games yeah <laughs> so let's talk about star force four who, are, who is this is that, is uh, that, that is kazuma hikari who is going to be what? like a great descendant of lan and him and Geo, Geo was gonna be. There was gonna be a time skip. Geo was gonna be like aged up. They're like teenagers. I was about or to say he looks very like um Geo. Yeah, it, it's kind of it, I'm a one kind of an emo art style almost, but like lifestyle. they're gonna be like renegade hackers or whatever. But uh, <laughs> it got canceled. Yeah. Because Star Force Three actually sold pretty well because it was a good game. Cyber. So they were almost gonna make it, but then you had the great Mega Man purge. Mega Man Universe, Mega Man Online, Maverick Hunter, which was like a kind yeah. of Metroid Prime style, like X based game. Been cool. Ooh, that would have been cool. As well as Legends 3, all got canceled pretty much in like a clean sweep. Star Force 4, also a casualty of this. Really but there is hope because, you know, say what you will about Mighty Number no. 9, but, you know, that Kickstarter clearly showed there's still interest in the series. And there are 
have been a ton of Mega Man likes to come in its wake, such as 20XX, a very X-based platformer. Yeah. 30XX now. Which apparently, 30XX, which apparently it, got, it was successful yeah. enough to get a sequel. Apparently it's really even cool. better. Yeah, uh, Blaster as as Master Zero. Like all is that Blaster stuff. Master's kind of a Mega Man game. It, it's like a mix of that and like Star Tropics or something. Yeah, uh, Azura Striker Gunvolt. Yes. If you want a fair bit of anime in your Mega Man, it's very anime. Especially the later games when you can play as his rival Copen. Man, Copen's gameplay is so cool. You charge into enemies <laughs> just to lock onto them. It's so cool. And then, uh, you know, as far as Battle Network likes go, you have like the roguelike One Step from Eden which is really cool. Hmm. It's kind of like a stage-based thing where you only do battles. There's no real overworld. Oh, okay. But it's very, very Battle Network reminiscent. Uh, one I played recently was called Hero.exe, which is more... It's more similar to Battle Network. It's less... Like, One Step from Eden takes a lot of liberties, and it's still fun in its own way. It's definitely doing its own thing. Hero.exe kind of plays the like Battle Network gameplay more straight. There's just... I don't know. I wanted to end this on a more positive note because probably not going to talk about Mega Man again for a very long time. I want to talk about all the passion projects that came out of this series that everyone loves. And I mean, I mean, let's be real. With how successful all the legacy collections are doing, Legends 3 is around the corner, man. It's coming. I think it. it's coming. It's just a matter of time. Right after we get a new Math Blaster, okay? Yeah. We got exactly. we got to put our ducks in a row. I I'm very like the, the 20th anniversary of the series was like two weeks ago at the time of this recording, uh, March 21st, 2021. And Capcom even said they had something planned to announce, but because of COVID, yeah, because of COVID, they couldn't. Yeah. So essentially, I'm very confident that was going to be the Battle Network Star Force Legacy Collection. We sadly didn't get it, but we'll nope. probably be getting it soon. We're going to get something when Mega Man Battle Network's old enough to drink. Yeah. I want to, I want the. Legacy Collection to have online net battling. That would make my day. Anyways, I just wanted to end this all on a positive note, talk about how much I love this series, and thank you for coming to the Mega Man Network Timeline Lore Lecture! Yeah!